Chapter Bhakti Love of the Divine You have to love the ultimate truth. Adoration of self with wisdom will get you self. Only adore yourself, worship and seek yourself the rest will be taken care of. Avoid useless activities and pleasures. Simply keep quiet. This is Sahaja Bhav. When there is unceasing tapas, when all is lost in mind, senses and intellect are destroyed, then you will merge with that freedom. Tapas is always being toward Atman. Tapas is total devotion to the self, burning everything away, merging to love. The best use of this moment is to drown in it. This is devotion. To worship, you must pre-exist worship in order to give rise to the concept of worship. So no, you can only worship yourself. You become that to which you offer yourself to, so offer yourself only to love. Whoever tastes this nectar is this nectar. Freedom is always here, it is the holiness that is missing. What are you going to give the Supreme if you have given up your heart to something else? Only a pure unsmelt flower is offered to God, only love for the self is needed. Be humble and devoted to the self. Silence is the wine in which you will be drunk forever. In this silence you know and love all beings. With that wine you can drink anywhere, and when you drink you cannot speak. Stay in the experience, surrender to it. To taste bliss forget all other tastes, and drink the wine served within. The attraction to self, the love of self, cannot be taught, either it comes or it doesn't. You don't need a flashlight to see where this light is coming from, you are the light. Only doubts and wicked association harden you. Pain and tears of separation are blessed. This aching from being separated from the beloved is better than union with the beloved. It is beautiful, so dissolve your doubts and adore your imperishable self with peace, wisdom and self-control. The devotee, the true devotee, is the heart of the divine. Questioner, can you help me understand the relationship between what you teach and bhakti yoga? Answer from Papaji. There is no difference between jhana and bhakti. You can approach God by love, which means bhakti, with great devotion and love, and when you do this you know what is happening. When you love, your beloved one will unveil the treasure to you. If you love you have knowledge also. If you know someone, that someone has love for you also. Therefore, jhana and bhakti are two wings of the same bird. Wherever there is love there is knowledge, wherever there is knowledge, there is also love. If you love someone that someone will not keep any secret, and so you will have knowledge. If you know someone that someone also has to love you. Though it is one and the same thing. People quarrel that they are different and there is a big dispute over it, but the fact is that anybody who finds a difference in the two are ignorant. You love that most so that you have no one else in your mind. Then you will have the treasure revealed to you by it. What are the different ways of knowing yourself? According to the books of knowledge there are three ways. One is jhana yoga, which is knowledge. Number two is devotion. Number three is karma activity action. The people who are intelligent go to the rishi in the forest and ask Koham, who am I? The teacher said only, Tat Vamasi, you are that. By only this statement, the student would say I am Brahmasmi, I am that. This is for those who are intellectual and who understand the meaning of the word and not simply hear the word. That means that. When the teacher says that the student looks at that and agrees, I am that. Then the teacher said, good luck off you go. Number two is devotion, surrender to the supreme power within. In saluting and looking at that power, you become that power itself. Give your mind to that power and don't have the ego that I am a separate entity. No, I am the supreme. This you must win by love, not by intellect. There is no difference to be that in understanding or in devotion. The child goes to the mother to suckle because it knows who its mother is and the mother knows who to feed. The third is karma. 
Karma Yoga is whatever you do, you do not seek for the result of your doing. You just do it and keep the result in the hands of the Supreme Being. Actually all these run concurrently, knowledge, bhakti, karma. If you get attached to one of these, all the others are with you. If you know someone, you love them. If you love them, you know them. And your activity is the same for each other. There is no difference. I'm coming from Bhakti. Is it possible that a Bhakti can inquire? Bhakti is through love where the God loves the devotee. Bhakti is where the devotee goes to God. This is the difference and so you must make a choice. If God has to fall in love with you it is Bhakti. If you fall in love with God it is Jhana. It is difficult for the people of inquiry or Vichar because they do not know the personality of God. They don't know what he looks like and so they can make a mistake. But God will never make a mistake when he loves his devotee. They say God follows one step behind the devotee looking after his welfare and giving him things even if he doesn't want them. There's a story about this regarding a saint who was blind from birth. One day he was going into a forest and in front of him was a well. He was about to step into it, in fact his foot was already above it, when somebody came and touched him and said, Baba, there is a well in front of you, come to this side. Now this touch, so soft and delicate, was like no other that he had felt in his whole life. All the hair on his body stood up in harapulation. He couldn't even speak, who are you? Because he was so choked up, and of course he couldn't see who it was. But he knew that it couldn't be anyone else other than his own Atman within his own heart that could give such a touch. Then he sang a song about this, I am blind and old and without strength. Now you have kept me aside because you are young. But though I am weak, I will see if you can run away from my heart. You may be strong enough to lift mountains, I don't doubt that, but if you are brave tell me if you can run away from my heart. This must be the decision that I spoke of earlier when I told the woman to clench her teeth and tighten her fist and see if that will run away. Only if you have that much strength will you cross the ocean of Samsara. Otherwise there are crocodiles on one side and sharks on the other. If you can deal with them you are fine and don't need a raft but it is safer to be on the raft. This raft is satsang, and it will take you across to the other side and once there you will not have to go into this samsara again. Most people prefer to jump into the mouth of the shark, but your decision must be strong to stay on the raft. It is not the duration of the time in satsang that is important, but the understanding. This you may not have in a whole lifetime, or you may have it this very minute, or half a minute, or quarter of a minute. I speak this same thing every day. You are consciousness, you are Atman beauty and love. If you understood this we wouldn't have to pay rent on this hall anymore. Is the process of attaining enlightenment different for different individuals and the choice of practice followed? No. Anybody who is realized through any process is not realized. Truth does not have any way to take anyone to awareness. Where there is process there is mind and mind is ignorance not attainment of truth. Divine intention is breaking this ego and I feel that I am in the middle of bhakti and jhana. Total bhaktas cannot work in the world. People who commit totally to jhana become too proud, so half of each is good. If you want to know truth, you must have 100% love for truth. In this way, there is no difference between the ways of love and knowledge. You need love to know and you need to know what you're loving. Different people may appear to take different paths. The intellectual person will be interested in the path of knowledge. The one who has love in their heart will want to see God as love itself. God is love and God is truth. So, if you are intellectual rub your intellect and find where all the intelligence comes from. You will find it comes from the heart which is love. When you love you are loving your own heart. I don't know if I am ready for this love or not. Don't even ask if you are ready or not rush toward it as the river rushes toward the ocean. She doesn't say that I am not ready to be accepted by the ocean. 
though keep it up day and night, rush to the source, the ocean. No other thought should come. Continue this day and night. Papaji, I think of you during the day and dream of you at night. Oh, very nice. This is the best of all teachings. When you are sleeping, dream of the one you love. And during the day, don't just think of the one you love, but sit in front of the one you love. Then you will never sleep. There will be no difference between the dream and the waking state. This difference is for the rest of the people and not for the lovers. There is no night or day for the one who loves. Can you speak about devotion? Devotion does not mean that you start loving anyone else. What about devotion to your own self? This is the only devotion that you must be dedicated and devoted to your own self. Having done this, you have given love to everybody. Devoting love to anyone else, even God, it will not help you because all else is your creation. Even you are the creation of someone. Find out who has created you. Who is that? This that is that that who has created you. Though you must be devoted to that, and this dedication will give peace to all beings of the world. Don't take anyone as other than you. You must walk and talk as one, and then only you will know what devotion is. This is devotion. When you talk, the whole universe is talking. You must have that much faith and trust in you. When you eat, the whole universe is eating along with you. Then you will see the difference. It is not by myself and by themselves. That is not going to help you. If you want to be a devotee, have full devotion to yourself. Papaji, I had a dream that I was in such a special space. Most people forget their dreams, but you have remembered. What was this space that you remember? Space has no limitations, and so it cannot be limited to the waking, dream, or sleep states. Find out what it was. Find the space that brought you here. Fall in love with this space. Don't look all over for this space because it is your very self, and it has brought you here. Why didn't you take Maharshi's advice of who you were seriously and instead continued Krishna meditation? What he spoke, I took very seriously. He never said for me to not love Krishna. There is no difference between Krishna and Maharshi. Everybody thinks that devotion is something other than knowledge. On one occasion, I was with the Maharshi when some Vrindaban devotees of Krishna, who were on their way to the Meenakshi temple, stopped to see him. They gave Maharshi a picture of Krishna, and I saw Maharshi melt in devotion, dropping tears from his eyes. Then I knew that there wasn't a better devotee than Maharshi. Tears are one of the three or four symptoms of devotion. Some others are a choked voice, absolute stillness of mind, like being wonderstruck, and the hairs of your body standing up. These are some outer symptoms. I want God in my heart. I want a love affair with my beloved self. If you want a love affair with your beloved self, then you are not to think. When you are thinking, you are thinking of the love affair with someone else. It is not a direct experience. Those who want a love affair with their own self will run and run and never stop and never think. They can't think because only their beloved is in their mind. If you think, you can't find your beloved. Thinking is like searching outside in the bushes for someone who is standing next to you. Only this someone is within you. Seeing this beloved is like trying to see your own eye. You can't do it because the eye is too near your sight. You can only see what is outside of you, like your body. Anything that you see or love is someone else. So, if this is true, how can you love your own beloved self? The lover is the beloved. The subject of your search is the object, and so you will never find it. The only way to love self is to be it. Be that which you are searching million of years for. This can be done in one instant of time if you don't think of anyone else. Then it will reveal to that holy person who is sitting at the feet of the Sagguru. Will you introduce me to the beloved? For the last sixty years, I have had an agency which arranges this embrace. Here you can have a boyfriend which will last you forever. He's embracing you because he embraces all of creation. 
you didn't find him because you were searching for something else. Forget about everything else and you will find that you have always been in the embrace of this friend who was available at the cost of pure love. When you see anyone else you are not wise because it is of no use to love someone who will disappear soon. Decide now to see that person who has no ground under his feet. All others including yourself will disappear, but he will not. Avoid all that is not eternal. The only thing which is eternal is love. This love is the beloved and the lover. When you don't make any separation between these two, you have found the secret that you have never been separated from anything. This is all you have to do. Did you get the secret? Yes. By your grace I am crying whenever I look at you. There is infinite beauty and love sweeping me away. I believe that in these circumstances, crying is better than keeping quiet. This crying is not the same crying that happens when people are not with their beloved ones. This crying is for God and this love cannot be described. So keep on crying day and night to yourself. Let this rain fall and give you a good bath. It is very difficult to cry for God. Whoever does it, they always cry for someone who has rejected them. Only one who has cried tears for God and love will know the sweetness of it. Now you will cry all the more because now you have your lover in the shape of God himself. Though keep on crying. When you cry he will sit in front of you to enjoy your crying and to wipe your tears. Papa, I have been crying so much that I have barely slept for days. This crying is better than sleeping also. Isn't it? This cry is not the cry of suffering on account of separation. Though few of the six billion beings here on earth cry for their own love. They cry when they are separated from others, not at the time of meeting something very beautiful. I can share this crying if you come next time to my room. I believe that this physical separation from the beloved is very unique and better than meeting each other. Though keep separate and always aspire to meet your beloved and one day this separation will burn you. This separation is more sweet than the meeting. It seems that true love is to not receive anything from anyone. True love is to give all you have with no thought of receiving anything in exchange. But everybody in the world needs something from the other. Even the love of the divine is not without expectations of exchange. People ask God for a son or for money or whatever. If you ask for anything it should be freedom, the removal of all your doubts so that you can have a very clean lovely and beautiful heart. My heart is full but my mind is not empty. When your heart is full of love no thought can stay in the mind. Only one person can sit on a chair at one time. Nobody else can stay. But my mind seems so busy. It is good to keep your mind busy, busy with the Satguru. Keep your mind always busy with the service of the Satguru. Find how you can devote your mind and your physical activity to the Satguru 24 hours a day. Then there is no chance of any thought disturbing you. Prayer and devotion is better than keeping the mind quiet because the mind troubles you more when you try to keep it quiet. Let it run to the lotus feet of the teacher. This intention will not disturb anyone. On the contrary, the lack of this will disturb you. Unless you serve the teacher, moksham, enlightenment, liberation or anything else is of no use. The reward that the teacher will give you cannot be weighed on any balance. The mind cannot be silent because its very nature is to run. It is said in the Upanishads, when mana comes into the shelter of the Muni, the silence, the sage mana is made moksha, it is enlightened. The mind mana in Sanskrit is always thinking something. It can never be quiet thus, that which does not keep quiet is called mind. This word cannot really be translated into English. One of the main ways that my mind keeps busy is that it always wants to compete with everyone. I don't know what to do or what not to do. Can you give me advice? Then compete with God. Love God more than he loves you and more than anyone else does. Defeat God in this and he will accept defeat. 
If you don't want to compete then be the dust at his feet. Both ways are very good. This lucky dust has no arrogance or ego. Though either have no ego and be dust or have full ego and pride and love God more than anyone ever has. For I wanted to be closer to Jesus, but now I want to be closer to you, physically close. This reminds me of a young woman in Spain who wanted to be close to Jesus. Her name was Saint Teresa of Avila, and she had such a strong desire to meet Jesus in his physical body, that the statue of him that she worshipped came alive and smiled at her and gave her a kiss. In India this comes as no surprise because there are many stories of similar things happening. But it is not acceptable in the West and so when she went to tell her guru, Saint John of the Cross, she was told that Jesus does not smile and does not kiss and so it must have been a demon that kissed her. Saint John said that Christ was never happy and so he never smiled. This is why in the States and all the churches show a very unhappy Christ. He himself had never had a vision of Christ, so how could he judge hers? What is the attraction and where will it lead me? I feel like a gopi. The gopis were so close to Krishna that both were called gopi Krishna. It means the union between Atman and Paramatman. Gopis are the seekers of truth and only Krishna can reveal it. Only to those who are very near to him, very dear to him. After coming to him the gopis do not return back. Meeting Krishna means the end of all separation, the end of going away. There was so much magic in his eyes that he could speak with them. He would also speak the names of the gopis on his flute, and they would come to him because they could not resist this beautiful flute player. Once a girl was cooking the meal while her husband was out selling the milk and the children were away at school. Her mother-in-law noticed that she had put her arm into the cooking fire instead of a log and that she did not even know it. Her eyes were closed in absorption and tears were falling from them. Immediately she ran to her daughter and taking her arm out of the fire she said, Oh child, what are you doing? You have burned yourself so badly. He replied, Oh mother, I cannot stay in this house. I must go. You cannot go, you must stay and cook the food for your husband and children, said the mother. Someone calls me, I cannot stay, she answered. So she goes and starts walking out of the village, though all her friends tried to stop her. He came to the Yamuna and crossed it, searching for that which was playing tenderly in her heart. Finally, at night, she sat down absorbed in the love of God. When a person thinks, he thinks of his family or his house, but she was thinking no thought other than that about her friend whom she had not found. Desire can be fulfilled by a person that you meet, an object that you see, or a concept stuck in your mind. But the desire for God cannot be fulfilled unless you become the desired object. Here the subject is the object. Though the Lord comes to her and touching her shoulder said that the Lord Krishna had come, she replied, Krishna is not two persons, Krishna is one, and that means Krishna itself. It ends there. If you really want to be a friend it should be with that person who you cannot see. The person who you can see as a duration in life, and at the end of this duration you will suffer. Don't be a friend with that which disappears, but with that which does not disappear. Having that friendship you will also not disappear. This is Gopi Krishna, the union of the soul with God. I experience Sat and Chit, but not Ananda. Actually, it is Satyam Anandam Brahman, truth is bliss. The bliss is very rare. Experiencing truth will not give you bliss. Bliss is not from understanding, but from devotion. Bliss is the blessing of the Guru to one who serves him. The teacher who can give this is very rare. I want to be free and blissful permanently. Then you must give your separation away, and you must fall in love with the one inside your heart. Slowly go near him, and he will suddenly jump up to receive you. Once you are with him don't go back, which means don't remember the past. Just keep looking at him and he will return your look. What could be the taste of this union? If you want it to be permanent, 
totally fall in love with your own Atman. When you are totally in love with that tell me if it is a permanent or temporary affair. I want happiness always. Then offer something. Don't go to the king or the saint or the temple empty-handed. Offer the fruit of your heart to the divine, not peaches, figs and apples. God only wants a beautiful face and heart. But you have to be careful or he will steal your heart and you will be part of his Leela. It already happened. When this happens you will be mad or crazy with love. Actually, it is not madness or craziness, but there is no English word to describe the total love for that in your heart. This happens when the indweller of your heart steals your heart. Don't just read of this Leela, but go and take part in it. Then you will really enjoy reading about it. If you want to see more of this game go to Vrindaban. Every particle of the earth in Vrindaban still radiates love. In most cities people avoid where the street sweepers are working, but in Vrindaban people go to them and have dust swept onto their heads. This is the sanctity of the place. Next time somebody from Satsang goes there you can go with them. I am feeling separate, it is a familiar feeling. I have had glimpses of the self and a very strong desire to be free. These all mean the same thing. A desire to be free, glimpses of the self and seeing something that is familiar to you. All mean the same. This familiarity cannot be other than your own self. It is not the familiarity which is when you meet someone on the street and you run back to the past and remember the association. This familiarity is no more running back. All these familiarities you must run back to the past to pick up how they were familiar to you and it will be because you had some interest with the person or object. But this familiarity is your own self and when you stand in front of it you will see it as familiar but you haven't seen it since you have been looking at other persons and objects. Therefore, you forgot to look at it. Though turn your face toward it and get dissolved into this familiarity, then there will be no difference between you and this person who is very familiar to you. You will become one. Then you will be naked and you must be, if you wear any shirt or pants, you will not see it. You must remove everything. That means you are not to wear any thought around you. Then you will become naked. Then you are that familiar person who you have been searching quite some time for. Don't go with the feeling that you are naked. Even this feeling you must leave behind. If there is no feeling you will see this beautiful person who is familiar to you and familiar to everyone. I don't understand my fear and resistance to surrender. This is how you are not naked. You are wearing resistance. You don't like it. You say you want to be free, but how can you be free when you are resisting this freedom and have fear in your mind? Then you can't see your beloved. Remove this fear and you will be naked. Remove the fear from your mind and the resistance and then there will be surrender. You can't do this unless you are quite free from thoughts. Can you help me and shed light on this? You must become the light itself to see the self. Nobody else can shed any light on it. You must see your own light while you close your eyes, the light is always there. When you don't see any other light, then, this light will appear in front of you. For a short while you should try this. Don't look here or there or anywhere and then you will see this light. Though I love Ramana so much I don't feel it for you. It doesn't matter. If you love my father then you have a good connection with me. All who love my father also love me. But I want to create a sense of devotion in myself. In whose self? I don't find any difference in this myself and that myself. Could you tell me how this myself and that myself differs? The only difference is in the corpses, that which has formed and which will die. Don't develop devotional feelings for that which t is not eternal. The self, the self of Ramana, your very own self, is eternal and worth loving. If you love everybody, you have loved your own self first, because all is seated inside that self. Pick up any self and love it and you have loved everybody in the world. 
It is important to me to know whether or not you are my master. It doesn't matter if I am your master or you are my master. Don't create a problem for nothing. Just be quiet and love everything. How do I get back to my own true nature? I have been a Buddhist monk for ten years, but instead of being free, I feel dry and repressed. How can I let go of control and repression and return to my true nature? All the Buddhist monks that I have seen are dry because Buddhism doesn't teach love very well. You need love. If you love your own self, you will see God, and it is only through love that you will get back to your own true nature. God needs only love, therefore, you must love only God. What does your name mean? It means seer. So you must be the seer, not the object of sight. Whatever you see is an object of sight, and you can、uh, be such an object. The ear only sees and is not an object, and so you must reject the sight. Start with your own body. It is seen and it is an object. Now I will take you behind all objects. Whatever you see, think, taste, hear, feel, smell, or touch is an object. Though the whole universe is included in this, all the five elements are objects that you see, and you are beyond them. Now see who the seer is. Who sees these things? Turn your face beyond these. I am. I am is not subject or object, and this I am is that I am. Now this I am must turn its head to that still beyond. I do not understand. Because you can't, and you are not to understand. Understanding is with the mind, and I am taking you beyond the mind. Therefore, lay down your understanding. Don't try to understand or think what this understanding may be, and then tell me who you are. Not I am, not understanding. Just turn your face toward that, and lay down all efforts. Does this just is? And this isness is enlightenment because it is beyond all senses. It is only isness. Do you want to go beyond this, or is isness enough? You can't go beyond isness. By saying that you can't go beyond, you are giving limitations to it. It is very close. The trouble is that there is too much nearness, for it is nearer than anything. Why can't the retina be seen? Tomorrow, tell me the answer. The best gatha will be rewarded. God is not as near as this because you can call His name and draw a figure of Him. This which is too near cannot be defined by any word, sign, or thought, or effort. It is so simple to know what it is. So where does the love come in? A lot of what you say are things that we already practice in Buddhism. For practice, you need your mind and body. You are not to use your physical body because anything that you get from physical practice will be physical, and anything you get from the mind will be mental. Where I am taking you is beyond physicality, beyond mentality, beyond spirituality. This is freedom. How do I transcend the mind? For transcendence, you must do constant meditation. First, start to meditate on objects. This is concentration. This is why there are idols of different gods. It is to train the mind. As a monk, you have spent a lot of time doing this, of course. Then simply close your eyes and do not let any object into your mind. When there is no object, you will enter into a space which you can't mention. This is called transcendence. Now you must fall in love with this state, or you will love something else. This is the only thing that will give you constant eternal love. Such few people want this, though. Everybody wants physical or emotional enjoyments. If you transcend these things, you will fall in love with it, and it will fall in love with you. You will have a very intimate relationship. It is very easy. You just have to fully desire this. You will see that it has always been here, but you have wanted something else. With you, I have found for the first time that I have a heart. Before, you only knew that you had a head, but now you know you have a heart. In the head, there is a headache, but in the heart, there is overflowing beauty. Nobody looks toward heart; they only look toward head. 
You can tell by the face the people who look toward their heads. They are full of agony and pain. If you look toward heart, he will smile through you. When you go to the master, he removes the name and form, and there is the narrow lane of love. Sharp as the edge of the sword, very few can walk this. If you look here or there, you are cut into two parts. If you only look ahead, this razor sharp blade will be a road of flowers. Keep in view, I want to meet my beloved. What keeps me from fully knowing myself? Divine love, love of yourself is missing. Therefore, you do not know yourself. Without love, nothing will happen. If you can't love yourself, you can't love anyone else. The result of this will be suffering. Love thyself, and you will have loved every being. Learn to know how to love yourself. Love yourself. Always love yourself, and this self will love you more and more. Take just one step toward the self, and the self will take two steps toward you. Papaji, will you throw me into the ocean? Is there anything in the way? If you cannot do it yourself, then keep quiet, and I will do it. But if you want to do it yourself, then you do not need my help. If you have surrendered completely and fully, then the responsibility of the teacher is to look after the one who loves him. But if you have ego that you are doing everything, then the teacher keeps quiet. If you keep quiet, though, then the teacher will help you. If you don't keep quiet, you will have to do things on your own behalf. Once a very great devotee of God was faced with a charging elephant. God immediately jumped up from sitting with his wife and ran to help the devotee, but he just as quickly came back. His wife asked, "Why did you return so soon?" The devotee picked up a rock and bamboo stick, and so he will look after himself. He doesn't need me," said God. "Though, just keep quiet, and everybody will come to help you. Is there anything in the way?" Yes, you have not decided to completely surrender. This is arrogance because you want to do it yourself. You must surrender to the self, and it will take care of you. I will give you the name Sundia, which means surrendering to God. Where should I celebrate this holy? This I must go and play holy in Vrindavan, where the holy was played and started. Play holy with the one who cannot be colored. Play where nobody can touch him. You play holy with him. Go with the colors in hand and find the one who cannot be colored, who is beyond color, who is beyond form, beyond name. Search for that person. Some of the devotees of this man could find him in Madhuban to play holy with him. All the young maidens of the cowherds went to play holy, and they didn't return back. That is the one. You have to play holy with your own self. That will be the best celebration. This is a celebration of those young maidens who became free to play holy with their beloved. My name is Chaitanya. I love you and my old teacher. I also love my girlfriend, my family, and my relations. I want to be free of all of this. What can I do to find the real love? If you know of Chaitanya, you must love like him. You must always behave like the name you have. Chaitanya is the incarnation of the love divine. About four hundred years ago, he was here in India. He was love itself and was transmitting love to everybody. Once he was passing through the streets of Palatina, now called Patna, which was then governed by Sultan Saladin Khan. This sultan was going down the road on an elephant in a royal procession when he met Chaitanya singing and dancing in the middle of the road. With the name divine, the sultan became quite annoyed at this and sent one of his ministers to beat him and get him off the road so that he, the king, could pass by. The minister hit him from behind and told him to move, but as soon as he touched Chaitanya, he himself started singing and dancing. The sultan thought he was joking, but the minister didn't stop dancing. So the king asked the mahao to stop the elephant. So that he could reprimand his minister, who by this time was singing, dancing, and clapping with the divine name. As he grabbed the minister, he also started to sing and dance. This should be the change in you. You should not only be happy, but make those who touch you happy too. 
The story of Chaitanya is a very long, beautiful story. He was going from Patna to Puri. He was a teacher of philosophy who changed so much as he changed from philosophy to love. If you go to Jagannath Puri, you will see his cave where he finally sat down chanting the name of the Divine. I came here with so many questions, but now, they are all besides the point. What is happening? So many people are coming here with such clear minds. What is this movement? Delf is the same. You are myself, and how does this happen? It reveals to whoever it chooses, you do not make the choice to know the self. You must be so beautiful that the self falls in love with you and reveals itself. That is how I express these things, you are not to do anything. You must be so beautiful that it attracts itself to itself, and in doing so reveals itself to itself. The Divine Mother What is the best way to show your devotion to the Divine Mother? The best way to honor the Divine Mother is to be her Divine Child. In this century, many gurus have named women as their successors. What is the meaning of this trend? For centuries males have dominated, but now, they have to pay for the untold miseries and repression that they have made women endure. As far as woman's successors, I don't fall into this category and neither does my master. In fact, never in this lineage has there been a woman, starting from Gwadapada Acharya, the teacher of Adi Shankarukarya. Though there have been many women enlightened, no one in this lineage has left a woman as their successor. Do people have both male and female energies? Yes, even Shiva as Ardhaneshwara is half woman and half man. When you have compassion for others this is an example of female energy. When you feel that you want to protect something or someone, this is male energy working. Actually, they both come from the same source and are not different. Can a man embody the Divine Mother? Yes, of course. The Divine Mother is neither male or female. Why is the Earth referred to as Mother Earth? The Earth is the Mother because without her nobody is born. Because she is the Mother she must be worshipped. When you sit for penance you sit on her chest, so you must salute her no matter what you are doing. When you wake up in the morning, you must salute her. Everything comes from her and returns to her. He is the mother. What is your favorite form of the Divine Mother? Will you please tell us a story about her in this form? From the beginning my mother has been Mother Ganga. She is not only a river, but she is the mother. Because of her compassion, she flows over this soil. I have tread her banks from the Bay of Bengal to Atarkashi from to the present. My family went on yearly visits to Harad War. I will tell you a story of Gangama which happened when I was at the Mahakamba Mela in Prayag, the Mela which comes only once in 144 years. In the Mela, there are so many traditions and centers each trying to promote their own propaganda 24 hours a day. One day it was too crowded for me so, I went for a walk downstream to where the Amuna, Saraswati, and the Ganga flow was one to the Bay of Bengal. After about five kilometers a girl ran up to me and fell at my feet. I looked around but her family was nowhere in sight, which was very strange because a young Indian woman never goes out alone. Where are your parents? I asked. He replied, I have no parents, I am alone. Why are you here? I continued, why don't you go back to the Priyag where the Kamba is being performed? Why are you alone out here? Then she said, in this Mela everybody comes to remove their sins by having a bath in the confluence of the three holy rivers. Everybody leaves their sins, but what can I do with them? I have vowed to take the sins away from these people, and I do, but I must leave these sins at the feet of a true saint and be free of them. I have been searching the Mela for seven days, but I have not found anybody who could take these sins. But now, I have found you who are the only person to whom I can release my sins. I am the Ganga. Then, I looked at her beautiful eyes and knew that they were not human and I noticed that her body was transparent, and that I could look right through it. 
She stood up and walked out onto the river and slowly became one with the water. I stood there for many hours wondering what had happened and how I could have been so blessed to have seen her in her real form. He had been living in the heavens, but has compassionately come down to earth in response to Badra's penance. Now she blesses all those who see her or taste her or touch her. This is the experience of my mother. I also love Sarada Divi. Thera means essence, I am the essence of form and no form. I am the essence of everything. Therada is intelligence, you need the grace of Sarada to understand what I say. You need her grace to understand that you are already realized and that you have to do nothing. If you have any doubt then this goddess Sarada is not shedding her grace on you. When the teacher speaks immediately you must follow yes it is so. And not simply parrot back, Papa said to keep quiet. You must know the essence of what I mean. How can the mother's grace help us realize the self? You need the grace of the mother or of the teacher to realize self. The urge or desire to be free comes from within not from without. This within is the mother. Out of compassion she gives you this desire. Everybody in satsang has the blessings of the mother. Credit again goes to the mother, your own human mother, for sending you here. Your neighbor's mother didn't send you here, but your mother did and even gave you the form in which to come. There is no difference between Mother Earth, your own mother, and the Divine Mother. They all are the same. Are there any places that I should visit in India which are related to the mother? Yes, go to Ramanashram where they worship the feet of Ramana and walk around the holy mountain Aranachala. Also you can visit the Ganga and Haridwar and at Prayag where a half come a mela will soon occur. I will give you the name of the wife of God, Tulsi. You will be worshipped in the form of a holy plant which every Hindu worships. Just one leaf of Tulsi taken every day will purify you and make you holy. Remember the Divine Mother every moment when you get up. Prostrate to her and repeat her name. Do this don't just think it. Dedicate your life to her as she dedicated hers. Whoever repeats her name like Tulsi does is very blessed. Otherwise, you will have to suffer as you are. I have noticed many Durga shrines in Lucknow and I know of your connection with Buddha and Krishna. What about Durga? That which removes your ignorance is called Durga. That Shakti, that energy inside, through which you know Buddha, Krishna, or Durga is Durga. You must have seen in the temples and shrines that Durga rides a tiger and has a whip of a snake in her hand. This energy or power is called Durga. Without Durga you cannot understand anything, and so first you have to please your own energy. Then you will understand what you are doing. If you don't please your energy, you will go a wrong way. Most people do not even know which way they have to tread upon, and you will only know if your energy and your aspirations are pure without fault. So first pray to the goddess Durga within you so that she leads you on a good path. How can I become Durga and ride the tiger instead of being ridden by it? The tiger she rides on symbolizes mind. When you think I am not Durga, then the tiger rides on you. If you know mind is my tiger, then you are Durga. Most of the people become something that the tiger will ride, but you ride the tiger. This is called Durga. He has a sword in hand to cut any thought that comes. He also has a garland of skulls that she wears around her neck. These skulls mean old thoughts, people who are dead. Most people dwell on past thoughts, but you can use these past thoughts as your garland. Don't remember them anymore. These dead men are thoughts that have troubled you, and no other thought comes around your neck other than a dead one. The sword is double-edged, and so you can even cut those who come up from behind. Have this much strength and nobody will trouble you. This is how you can become Durga. Ride the tiger, keep a sword and trident in your hand, and simply see that I am Durga. People get in trouble only when they do not use the strength of their mind. You must use your intellect to know what will not help you, and what will create problems. 
Use your intellect to foresee the results of things. People do not use the intellect and are driven away, driven by the instinct of their mind. This is the only way to save yourself, to be free, and to help others also. Surrender. Let silence have you. Surrender to the source. Surrender to awareness. This is the only place of protection. Surrender your heart, and you will know all. Surrender to consciousness and bliss. Surrender means to surrender your bondage and to simply be freedom. Surrender is the ego bowing down to its source. No more demands or commands, but just putting all in the hands of the source. Submit to consciousness and bliss, and you will be happy. Surrender the addiction to your senses. You don't need to stop them, but you need to have perfect control over them. Ego is a poor driver of these five horses, but the Atman charioteer will not make a mistake. Surrender the reins of your senses to the Atman. As the river surrenders to the ocean, surrender yourself to the self, the source. And if you find you are still swimming on the surface of the ocean, stop swimming and you will sink into depths of love. Love, surrender to the divine and keep quiet. Wisdom. Inquire into the divine and keep quiet. I keep hearing about surrender, but I do not know what it is. Only one thing, you must surrender, ego. Surrender means I hand over to you this thing, and then this thing doesn't belong to me. If I give you an apple and you eat it and I ask for it back, you can't give it. Like this you must surrender the ego, the concept that I am the body, then you are God itself. Surrender your ego and if you do I will say to put it here in my hand. Then I assure you that you will be very happy throughout your life and afterlife also. Surrender is to submit your stupidness, your wickedness, to the will of the Lord. That's all. It is like a river discharging into the ocean. This is called surrender. What does a river discharging into the ocean become? Ocean. Yes then you can't see the river in the ocean. The instant it touches ocean, it is ocean. Like that surrender to your own self and forget everything else. Surrender your ego, your mind to your own self. Do it. Don't just hear about it. Surrender is to just allow whatever happens to happen. Don't initiate anything on your own behalf. This is surrender to the divine will. But shouldn't. But is a doubt and this is the mischief of the mind, not surrender. Lord, I surrender my personality, my individuality, my ego to you, this is called surrender. You have to decide, I won't force you. Very few people can surrender, very few in the world have done it. Recently, so many issues of survival have been coming up along with a lot of fear. I have nothing to hide. I place everything at your feet. I surrender everything to you. Your surrender cannot be done in speech or writing. It must actually be done. As the river surrenders to the ocean and loses its entity, its taste, and all its limitations. Everything absolutely changes when she meets her lover, the ocean. Though do it practically, not just in words. I only have the desire to wake up and discover the source of I. I have no future plans or ambitions. Please show me how to surrender. When you have no future plan or ambitions where are you at that time? To say that you have no plan is very easy, but you must understand this as well. When you really have no plan, not even a plan to die, then you are in the source of I. So your answer is already here in your request. When you have no plan you are already awake, and you will not ask this question. Come to luck now and ask me this question is also a plan. For where there is no plan, you are in the source. Simply keep quiet, make no effort and make no plans, and have no ambitions. Then you are enlightened like the Buddha himself. In the beginning Buddha had so many plans but none of them worked and so he abandoned all planning and sat under the Bodhi tree, enlightenment. Simply he sat quiet and like this you can also do it. It is not difficult. 
to stay here for one instant. I cannot put into words the experience I am having here in luck now. My experience is that when I surrender to the love that is self, and the love that is self is other, I experience what I call union, for lack of a better word. Union is always between two meeting people, then they are united. At that juncture it is called union. Though you can't call this a union because it is already there as oneness alone, not a union. It is not like two rivers meeting at the confluence. It is oneness and you can't experience this oneness unless you remove the others from it. Others mean ego, mind, body, senses and all the objects of the world. The experience of keeping all these aside is not an experience, and there is no word to describe this because it is not an experience. You have to know it, and this knowledge is called special knowledge. When you know this your tongue cannot speak and you cannot experience because experience needs an experiencer and an object of experience, but this is neither subject nor object, neither the seer or the seen. He also do not have a word for it. This is totally quiet. When there is surrender to love my mind stops. These experiences are not continuous because the I thought reappears. I see this reappearance as doubt coming from a deep sense of unworthiness, but this is only ego. The I thought is unworthy and limited. But that which comes before the I thought is. Ah right you are. And for that you have to wait for that time when the unworthy I thought ceases to exist. And for the other, nobody knows. That is not a thought itself, not even I. Though the I thought will somehow leave you and I suggest and advise that you have got nothing to do now. When the I thought has found that you are not worthy to stay it will go away. Do you follow? It will say that you are unworthy. For you called it unworthy but now it will call you unworthy, and it will leave you and go and spend the night with someone else. Though you have got nothing to do. No effort is ever to be made to cross this limitation, this unworthiness. You have no effort to make, simply keep quiet. When it appears, let it appear. When it disappears, let it disappear and you do not shake from your position. Simply enjoy what is happening, simply enjoy. Very good, very nice. I want to surrender, but I'm very resistant to it. I have a deep longing, but I can't do it. Actually, you have no longing to surrender, you have no longing to be happy, you have no longing to surrender to your own self because you have already surrendered to something else. You are already devoted to something else. Speaking angrily, you have already fallen in love with someone else. How can you surrender? You can't have two swords in the same sheath. You can't have two persons in the same mind, only one. Though when you are holding on to some other person, it is not a chaste longing. Either you can love the self or you can love someone else. You have to decide. Long for that person who will give you happiness, whether this person is inside or outside. This you have to decide. I am afraid, how can I overcome fear? Overcome fear by loving yourself. When you love your own self there is no fear. This is the only friend who will help you now and then. Every time everywhere, always, yourself is going to help you and nobody else will. No one in the entire universe will be able to help you when the darkness comes. Nobody will help you. They say, in dark days even your shadow will not stay with you. Even it will disappear. In the dark days of fear nobody will stay with you so you must see something that is light itself. If you face the sun then the shadow, the darkness, is behind you. But if you turn your back to the light, the shadow is in front of you. Why am I so insecure? Giggling because you are depending on something that is not secure itself and therefore, you cannot be happy. There once was a man meditating for a long time in one position in the middle of the forest. One day he noticed a creeper next to him that was growing up a small plant instead of growing up him. Though, he thought, 
This simple creeper has no trust in me and she has trust in a plant because she knows that I am mobile and the plant is not. I will get up and she will break. She is wise to go up this small tree because the tree will not move away, it is stationary. Nobody in the world is wise like the creeper. They have faith in things that move away. They will lose their body and their life. You must learn from the creeper. Depend on something which is everlasting so that you are safe. Insecurity is depending on something insecure, something that will die or run away. Don't depend on such a person. If you want to be safe keep the eternal happiness which is within you close to you. You're not only for freedom always and you will always be in the light. Why do I prefer these other things? It is a good question. Always put this question to yourself and someday you will fall in love with the self and reject everything, even your body. You can't even keep association with your body. It will only stay 70, 80 or 90 years. So do not depend on your body, let alone others. Why is it hard to love myself? Giggling it is not hard to love yourself, it is very easy. It is only difficult to love yourself because you love somebody else. Self is here and now. Nearest of the near dearest of the dear. But you love someone else, and therefore, you can't love your own self. That's all finished. Thank you. I know I must surrender to the grace of the teacher. What does it mean to surrender to you? The love is beyond what I contain. Surrender means that you must surrender your mind to your heart. Then your ego will leave you. Surrender is what the river does when it meets the ocean. Then there is no more river left and it is finished. Like this, you surrender to the grace of the teacher and keep quiet and see what happens. That's all I can tell you. Surrender to the teacher as a river surrenders to the ocean and loses all identification. There is no river in the ocean, no personality when you surrender to the grace. The traditional way to come to the Guru is to take some Ganga water and say to the Guru three times, I give you my mind, I give you my mind, I give you my mind. Then walk around the Guru three times. This establishes the relationship. That's all I can say to you. Would you suggest the method of surrendering the personal will to the divine will? Surrendering is only surrendering ego to self. Surrendering money or possessions is not surrender because it doesn't belong to you anyway. But if you surrender your ego, you get rid of everything. There was a very good and kind king of India who was growing old and wanted to give the kingdom to his son and focus on enlightenment. Since he did not have a lot of time to go to the Himalayas and do a lot of practice, he invited about 5,000 saints and sages from all over India to come to his palace. When they all gathered before him, he said, with one foot in the stirrup of the saddle on his horse, if anyone can give me enlightenment in the time it takes me to put my other foot in the other stirrup, I will give him thirty-one thousand cows with gold coins on their horns and half of my kingdom. In their minds the saints thought, how stupid a man this king is. We have all grown long gray beards trying to do all the practices which lead to enlightenment. How could he expect to get it in a finger snap? Even we are far from it. Then one mad-looking boy walked in. He was nude and his body was twisted. All the saints and sages started to laugh at him and he was told to go away. What are you laughing at you fools? Said the crippled boy, are you nothing more than just a bunch of leather merchants and butchers who can only see my skin and bones? Then he said to the king, I will give you enlightenment by the time you mount your horse. But this must happen between Guru and Shishya, between teacher and disciple. But I am not your Guru and you are not my student. Since knowledge is only given to the student as a prasad from the Guru, you must become my student and give me a gift to show that you are my student. Okay, said the king, I will give you thirty-one thousand cows with gold coins attached to their horns and I will give you half of my kingdom. O oh king, these cows, coins and kingdom do not belong to you. Who had them before you? My father, 
said the king. And before your father? My grandfather, he replied. Though all these things do not belong to you, next you will give them to your son. You are just the caretaker of all these things. It all belongs to the public. Give me something that belongs to you. So the king thought and said, I will give you my body. The mad-looking boy replied, How many queens do you have? Or, said the king, Though a quarter of your body belongs to each queen, your body has been given to the public as its king, to your queens as their husband, and to your sons as their father. Your body does not belong to you. Give me something which belongs to you. The king was clever, and he realized there was only one thing that he had that was his to give and said, I will give you my mind. Okay, said the boy, here is the Ganga water, now, say three times that you have given me your mind. The oath was taken and the king put one foot in the stirrup, but the young boy just walked out of the gathering and went away. Now everybody is laughing, and the king doesn't know what to do, but he does know that he is not free. Suddenly, he realized that this thought, I am not free, is in the mind, and that he had given his mind to the mad boy, and so he was not fulfilling the oath. To fulfill his oath he could not think. At this moment the boy walked in and touched him and said, What do you want? What about your other foot? Don't you want to put it into the stirrup now? He could not speak. He was finished, he was enlightened. This king was Danaka and the boy was the sage Astavakra. So this is what you must do. You must surrender your mind, your ego, your thoughts to that supreme power and then it will take care of you. This king then remained a king, but surrendered to that which was executing his duties as a king. How does one develop faith in that divine will? Faith is not needed now, neither is divine will nor individual will. You can do anything without the will because it will happen by itself. For faith you need another person to have faith in, and who is that person? The same marble that you use to stand on as a floor, you make into a statue of God and worship it. It is the same stone, and you ask the stone for grace. Though all these wills are just concepts in your own mind. Even divine will is a concept. There is no divine, you have created it. It has been imposed on you by the priests of the church. Therefore, your faith has been borrowed from someone else. God is your creation. You even create yourself as being separate in order to speak about God. God cannot be objectified or seen. He is the seer beyond objects. Go back to that supreme power and that you are that I am. Be independent of the concept of God which gives hell or heaven after death. Heaven here and now by knowing I am that. For one instant I felt no separation. This absence of separation is surrendering to that, and when you surrender to that you become that. There is no separation. There is no jiva ever born, no individuals ever born. There is no two. Where there is duality there is falsehood. No duality appears in that, for that alone is, and that isness is me. I do feel existence is looking after me like it looked after King Janaka. This is the highest faith, that existence is looking after you like a mother does. Though fully surrender to existence, just relax and there will be no fear. This relaxation is only knowing your own self. When you see other you are not relaxed, but when you see yourself this is relaxation. No fear. The whirlpool is pulling and there is no way out. Papaji, please take care, off me. People are afraid of whirlpools, because the boats that go into them do not come back to the surface. Though I give you one piece of advice, when you see a whirlpool and you are a strong boatman, then throw away the oars and break the mast. Then the boat will be very safe. No more rowing, no boatmen, no oars, no mast. Then this whirlpool will take care of you and nobody else will help you. But you have to throw away all these things, like the ego that says I have to row across and I have to stay out of the whirlpool. 
these imaginations and desires of your hands, arms, oars, and workmanship of the boatmen you must leave aside. Now you will see how safe you will be. This whirlpool will take care of you if you surrender everything into it. Now you can't go down. He will keep you on her chest. This universe is a whirlpool. Everybody is in difficulty. This Emsara is a whirlpool. Everybody, even the most clever boatmen like Alexander the Great, have all sunk down. The only way not to drown is to go to a person and learn from him how not to use your force and how to surrender. That will save you. How can I make bliss shine unimpeded? So many hours I spend in silent happiness, but unbroken surrender is calling. Please help me surrender completely to self and make the poisons of the snake of pride harmless. It is absolutely necessary that you surrender to the Sakuru. Your surrender should be like that of a kitten. The mother cat holds and carries the babies wherever she wants. Kitten has nothing to do with it. On the other hand, the baby of the monkey must hold on to its mother by itself from the birth itself. It clings to the waist of the mother and is always in fear, you can see it in their eyes. When the mother jumps from one branch to another, the child is afraid that it will fall and sometimes I have seen them fall. So surrender like a kitten. This surrender doesn't take time, it only takes an instant. In this short time all the mistakes of millions of years are washed away, this is the beauty of attending satsang. Satsang is the raft to carry you across the ocean of samsara. Don't worry about the sharks which are waiting to devour you. This raft is a very sure and certain vehicle. No misery will touch you. I feel that there is a great difference between complete surrender and simply being passive. I desire to completely surrender to love and truth, the source. Nothing else matters in the universe. Can you guide me to complete surrender? Please accept the gratitude from this heart which has been forever changed by gazing into your eyes. If you love someone and nobody else at the same time, this is called complete surrender. An example of half surrender is surrender to a girl, giving her all your money and promises of commitment and fidelity, but you do not speak the truth because you say the same thing to your neighbor's wife. This is partial surrender. One night both of your girlfriends meet together and discover that they are sharing you and that your promises were false. This is dishonesty. At least with yourself, always be honest. Because it knows everything anyway in all the states of waking, dreaming and sleeping. How can you hide your guilt from one who sees every activity? So be honest and speak, let thy will be done. According to its will only, activate your mind, senses and activities. Do you now understand how to be honest to your own self? I surrender my ignorance to you. If you surrender your ego and ignorance this is all that you have to do. Nothing more. Then the grace will take you in her arms instantly. Most people can't surrender. They only speak it with their mouth, they don't actually surrender. I remember someone asked the Maharshi about surrendering the ego. They asked, is complete total surrender a must for a devotee to know self? I cannot completely surrender because I have other responsibilities to fulfill. Though I am here in Taruvanamalai, my mind is at home. The Maharshi replied, if you cannot totally surrender, partial surrender will also work. Though partial surrender will also do, and slowly partiality will also disappear. Then you will get prasad, a gift from the teacher who will bless you. But you must be totally doubtless about the teaching of the teacher, then it will work like gunpowder. This is complete surrender. Partial surrender will be like wet wood ignited by matches, you have to use so many matchboxes before it gets dry at the cost of your own effort. The wood will also burn, but it will give a lot of smoke and you will start coughing. Then you will see that complete surrender is better than this smoky surrender. The experience of spaciousness comes and yet I feel vulnerable to ego. 
Go deep into this spaciousness and don't make effort, don't think. Stay as you are, everything will be fine if you don't allow a thought to arise. This is eternal love, stay here. Everything will be done by itself. Let something take charge of you, let something rise from within. It will function, just allow it to rise. This will work within the consciousness. You are not to do, think, or plan anything. Stay as is. Allow it to function. Nature will function without your mind and thought. Only action and reaction. No doership, no ego. This is the end of suffering. I am doing, I have done, I will do his manifestation and suffering. But when you really look at it, you will see that you have never done anything at all. But out of nothing you can do anything without any reward for your activity. All activity will be no activity, and you will have no footprints left to give you the next cycle of suffering. Surrender to your totality. You have no limitations or notions of limitations, no intentions or concepts, only freedom. Yes, yes, I see. This seeing is being. When you see through the eyes at objects, it is distraction, but true seeing is being and this seeing is with different eyes. It depends on you which eyes you want to use. True sight has nothing to do with eyes. It is an inner sight, an inner being. If you do this, you will always see with the same eye, whether you are looking within or without. Then there will be no difference between samsara and nirvana. This eye has no limitation, no inside and no outside. Give up looking through these two eyes and the true eye will open and you will have divine sight and this seeing is being. Chapter, I am with you wherever you are. There is no escape from love, there is no east or west for peace and freedom. No matter where you go it is always with you. That thing is the reminder that you are home, that you are the home itself, so you can't return back from satsing. It is your nature. This experience cannot be forgotten. That which can be forgotten is forgotten by the mind, but the mind has no access to this experience. But be careful and vigilant. You will keep the problems most dear to you and so your old friends, your wicked habits, the asuras, will come back and invite you to suffer again. They are very strong and so you must be. Break these old habits and you are free, so only travel with those in the same boat, only associate with those going in the same direction. Go to truth at any cost, always keep quiet. When the circumstances of asanas arise so will the asanas, no matter how dormant they are, and especially if you are quiet. A bullet kills once but a asana kills again and again. So vigilantly inquire. Expectations are illusions, so don't run after them and don't get involved in anger, lust and greed either. Just don't involve yourself with them. Keeping quiet and content is the best weapon. Joy will also destroy mind and the demons. Once you bury them do not dig them up again. You are responsible for your family and friends so the satsang has to continue. Once you know the truth you must share it. I was staying in Ramanashram before the partition of the country in 1947. One day in the middle of July someone asked me on which side of the river Ravi I was from. I told him it was much beyond this river. Then he told me about the partition crisis of the country, which I didn't know too much about since I neither had time for reading newspapers, nor for politics. He said that in the middle of the next month the country would be partitioned and so my family, who was living between Lahore and Peshawar, would be massacred if I did not save them. I told him that I had forgotten everybody and that it had all been a dream, parents, family, children, country. All of it was a dream that was over now. This was how strong my detachment was and how strong it had to be. This man told the Maharshi what I had said, and as we went out on his morning walk together the Maharshi asked me, Why don't you go and look after your family? I said, When I came here I had my wife and parents and children, but when you looked at me everything was finished and now you are my only relation and no one else in the world. If you call it a dream, why are you afraid of a dream? 
It is better if you go into the dream and look after your wife and relations. Why be afraid of the dream? Your dream hand is quite safe in the mouth of the dream tiger. Like this, live in the world and call it a dream. Don't be afraid and work as you work in the dream. The dream is a dream and nothing in it is real, but you as their son are also in the dream. So let the dream son go to the dream country and save the dream parents in the dream. So in this way he defined the dream for me. Then the Maharshi said, With this sentence he gave me the teaching, He is the I am which is with me wherever I am. What could I say to him? He was telling me to leave. So I prostrated to him and collected the dust from under his feet, went thrice around him and left. I went to the Punjab and through several miraculous events rescued my family from all the butchering. This is the benefit of staying with the teacher. The teacher not only gives you freedom but also looks after whatever you need. When I was back up north, I saw that the train for Lahore was empty except for Muslims shouting kill the Hindus. And a group of Hindus huddled together for safety. So the thought comes into my mind to go over and sit with the Muslims, even though I would much rather have been with the Hindus. I even had an alm tattooed on the back of my hand, and my ears were pierced like only the Hindus had them. So who gave me this thought to sit with them? I was even shouting with the Muslims. So with this Savior alm on my hand and the blessings of my teacher, I arrived safely, while every other Hindu was taken from the train and killed. When I arrived in my hometown no Hindus were there. Even the tonga, the horse cart, that I took was a Muslim tonga. The place where I lived was a pure Hindu colony, Guru Nanak Pura, and so to not raise any suspicion with the tonga driver I told him to go to a Muslim colony nearby, Islampura. From there I walked to my house and rang the bell, but nobody answered. Finally, I heard my father's voice from the rooftop asking who I was. I'm your son. Don't you even recognize my voice? I yelled back. Why have you come? He asked. How did you come? Are the trains still working? You should take all the relatives out of here on the trains. The district magistrate, who was a Muslim and a very good friend of mine while I was in the army, protected us in his own home and helped to arrange our travel back to India. Our houses had already been taken by refugee Muslims from Amritsar who had their women taken from them by the Sikhs. Everybody in the family, almost forty people, made it out safely by train, whereas most families were partially or totally destroyed. Eventually my parents were flown out by the diem, because by the time they came trains were no longer running. This is the grace of the Master. Nobody could harm us and he took care of everything. Questioner, Papaji, is it okay to leave luck now and go to the West? Do you think I am ready? Answer from Papaji. Yes. There is no East and West. This is only on the map. There is no East and West for the Master. Wherever you go is the presence of the Teacher and you will feel it. If you have surrendered, it is the responsibility of the Teacher to guide you at every step. I am afraid of changing back to my old ways when I return to Denmark. When you return to Denmark how do you expect that you will change? When you came to Lucknow you expected something to change and so it has, but you are a different person from what you were when you first came. So don't expect any change when you return. Stay always in satsang and do not have any fear that you will return to the previous state. You can never change. This moment has offered you silence, quietness and happiness so do not have fear. You will have satsang in Denmark. Tell them the story of what happened here. I've had experiences but this experience can go back to Denmark. It has to stay with you. The experience is that you are free. You have to stay with it. How can it go anywhere? I am free will remain always with you when you have an experience of freedom. You have not to keep this experience, you are to be that otherwise it is all just imagination and theory. 
How come that after the revelation of emptiness a character can still arise and think of itself and the world as real and meaningful? After seeing what I have how can I even think that coming and going are possible? Who speaks about emptiness? Who is aware of this emptiness? That person is your own Atman which is not empty and not full. It is aware of everything, emptiness and samsara, and nothing is trouble because it all comes out of that. This world of imagination is its own production and so there is no difference between samsara and nirvana. The wave rises from the ocean and thinks that she is independent because she has a name and a form and movement. The ocean doesn't mind this and knows that all the waves will rise, play and fall and again become ocean. What is the substance that has never arisen nor fallen? That is water. The water is always the same though it may take the differing forms of ocean or waves. The water is observing everything rise and fall, even the ocean. Why in the light of this emptiness does Papaji's acceptance and rejection still seem important, as if I am something that needs something from something else? This I which needs something from someone, is the egotistical I which has been separated for generations from its home which it no longer knows. This I travels from one incarnation to another trying to find its true parental house. He needs someone to tell her to go home and once there, she will know that she has never left. But if she doesn't go home she can wander for millions of years through samsara. For the billions on earth, only a few PS will want to return home. All other eyes will wander and make relationships with other eyes. You have come to luck now and now you know who you are. You are forever in my heart. Day is such. When you go back to your country see the circumstances that you are placed in and react accordingly. You won't forget the glimpse of peace and love. No it is the tendency of your mind to create problems and doubts. There are no problems and no doubts so don't think about them. I want to thank you for everything you have given me in the last four months and for all your blessings and love. Don Juan once picked up a small stone and flung it onto the mountain. Then he said, Look Carlos, what once was a pebble in my hand has become a mountain. Likewise, you have come to satsing the truth and have become truth and love. This satsing is the river Janavi which purifies you when you touch her. Those who have a dip in this river become one with her and they will return a different person. You came here for only a couple of days, but stayed for months because here truth and love are flowing. Wherever there is satsang where a teacher is speaking to those who need this beauty and truth, that is a place to stay. I will give you the name John Ivy, that which blesses and purifies everything. She relieves all of the pains and sins which people carry for lifetimes. Just touch her immediately they are washed away. She's so blessing and caring, she's the mother. Whoever swims in her becomes eternal. Like this bless everybody that comes and enters your heart. How is it possible to remain this shining ocean of love in all circumstances? With all the stress in my life in Vienna, it is hard to stay as this. This is the question that most people ask me after having the beautiful experience and I am happy that you are here for an explanation. First of all, you want this experience to stay with you all the time. This also means that you lose it at times. Pure awareness is impossible to lose, but it is the bliss that leaves when there is stress. When you want to keep this experience all the time it means that you want to bring this experience into time. Why should you bring this experience into the time? When this experience occurred, it was beyond time. Anything that happens in time is worthless. Anything that you get in time, happiness or peace, or a person that you love, within this time it will disappear someday. So why do you have this desire that this timelessness should come into time just to oblige you? If you don't desire it to come into time, it will be an eternal experience. To make this eternal do not give rise to the desire to bring the timelessness into time. Time means death, unhappiness, past and mind. There is no difference between time and mind. Let it be as it is. 
You want to jump into the ocean and once you jump there is no return. When the river discharges into the ocean, it becomes the ocean and stays as the ocean. It is only that the river has lost its form and name. Remove the name. Consciousness has no name. Remove the name and form and what will remain, what do you see? Nothing pure being. This nothing is always nothing, not sometimes something and sometimes nothing. Is it clear now? It is clear. There will be no difference when you return to Austria or when you are in luck now because these are only names. Any name is in time, but consciousness is not in time. Very good. No work will interfere with this peace, it won't be a hindrance to you. Don't fear there will be no problem. You are not involved with your work as you once were, because then it was your ego which thought it was doing all the work. Now you know that there is something beyond even your capacity to understand, beyond ego from where your ego arises, that is doing all the work. They in this source. See that the work is being done by your body which is activated by something else, and you simply observe it all happening. Turn your face in the reverse gear to where the energy comes to even close your finger. Go beyond and look to the reservoir of your thinking and identify yourself as that. Then all will go on by the grace of the supreme power. Turn your face to the supreme not towards an object which is not permanent. Turn your face beyond the objects to where the energy is coming. Then you will know that nothing can interfere with your work and it will go on as it is. If there is anything that you received here that can be lost, let it be lost. You have not come here to achieve what can be lost, but to know that which you will never lose. Don't aspire for what can be lost. What cannot be lost, what is eternal is seated in the cave of your heart shining like a diamond, look within. It is just so hard to leave luck now. How can you ever leave luck now? You cannot leave this luck when you are in now and wherever you go you are in now itself. In now there is luck. There is happiness, there is love, and there is beauty. You can't get out of it. Luck now will never leave you. That is what people of luck now have been saying for millennia. Once you are in luck now you can never leave it. The body go don't care about its movement. What will be immovable will be with me. You can go anywhere you like, all these planets belong to you. The whole cosmos, all these millions of planets are in just a small corner of yourself. Where will you go? You can't get out of it. You cannot leave me because you are in my heart. Now I feel my leaving is like a leaf of a tree falling gently, beautifully and quietly, sinking into the embracing ocean. I bow in gratitude and take you in my heart. Very good, very nice. When the leaf falls from the tree it has no intention to fly northward or southward. It has nothing to do. It flies with the wind, with the wind of grace. You are a leaf falling from the tree of ego. Now you have no relation with the tree and so you are falling, and whichever direction the wind blows it will take you with it. I am very happy that you have done your job and are now returning. Thank you. Many people say that my stay is too short, but it only took one moment. How can I best remain aware? Is commitment the way? No, no commitment. You don't need to commit to anything. Just feel and trust that I am what I am. This is no commitment. You are as you are. You have been as you were. You will be as you will be. This is a trust in you, Tam what I am. Not in something else. It is very easy. It is very natural. You are not to become anything or unbecome anything, but be as you are. Even if you felt incomplete as you were leaving and felt that you didn't get anything it will not have been a waste of time. If you say you didn't get anything, you are right because I don't give anything and you don't get anything. No time in satsang is a waste of time. This will work someday even if you have not felt benefited. It will work nobody can be disappointed. When they are ready, all the truth spoken of here will rush into their mind. I feel very complete and now I see your face everywhere. 
When you fall in love with someone you see the face of that one everywhere. And when the love is very deep whatever you see is your beloved, and you even become that. Then identification as the beloved takes place. Even my feet don't touch the ground. This is also true, you will think that you are flying because you feel no weight. I am very happy for your visit here. Thank you. Do you have to practice to get to the effortless state? I'm returning to Brazil soon and I wonder what meditation you advise me to do there. When you are in Brazil, keep your hands active as you work and your thought on me. Keep your thought within, keep your thought on your heart. Keep your thought on your heart and your hands on your work. Keeping your thought on me means thinking who am I, along with this you should work. Mind can stay in only one place at a time. If you draw it into the heart, it can't see anything but heart. Keep it here constantly and you will see that it can never escape. Constantly keep your mind on your heart. When people leave luck now they often ask for advice. My only advice for you when you return home is to keep quiet. You can speak to your friends about this quietness and tell them how to keep quiet and where you picked this advice up. That is enough. I am the dust compared to you. I am not worthy to teach them how to be silent. Then simply keep quiet. They ask you what happened in luck now, simply keep quiet. Then let them think whatever they want to think. I am afraid that when I leave you to go back to Germany I will fall back into my old habits. Don't fear your old habits all of Munchen will be changed when you go back. You will see everything differently than before and you will not look the same. Don't worry. As you go into the world, always remember what you love most in your life and don't touch anything else. Do this for one moment, and this love which you have ignored will rise to the surface. But unlike other things on the surface which come and go this love is the depth itself in which there is no rising or falling. Just look at it now and that is all you have to do. Don't fall in love with the wave because they will not last. They move about and are soon finished. Don't touch anything that appears because it will soon disappear. Look within to where there is no name or form and you will know who you are, freedom. I feel it is time to go out into the world with this diamond you have given me and tested on samsara. Whatever the teacher has he hands over to one when he thinks he is ready. Guru also hands over everything to his student knowing that he deserves it. I will tell you a story about this. There was a saint in China who was about to announce his successor so he held a contest, the disciple that would come up with the best gatha, the best statement of the dharma, would win the robes and begging bowl of the saint. Though all through the day and night the learned swamis of the ashram were writing their gathas on a board in the main hall. There was a very humble man in this ashram who was illiterate and was always working pounding the paddy, but late at night when all his work was finished he walked into the hall and asked what all the excitement was about. Guru will give his robes and begging bowl to the one who writes the best gatha, he was told. He asked, what is the best gatha so far? They told him, a very wise Swami has said, keep the mirror of the mind clean so no dust will alight, then you will be free. Then this humble paddy pounder simply replied, where there is no mirror, where will the dust alight? This gatha was written in with the others. Around midnight the saint came to look at the gathas, and when he saw the gatha of the paddy pounder, he knew he had found his successor. So he went to him and gave him his robes and begging bowl and told him to run as fast as he could all through the night toward the frontiers because if the swamis of the ashram found him they would kill him. And so he left. The next morning the guru was found naked and the swamis were furious and soon figured out what had happened. A few hours later, they had caught up with the paddy pounder and accused him of stealing the guru's only possessions. He replied, you can have this begging bowl and this old robe, but you can never take the light that my guru has given me. They could not steal what the real gift teaching was because the sakura dwells in your heart and in the heart of all the beings of the universe.
Don't try to clean the mirror because it will always get dirty again. There is no mirror and no dust to a light. Get rid of arrogance that you are not self and that there is other. Better to throw the mirror away and realize that all is self. This realization is the diamond and a gift from the Guru. Now you need not test this diamond. You will be the same and the world will be the same. Now just don't be afraid because there is no difference between Samsara and Nirvana. Go afresh and face all the circumstances that present themselves. Lam worried that I will lose the contact I have with you when I leave. This fear is not real as you will experience. These four walls around us now have nothing to do with our peace. You are this peace and you can't gain it or lose it. Anything that you do gain you will lose because it is a material gain only. Don't worry and go wherever you like. Depend on the mother for she will take care of you. You should go back and continue this work there, it doesn't take much. Devote just five minutes to yourself when you rise in the morning and before you go to sleep. Then you will get what you want. I have seen no results in people who have spent decades in Himalayan caves, but this will work. Just have a strong desire for it and nothing will stop you. Think of your beloved 24 hours a day. With this constant remembrance you will be with your beloved and not different from that. How can I serve you while in Europe? What can I do for you is what you can do is always look behind you to see who is following you as you walk down the street, and who never leaves you, even when you are in sleep. Who is aware of all your activities whether you are awake, dreaming or sleeping. Find this person who gives you the strength to move your tongue whenever you speak. When you see, find the one who tears behind the retina of the eye. Do this for me, and you will stay in touch with your own self. I feel a strong urge to go back to my family and share this with them. I feel I have neglected them. No, you have not neglected them. You will bring them the peace and love of all beings. This they never told you because they were never told. You can take this gift to them. I want to share time with them while it is still possible. Is this a good idea, or am I lost in illusion? It is a good idea. You are a good son of noble parents. Only noble parents give birth to a son who will attend satsang. It is so rare for this to happen, maybe one in every twenty million. I found that when I returned to the West after being with you two years ago, that I tended not to engage in activities very much and wasn't interested in the world. When you return from satsang back home to your country, it is quite natural that you are not as active as the people around you. You are going to be a different person. But you were working after you met Ramana. You had an awakening and yet you went on working and supporting your family. This didn't happen, Tomi. Yes, I worked as I was with Ramana, and it didn't make any difference. I only visited him on Sundays and worked the rest of the week. I would leave Saturday afternoon, get there at night and spend all Sunday there with him and return to Madras early Monday morning. Then, I would attend to the business of my office from 10 a.m. to Saturday afternoon again. Meher she never advised people to stay on and do nothing. He didn't tell them to reject their life and their work. You are the absolute that and you have nothing to do from your own initiative. That will take care of you, that is your own self within. It will guide you if you surrender your will to its will. Don't think you are doing anything yourself because self uses karma to govern all. You can't get rid of your karma and you are led to do whatever it leads you to do. You can't stop karma. What about the responsibilities which occur as appearances in that? The responsibilities which you speak about are from the ego mind. Actually, you do not have any responsibility. What comes face it and do according to the command of self. Then you will not bear the fruits of the activities which you are performing because you will be that. That will be responsible for your activities. Keep up this experience by always meditating with the astral body, not the physical body. Let the body within the body meditate. This will instruct the physical body how to act according to the routines of work and responsibilities. 
Everything seems to be so dreamlike after meeting you. Before coming to Lucknow everything was so real to you, but now it is a dream. This is the lesson you get when you return home. Things seem real only when the mind told you so. But when mind is not present all this is a dream. Though if you experience this reality as a dream, everything looks real when you dream. A tiger which pounces on you in your dream seems very real, and it is real during the dream. Even the dreamer seems real. But when you wake up, you are not afraid of the tiger because you know it never existed. It was only a dream tiger. Though it is with everybody. They are all afraid of this dream because nobody understands that it is not real. So whatever comes understand that it is all dream, don't be afraid of the dream tigers. So should I just stay home and not come to luck now anymore and live life as it comes? Yes, live life as it comes. If it brings you to luck now then return to luck now. Live life as it comes, but don't be involved in it. Let it come don't reject it. If nothing comes keep contented and sit quiet. This is a true teaching. Till some doubts and notions and unworthiness seem to arise. Doubts and notions belong to the past. Now no more doubts or notions will touch you. Just laugh at them when they arise. Grace knows nothing about unworthiness or worthiness. Throw a flower or spit into the ocean and it responds the same. Unworthiness is just mind baggage. Unworthiness is only your ego postponing its destruction. The self doesn't mind that the mind goes to Europe because Europe is in the self. Go anywhere and you will be taken care of. The problems arise when the ego takes the burden of controlling itself. Identify with the self and the mind will go nowhere. I came here to Lucknow in the first place because I heard you laugh on a tape. I love your laugh. Here we laugh for no reason and it is fine, but in the West if you laugh like this they consider you to be not sane or on drugs or both. Once when I was in Spain giving meditation classes somebody jumped up and ran forward to kiss my feet. He started to jump up and down laughing and saying, I am God, I am God. Then he ran out. To say that I am God is fine in India after all, it is the truth, but to say this in the West is not acceptable. The next day I found out how unacceptable it was. This man was dancing and laughing in ecstatic bliss when the police came and detained him long enough for his wife to come and pick him up. And you know what she did. He drove him straight to a mental institution and filed for divorce on the grounds that he had gone insane. On the contrary, after having tasted what true reality is, this man was probably one of the most sane people in all of Europe at that time. He had no expectation or ideas of reality, he just was reality. Though I visited this man in the insane asylum and taught him how to live in society after this realization and soon after he was released. This is my experience about the social laws in the West about laughing. You can go to Holland or any land. You will be okay. Thank you. I haven't found a niche in society where I can both work and express myself. You need not express yourself. Just remain in innocence. Keep your life in innocence. Whatever comes for your livelihood accept it. Don't have any desire for this or that. Children don't care about tomorrow. If they are given a sweet, they eat it immediately. Like this, what is given, eat it and finish it off. What is your work now? Tell a lawyer. A liar? I see. This is innocence. If a liar says that he is a liar, is it the truth or a lie? Nobody would say that they are a liar, so you must not be a liar. So how to live in the world? Like an innocent child. What has been happening so far is beyond words. Anything you can sense you can describe. But what you cannot describe is freedom from the words, freedom from mind, freedom from intellect. Everything is describable, but that beyond words is what you really are, but you don't believe it. 
everything you see is an object which begins and ends and it is not worthwhile. When you see something beyond description, it is your own self. The eye sees objects, but how can it see and describe itself? It cannot describe itself because it is too close to itself. In the same way, what is too close to your true nature defies all description. So, now go back to your country to the world with consciousness, faith and trust that I am free. This world seems like such an illusion to me now. How did this illusion ever arise? What is this illusion? How to avoid being tricked again? The power of illusion is very strong. Chapter. The world is illusion. Under every wave is ocean, under every name is substratum, under every appearance, this is you. If you do not forget who you are, this appearance is the cosmic dance. The unnameable has given you this shape to play, to love, to know thyself. Don't forget this. Narayana, the creation of the illusion. The ocean does not forget that it is a wave, but the wave forgets that it is an ocean. This is why there is manifestation, for sake of play this forgetfulness arises. The world is only for celebration. Manifestation is just a cosmic drama to be enjoyed. There is only play, and it is not existent, and continues because whatever you think so it becomes. This manifestation was created by you, and it will be destroyed by you. The first thought is I. Then arises my, which is ego, and then comes all manifestation. Time mind manifestation is projected out of I which is itself the projection required to manifest the play. Undress yourself of these things and find where I rises from. You are Shiva. If you do not project I, and your Shakti is the projection by which to play. Consciousness is the source of this play of the mind, and that is all. The ocean cannot stay alone, and so the notion of wave is created. When waves rise ocean loses nothing, and when waves fall ocean gains nothing. Tamsara, the illusion, Maya, the play, are the waves on the ocean of Nirvana. Waves are not separate from the ocean, rays are not separate from the sun, you are not separate from existence consciousness bliss. This is a reflection of that. Questioner, what is creation and how does this illusion arise? Answer from Papaji. In the beginning consciousness is alone like a still lake. Then a ripple arises and this is name and form. From consciousness the thought arises I am consciousness. This is the I sense. Then desire arises and this is ego. The ripple thinks that it is separate and this creates limitations which are time and space. The ripple is a blink of thought and this is ego rising from consciousness, but ripples are not different from the lake from water. Forget this and you are in trouble. The senses rise and then sense objects and all of manifestation is created to play with you and delude you. When you say that all is imagination it is no longer imagination because you are awake. Awaken from this dream called manifestation. Don't go away from yourself and the ego will not rise. Objects are not other than senses, which are not other than body, which is not other than mind, which is not other than I. Truly this creation is not other than your own reflection because this I is consciousness. Find the source of this I, with absolute vigilance and stop thinking, for thought is the world process itself. Is the world that we see the totality of the universe? There are many planes of existence. The ones above ours are occupied by very beautiful beings and on the ones below the people are subhuman and very ugly. I visited many planes where people are very handsome and you can see through their bodies. Other planes below made me very afraid because they had half faces and other gruesome deformities. Next time we will become gods if we don't have moksham here, and then we will eventually come back to this plane because this is the only place where you can win freedom. Even gods must be born here if they want freedom. Consciousness takes any shape that it thinks, 
just as gold takes any shape of jewelry and remains gold. Consciousness creates the universe without losing its nature, just as an ocean creates waves while remaining an ocean. Though there is no multiplicity and no unity, it just is. You are not aware of this, and this is why a rope looks like a snake, though upon close investigation there is no snake. The same is for the eye. Upon close investigation there is no eye, and this universe disappears into emptiness, into consciousness. Never did anything arise, this is the ultimate truth. Think this because as you think so it becomes. Break this snake's fangs, know thyself. Dwell in your own self and do not look at what is creator and what is created. Simply abide in your own self. The whole world and all its forms come from the source in which there is nothing. The thought arises in the source. Let me be multiplied and existence unfolds with past, present and future. For 25,000 years the Vedas have been saying this, Ek Koham Bahasham, let me be multiplied. The purpose of this creation is for self to love and enjoy self. Though the purpose of human birth is freedom. All form is sound and arises from sound. Any name that you utter will be form, but there is one sound which does not make any form. This unknown is the substratum of all that is known. The known will deceive you some day, so a friendship only with that which neither appears or disappears. Consciousness experiences infinite births and creations in a moment. These creations, these lilas, are neither real nor unreal. There really is no creation and no experiencer, and yet there are experiences and experiencers. This is a paradox only for mind because in consciousness there is no difference between object and subject. In this instant inquire who am I, and this inquiry will reveal itself to itself. Otherwise, creation will go on forever. Non-inquiry is the basis for creation and inquiry is the basis of freedom, for the realization that your nature is sat chit ananda. Our true nature is sat chit anand knowledge consciousness bliss why did we leave it to assume this bodily form why assume that you left it this is foolish this assumption itself is the creation of the illusion that i have just described to you who told you that you are not satchit anand it is only this assumption which will cause endless rebirths why don't you have the conviction that you never left this home why don't you have the conviction that I am sat chit ananda, that T am free? Because it doesn't feel that I am free. Why not have the convictions that I am not born and I will never die? What you think is what happens, so think of a better reality like, I am that alone if you are going to think at all. Is God as self and God is Leela the same? Both are the same. What is the difference between the ocean and the waves? Where there is ocean there must be waves, and where there are waves there must be ocean. Where there is ocean there must be the play of waves on the surface which eventually returns and settles back in. Say I am the Leela, the Leela yeah, and enjoy it. If you say that there is self and there is Leela, then you are not speaking from self from experience. There is no difference and no non-difference, there is nothing in anything. There is only self. Unenlightenment is a game, Leela. It is a game to be enjoyed, but remember, death, suffering and pain are the taxes of sense pleasures. Better to be free of all these taxes. Realize freedom, let death and suffering happen to the body. Play with the crocodile of samsara, nothing can touch you but don't end up in its stomach. Play as freedom. Maya, the Shakti of the Illusion. It is a dark path at twilight, and you see a deadly snake lying along the side of the path. Suddenly someone comes from the other direction, and as they walk by the snake, they ask you what you are frightened of. You tell them all about the poisonous snake that they just stepped over. Then they tell you and show you that it is just a rope. The snake does not exist and never did exist, and yet it manages, by the power of illusion and superimposition, to conceal the reality, the rope. 
as the concept of a snake conceals the rope so Maya conceals the Atman. Atman is everything, pure consciousness, eternally free and blissful, but imagination conceals this with non-existent name and form, with superimposed subject and object. Whatever you think is, whatever you imagine to be is superimposed over reality creating a transient dream reality. As the concealer of reality, this is the Shakti Avarana Divi. As the projector of illusion, this is the Shakti Maya Divi. The incredible power of Maya comes from Atman only. All name and form is this Maya. When you see this name and form, you miss the substance substratum. If you see the ring, you do not see the gold. Name and form dissolving into void becomes being. Name and form will not provide happiness. Wherever there is name and form there is something concealed, and that is the happiness. The waking state is a film starring the ego, directed by karma, and produced by maya. Even the waking state is in the dream state. Reality is always real and unreality is never real. You only dream this illusion when you are sleeping so wake up. The snake is always non-existent. Freedom is when the illusoriness of the illusion is removed. Doubt is the illusory wall between you and freedom. Stop confirming the reality of the illusion by running after it. Expectation is the running. Mayer is the imagination that never ends and never exists. Her projected Leela comes from the inside, and for the sake of her plain knowledge of reality is elusive. The world is subject-object, to know the reality, find what this subject-object is projected on. Find the screen which is not touched by anything. Like this, contemplation of self terminates illusions of false appearance. What is not here now is not real and not worth striving for. Anything that can go away is not worth clinging to. Reality is always here so don't cling to anything or Maya has fooled you again. Why does Maya, this world illusion exist? Because you need her. Because you need her. You have desires that you want to fulfill and so you need her to fulfill them. But you are walking through the burning sand after a river which is only a mirage because she doesn't exist. It is just your desire which creates her. Very few will stop walking and turn their face within to the real stream, the stream of nectar. Can you physically prove that reality is an illusion? Concepts cannot be proven and that is all that illusions and reality are. Illusion and reality do not exist as the river doesn't exist in the mirage. Don't leave the steady well of spring water. Only those who do and go to the desert will see a mirage and suffer this illusion. The truth cannot be proven or experienced. Everybody is involved in this illusion, but they don't know who she is. Everybody likes her and so they are not happy and peaceful, but are suffering instead. Learn from Kabir to be happy and eternally in bliss. He sings to Maya, you are a great deceiver nobody recognizes you. But I know who you are. You said that God helps all who come to him. You also said that you are God and so I beg you please to destroy this illusion once and for all today. Right now. Show me this illusion and I will instantly burn it without using even a Mac stick. But you have to show me. Show me this girlfriend because you want to decide something about her, not about you. I will take care of her whether she likes to be destroyed or I can purify her so that again she will be with you. First of all, you should know the meaning of illusion. Illusion means Maya. Maya means that which does not exist. Though how can I destroy that which does not exist? What is projected onto the screen is illusion. You don't have any awareness of the projection when you are engrossed in the physical pictures of the movie theater. In these pictures some are happy and some are sad, some die in the ocean and some have gone to the graveyard. You are so into these people on the screen that you become one with those who suffer and those who enjoy. This is the story of Samsara. 
When the projection is over and another show is to be shown, you will see for a moment what the pictures have been played on. This screen is not tainted at all. She's not wet from the ocean, and she is not burned by the fire. All of these projections are not real. Only if you will know this, and they will not come for the next show. But some people watch the same movie again and again. You know that you are the screen and that all the projections are illusions then only can you enjoy them. You will know that you cannot be tainted. On that screen that you are this body appears. This body, whether male or female, needs the opposite body to play with. This is the story that is going on, it will not end. Simply stay quiet and you will know that you have never been tainted because you have never been born. The one who is born and dies is only a concept. Knowing this you will become very happy. This is the start of the romance with your own self. Wherever you are speak this to people. In this play of Maya, what is the role of the human? Human birth is so rare because it is only in this birth that you can know that all is illusion. Within the human population, it is probably only 10 per billion who make the strong decision for freedom. Among them, it is very rare that one wins the game of illusion. The truth is within, but you always look somewhere else in order to appease your tendency to go out after sense objects. But all of this is illusion. Know this now. Find where the illusion rises from. Find where this thought arises from. Then you will have found the love which always dwells within you. Then you will see the illusion of everything, including your own body. What appears and disappears is not real. Once you know it is illusion you will separate yourself from it, and you are the one who has gone beyond the illusion, like a mirage of a river in the desert. The ones who try to be fulfilled by this mirage will never be satisfied. They will just get into more and more trouble. Some people will know that this river is a mirage, and they don't go there, they know Maya appears, but does not exist. When you know this you must ask where peace and happiness is. This search will bring you to satsang. Is there a connection with outside circumstances and inner emotional states or is it all illusion? Ajayas all illusion. Mind itself is illusion. Whatever you think is illusion and so to remove the illusion you should not think. I don't want you to practice this for years, but for just one instant, one blink of the eye, one breath, one half of a breath, and then your problems will be solved. Giggle is love also an illusion? Love is not an illusion. In love all illusion is lost. Where there is no illusion, then love arises. I would like a new name to remember this by. I will give you the name Madhu, which is honey, and I will tell you the story of why I am giving this name to you. Once a man was walking in a forest when he accidentally fell into a well. As he was falling, he caught hold of a creeper that was growing down into the well and he hung there. In the well below him there was also an alligator who was very hungry and above him were two rats, one black and one white, who were gnawing on the creeper. Above the well was a tree in which there was a beehive that was dripping honey exactly into his mouth, which he started to enjoy. In this enjoyment, he forgot the rats and the crocodile. This is the story of Maya, of life. The man is hanging in the well of death. The crocodile is death itself and the rats are day and night, the passing of time. The creeper is the individual's life which is being cut down by time. The honey is enjoyment which distracts us from death and time. This is the situation with this samsara, and we are all very happy. Laughs don't allow the rat to cut your life down and don't fall into the well in the first place. See where the next foot is falling. Be cautious in your life. It is better to go out climb up the tree and have the whole honeycomb and be free of the well and its crocodile. As you must decide now, otherwise the crocodile of death is waiting for you and the rats continue to chew the vine. Nobody thinks that he should immediately climb up the creeper even though it is a very short climb. 
then he will enjoy the honey of happiness and bliss. Though you take this image and keep it in front of you every day, this is the best teaching. Everybody must be aware of his own death. Nobody has ever avoided death because they wait and enjoy the honey drop by drop. Be free and you will enjoy the nectar of life for the first time. Otherwise the sensual pleasures are honey which keep all the people in the fear of the dark well that nobody ever comes out of. This is not just a story, it is a teaching. Is there a way of climbing up the creeper now? Yes, exactly. Now is the creeper and the way out. Give up ale the tastes that are dropping and see that the rat is eating away your life. So if you are wise jump out of the well. Everybody can do it. But wait like lazy men. Don't enjoy anything that will finish and which will land you in difficulty. So this thought you must decide what is good for you. What will give you happiness. Is hanging on the creeper happiness. Few people will jump out of the world which is this well. Death is the crocodile. Life is the creeper. The rats are night and day passing on. Waiting is unwise. Waiting is unwise. Wise people jump out as Buddha did. He was sleeping with the beauty of the land and he walked away at midnight. Very few people have done it. Though many kings at the same time were sleeping with their queens, but we do not remember them. But two thousand six hundred years have passed and yet we remember him. Like this everybody can become Buddha and wake up from the bed of his desires. For satsang you always say, let there be peace and love among all beings. Let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe is the declaration of the book of knowledge, the Vedas. They suggest that when you get up in the morning to utter this, let there be peace in the world, let there be peace in the heavens, let there be peace in hell. Let all beings be happy and peaceful. I have picked this up from the Vedas itself which dates back to 25,000 years ago. Yet by stating this there has been no peace or happiness and still we speak it every day. Even 25,000 years ago there was no peace. Peace and world do not sit together. Wherever there is a world there is confusion. But we wish well for the people because we don't want any harm for them which comes from speaking other things. So in the morning we meet and wish everybody peace, but it hasn't brought peace. People are as disturbed as they were quite one million years ago. They haven't found peace. Everyone is disturbed. Just stay as you are and see how your mind runs. I cannot stay quiet. So when we meet here we are suggesting and working toward not caring for the mind. Let it run, for running away is the monkey habit of the mind. We can't hold it, but we can find where this monkey is coming from. This is a very novel method, and it is working. Quite a few people have done it, and this is the experience. When you search for the thought that has been turning you around and around to different species for millions of years, you are here, and you will see what can be done so that you will not enter into the vicious circle again. There is no method as suggested by religions, but simply find out where the thought is arising from. This is the number one question. When you see the beginning of this question, before even its source, you will recognize it and merge into that whatever it is. I don't even call it emptiness. But when you recognize that you will merge into that as a river merges into the ocean, this will be the end of all running about and this we can do in an instant of time. Then you will know that it is this instant in which the universe began two billions years ago, this is the instant where it has stayed for two billions years, and where it will stay for many more to come. And this instant has never ever existed. It is the same instant. If you don't inquire it will keep going, but if you stop it, you will see that it never existed. Quite a few among us have tried this and found that nothing ever existed. When you dream, you had a husband and three children, but when you wake up they are gone. But you remember your children and the thought is there and this is called samsara. The remembrance of the past dream is samsara. Once a question was asked by a very good student to an excellent teacher. 
Master, you speak that everything is an illusion, but I see everything as real and solid. Can you be illusion? Can I be illusion? Can the world be illusion? Master, please help, I am confused. The master kept quiet and then said, Let us have a walk in the forest. After walking for a while the master said, It is very hot, you go down and get some water at that river there and I will stay here in the shade. So the student goes and slides the vessel into the water of the river. He looked up and saw a beautiful young girl across the river, immediately fell in love with her and proposed to marry her. This is not the custom here. All the marriages are arranged by our parents, she said. But I also like you and so you must speak to my father. Come and follow me and I will show you from a distance who my father is. He is the proprietor of the village. We have a lot of land, cows and horses. So I will point him out and then hide behind the doors and see what he says. So they went to the village and when they were near she said, that man sitting there, smoking a hookah and chewing pawn is my father. Go and speak to him. He went there and said, I saw your daughter one hour ago at the river and fell in love with her. Can you marry her to me? The father said, Who are you? I am a Brahmin from a nearby village, he replied. What is your education? Asked her father. I have learned philosophy, the Vedas, the Upanishads, and the Sastras. I know astronomy, geology, and oceanography, and all the eight sciences of the world. The father said, Very good. You look quite young and qualified. I don't hesitate to give the hand of my daughter to you, but with one condition. She is my only child, and I am very attached to her. So if you want to marry her, you must stay here with me, and you can't take her to your village. Agreed, said the boy. We will announce it to all our neighbors and you will be married in one month, said the father. After a month they were married and after three years they had one child. Then after five years the parents registered their will in the name of their son-in-law. Now all the village belonged to him. A couple of years later both her parents died and after ten years they had another child and then another. After eighteen years there came a flood, and the river was rising. All the farms were destroyed, and they went to a nearby hill to stay, but slowly the water was rising there as well. Cows were floating away and everything was destroyed. Finally, the water came up to his shoulders, and he put one child on his shoulders, and a child in one hand and his wife and another child in the other. But the current was very strong and his son slipped, and as he reached for him the wife slipped, and as he went to hold the wife the other son slipped away. So, now with everything lost, the river was receding. He just sits there at the edge of the river and cries about the loss of his children. Finally, the river recedes until it is at the original level. He feels a hand on his shoulder and his teacher asks, What are you thinking about? Your vessel is in the water. Why don't you draw it? This should have taken you one minute, but already it has been five minutes. He looks at his face and stammers, Five, five, five minutes you say? Did you say five minutes? What about my wife and what about the children? The master replies, This is the answer to your question. All this is illusion. Just now you came and you fell in love with a girl, but where is that girl now? You are just fetching water for me. All these things are just coming from the mind. They never existed. No wife was there, no children were there, no marriage was performed and no village was there. The mind creates an instant and in that instant you lived nearly twenty years and in the same instant your vessel was emerged into the water. So this is how it stands and you have to be wise. As Buddha said, form is emptiness and emptiness is form. This is what I say. There is no difference between emptiness and form. Form is there, there must be emptiness in which to see the form. There must be space in which all forms are seen. 
These forms are seen in nothingness and so no form must be there when there is form. All of samsara, mountains, men, animals and birds, whenever you see these forms, there must be formlessness. Otherwise you cannot see. To see form you must be in emptiness, and what is form or no form? The same. I don't know how you can understand this because for understanding you need the mind. Though this must come by itself and no understanding is needed. If it comes it is your good luck, and if it doesn't then, it is your bad luck because you will always continue in your imaginations. How to get rid of the imagination that you see a snake in the dream or a tiger in the dream which is pouncing on you. You run away and climb the tree, but the tiger tries to climb the tree and so you are in trouble and finally the tiger reaches you and pulls you down, at which point you wake up. When you wake up where is the tiger and where are you? Somehow you must understand. There is no tiger and no fear and you wake up as you are. Like this you have not changed. Nothing has happened to you. There has been no samsara at all. There has been no samsara at all. This is the ultimate teaching. Some people here though feel that emptiness is greater than form. This seems to me that they are subtly deluded. In the longing for emptiness they reject form. Form or no form there is no difference. As Buddha speaks, samsara and nirvana is the same thing. Though many that went to him were enlightened like Kashyap and Ananda, and so many others were also enlightened by the lineage as this teaching continued. Now if you reject form, where will this form go? And what will you do? To reject something, you must accept something else. Both acceptance and rejection must be rejected. Reject both these thoughts, neither accept or reject. At that level, who are you? There isn't me. Though don't accept anything or reject anything because when you accept something, you must reject something. And to reject something, you must accept something. Both are opposites. Though don't reject or accept. Let everything be there, you have nothing to do with them. If you reject something it must stay somewhere and you will always carry this rejection and you will say I have rejected such and such thing. This will be more prominent than what you accepted. How can I be established and I am not the body? You are simply not the body and there is nothing to be established in. Be quiet and think at what time you got this body. And you will look at the calendar and say that it was 1960 or 1970. These births and deaths are on the calendar and if there is no calendar, then when were you born? See when you were born you must look at the birth of Christ, and from his birth you count yours. You deal with someone else and then calculations start. These calculations are the habit of mind. If you don't look at the birth and death of someone you will see who you are. I have no peace in the waking state or the dream state or the sleep state. I have nowhere else to go. Can you help me? This is a very good experience. If you don't have any peace in these three states you must go to the fourth state beyond these three. This is your heart. Come here and stay here. This can be done in any state. The activities of the body do not hinder the heart at all. Some people here are enjoying the state now. I know I am this heart. Though how can water be thirsty? How can I want to be free? You have good merit to give you this experience. It reminds me of Kabir who makes a good joke, how can the fish cry I am thirsty while living in the water? When opening the mouth to say this the water is in her mouth. We are all living in the nectar of the self and yet we all cry, we are suffering. Everybody is in divine grace. Grace is around everybody, inside and outside and everywhere. Yet we are not satisfied. So Kabir only laughs. He looks at the fish and laughs. You are not that crying fish, you have done it. You need nothing else. How can the body be a thought? And whose thought? Only when you think is there a body. Before exhalation or inhalation there is no thought. Every six breaths there is a pause and if you are aware of it, you are enlightened. 
This I thought rises from there, in between inhaling and exhaling and rises because you have some desire for a person or object. Also, when you sleep you do not think and you do not see the body because Maya Shakti drops away in the sleep state, but still you do not realize who you are because Avarana Shakti remains. So the body is just a dream object, a thought. Inquiry is to find whose thought this is. You can stay in the dream with your dream body without generating thoughts and still do everything that life demands. Keep a thought inside that I am always here, and then the body will simply act according to its reactions, and you will not be responsible for this, because responsibilities and liabilities do not enter there. It is only when you are in relationship with other on account of your identifying as a body and ego, that you are responsible. So wake up. After liberation, you will see that there is a point in which nothing exists and in which there is no non-existence either. No, the body is a transient thought and simply keep conscious of this point. This is called complete liberation. I know that I am not totally in sleep, but I know I am not awake either. It is good not to sleep. Poor persons do not sleep. One is a lover because he is not with his beloved, another is a thief because he is out robbing houses, and a third is the sick man who is awake due to disease and pain. All these are awake to their desires, lust, greed, and suffering. But also the yogi does not sleep for he is concentrating on when he will be free of this illusion. All the rest of the people are sleeping even in the waking state. When you are going in the desert, and you see a very beautiful river, and this is called a mirage. Since you are thirsty you want to go to swim in it and to drink the water from it, but the further you go toward it the farther away it shifts. Now however, you have known that it is only an illusion, a creation of the mind. The whole world is running toward this river to fulfill its desires. They are running fast, for the last two billion years, to have a swim in it. A few here and there have decided that they cannot reach it, they cannot fulfill their desires, they cannot remove their thirst. So it is better to stay here wherever you are. When you decide this it will rain from the skies and this will be the rain of grace. You will not need to run anywhere because everything will be fulfilled here. Going there you are sucked in by the heat and nobody is going to help you. But if you stay here even the clouds will fall on you. Though you have to be here, and have no desire in your mind to even speak and everything will be provided for you. Nothing is real. Whatever you see is not real. One day will come when you do not see object, and what was object will not see object either, because both are illusions. This is special knowledge. There can be no knowledge without knowing that all is illusion. When you go back to the West you can teach your children and friends what you have learned in satsang. They will be very happy and you will be a very good mother giving them right knowledge in childhood. They will be thankful to their mother. Why does the mirage keep arising? Where does it arise from? Nowhere. What can arise from nowhere? What is it if it arises from nowhere? What arises must arise out of somewhere, otherwise it could not have arisen. What is the mother of this eye, of this illusion? Ego is the mother, and desire is the father. Don't have these parents run away from them. Love is the best mother and emptiness is the best father. Is it important to remember all the layers of the onion, or should you go beyond all the layers? There is no difference between the first, middle and last layer of the onion. They all smell the same, so it is better to avoid everything. Don't even put the onion in your pocket, because you will still smell. The whole onion smells and the center will be garlic. So don't touch it. Reaching the core of the issue is to not even utter the name of this onion. No name. No form. Drop this mind, and you are in the cave where the smell of the mind does not reach you. This cave has no layers. There is nothing outside and nothing inside. This is available to you if you do not think of the past onions. Don't think and you are in the cave. 
To realize the self you say the mind must get dropped, but how can the mind be separate from the self? Isn't mind a creative experience of life? You have to see something to drop it, just as you take off your locket before you swim in the ocean and drop it in your purse. How can you drop something that doesn't exist? It is only your concept. You need not drop the mind because it doesn't exist. Let it be there, it must be useful to you. Is the human form precious because it is the only way to realize the self? There is no form at all. It is a concept that there is a universe with men, animals, and birds. In this concept, you evolve for 35 million years to become a human. But most humans are not humans, they are just animals who have somehow disconnected with their tails and walk on two legs like a gorilla. So the human incarnation is precious because you can have doubt and you can question who am I, a pig or donkey cannot ask this but are taken to the butchery of death. Everybody who is born must face a butcher, the god Yama, who will not leave any man unless they realize what he is. Though it is the human birth which gives you the opportunity of who am I, but it is very rare. A six billion humans may be only sixty know who they really are. Here in Satsang we represent so many countries, but why such a few people have come? Not even one percent in a country knows who they are. If we want an example of an enlightened person we must go back two thousand six hundred years to Gautam who became Buddha. But this luck now Satsang has made enlightenment easy. You don't have to meditate in Himalayan caves, you don't have to repeat mantras, you don't have to go on any pilgrimages, and you don't have to support any charities. Just spend a second out of your life span and I guarantee that you are free. Do it this second why postpone? In ancient times the kings would leave their kingdoms and go for penance. After penance some manica would come in front of them in the form of a beautiful woman and there would end their penance. But here in Satsang many manikas are here and they too are getting free. It is no problem to love with a manika because enlightenment has to do with your own self, not physical contact with your own manika. If manika comes live with her but you remain untouched. Mind, the movement of the illusion. Mind is Shakti power Manasar of our Divi. Use this power to find the origin of Shakti which is Shiva, awareness being bliss. Simply be quiet, make no effort, start no thought and look within. Mind is a tremendous power which causes all of manifestation to arise out of just a single thought, the I thought. When you don't look at this thought it is all real, but when you look at it manifestation vanishes. Mind is the drug which takes you out of your natural state and makes you trip in the realm of duality. Mind is the appearance of limited consciousness. Once consciousness is conditioned it becomes the mind and name and form is that imaginary conditioning. Only in the conditioning of mind do we not know each other. You will know that we have always known each other when mind is empty and pure without ripples. The origin of the universe is centered on the I thought. If you forget the substratum of the I, and you get lost and then I hangs around your neck like a noose. Go to the origin of the I thought and do not get lost in the magician's tricks. If you identify with the wave that moves in the emptiness, you will get lost, so let notions appear and disappear and stay as emptiness. Birth, death and suffering are notions. They are not the ocean. You wear your mind like you wear your dress. Mind is that which is desire, is past, is graveyard, is name and form, is transience, is describable. I is a wave, is mind, is samsara, is desire, is arrogance, is wickedness, is confusion, is snake, is not rope, and is all of manifestation. Identifying yourself with the I is identifying yourself with past and future. Cling to it and you will suffer and be there stuck in it. Abandon it. Liberation. The creation of hells is the mind turned outward saying I am the body. The creation of heavens is the mind turned inward knowing the kingdom of heaven is within. 
Mind turned inward will see its source, and then never return because you stay with what you love most. As conditioned consciousness, mind is like the banks of a river. The notion of I am river dies when you realize the ocean of consciousness. All that you see is the five elements, water washes away earth, fire evaporates water, air blows out fire, and air disappears into ether. All of this is mind and mind is the I. Inside thought is called I, and outside thought is called space but there is no difference, it is all mind, all self. I have some questions regarding mind. What is it? A bundle of thoughts. What is the substance of the mind? Show me the mind and I will tell you the substance. If you can't show me then you don't have one. If you can't find it leave it alone. How will it disappear forever? First of all it is not there. If it is not appearing how will it disappear? Mind is only your desire. When desire is there then your mind is there. When you don't have desire there is no mind at all. There is no difference between mind and desire. To test this don't have any desire in the moment. Every desire belongs to the past, so don't desire for one instant of time and tell me who you are. Nothing. Nothingness is a very good mother. Stay with her and you will find her love and beauty. Don't you need a mind to function in the world? When you were not in the world all this business was there, and it will continue after you go. You have no effect on its continuity and your body and mind are part of this continuity. It will run it has been running and endlessly it will be running. You can't stop it or change it because it is all imagination. It is like a river of the mirage which moves farther away from you the more you move toward it. You don't get any water and on the contrary you get more fatigued. But a wise man doesn't run after a mirage and this samsara is a mirage. Who is satisfied with the samsara? Everybody is thirsty and thinks that samsara will quench their thirst, but the thirst stays because the samsara is a mirage. The rare one will know this and sit quietly under the tree and enjoy it. If I am the non-doer, who is the doer? Your mind. You thought I want to do it, I want to have it, I am the world is illusion attached to this. This is your trouble. You are not the doer. The doer is the intention in your mind of need. Don't give rise to any intention, including enlightenment and peace, for only one second and see what happens. You will be beautiful. I offer this to everyone constantly, but nobody accepts it and they only jump to their next question. You should say stop. But you depend on the past because all these questions are from the past. You have had them in your mind. So when you are happy give up everything like the enlightened kings did. One king was sleeping on the roof of his palace in the summer time. He was sandwiched between his two queens. What luck! Then he looked up at the full moon as two birds flew by it and twittered. He rose up naked and left the palace because he had to stay with the beauty of the instant, the beauty that the queens and the palace, the kingdom, and the diamonds could not provide. He disappeared into the forest. So once you have it reject everything else because all you need is this love, this beauty. When this happiness comes, don't reject it. This we learn from the prince who became Buddha. He went and sat under the Bodhi tree and found it due to his intense desire. He rejected all that was and now 2006, hundred years later we still remember him because he was beautiful. We don't even remember our fathers and grandfathers but we remember him. Dreams, the nature of the illusion. Apaiji I bad the experience that everything is within me, that there is no outside. This is a very good experience. Suppose you are living on the twentieth story of an apartment building and you are sleeping. Then you dream of a wild elephant coming at you. You also see mountains and rivers and forests. Where are all these things? Are they outside? No, they are inside projections of your mind. First the space has to be projected, inside and outside, 
and then time is projected. The ego is projected next and you start believing that what you see is real. But as soon as you wake up the elephant and everything else disappears. In the very same way this waking reality will also disappear when you wake up. This reality will disappear. Your dreams are as real as anything else, though this waking state looks more real. Therefore, your experience is a very beautiful one. I also had a dream where Vishnu and Shiva came to me five times. It was all about dissolving karma and I awoke feeling very different. The first time Shiva came to remove your concept of physicality, the waking state, because nothing is physical. The second visit was to remove your imagination, the dream state where nothing is reality. The third visit was to remove the transient bliss and emptiness, the sleep state. The fourth visit removed the fourth state, the Turiya state, the Sahasrara and Agna chakras. Fifth visit was the last because then there is nothing to be seen. Can we be awake and dreaming at the same time? When you are dreaming it is not possible to be awake. Some people are asleep in the dream and some are awake. Some people tell others now it is daytime look at the sun. In the dream some are awake and some are sleeping. Yet those who are awake in the dream also are sleeping. The wakefulness depends on your wakefulness because when you are awake everybody is awake. So wake up yourself and everybody will wake up. Who has created mothers and daughters in the dream? They are there because you are dreaming. In the sleep there is a dream, but you must wake up from this waking and dreaming process. No I am awake. Even if you say I am waking and I am dreaming, still you are really sleeping. You are not yet awake. Wake up to your own true self where there is no waking, no dreaming or sleeping, beyond all that. This state is called the fourth state, the Turiya state. In the west they think there are only two states, waking and dreaming. There is no sleep as they have seen on the EEG. A team of psychologists came to Rishikesh from America and tested many swamis from Sivananda Ashram to Mahesh Yogi Ashram. They came to make graphs of the thoughts and no swami was silent in Rishikesh. One swami offered himself and was found that he was not quiet even for a millionth of a second. After this 90% of the students left him, except for those who were paid to stay. This is the result. Freedom has no face. Don't look to any face, not even your face. Look at the facelessness as you do when you sleep. Though so always sleep when others are awake, and stay awake when others sleep. This is facelessness. Why do my night dreams constantly change, but not this world dream of the waking state? They both change, the difference is that while in the dream you don't say that it is changing. Only when you wake up can you see that it changes from one dream to another. The waking state dream also changes. Today is different than tomorrow or yesterday. This state is real only because you call it real and have this conviction of its reality. But during a dream you don't call a dream a dream. Only when you wake up can you say that it was a dream. In the night dream you see rivers, mountains, people and relations. In this dream you see the same thing so how can you call one real and the other unreal? You have the conviction of reality and so you call it real. But if you call it a dream and have this conviction it will be a dream. You don't look at the dreamer who also is your own creation. The dreamer is different than the dream so now find out who is the dreamer. The dreamer and the dream and the dream objects are all the same. Now find out who dreamed who is dreaming. Find the me who has dreamed. Find this now and waking, dreaming and sleeping will disappear. What you call reality is not reality. What can we learn from our dreams? Learn that this is the nature of the illusion. Learn that all name and form is a transient imaginary dream that you must wake up from. Apaiji, I bad such a powerful dream last night. Can you speak about dreams? Thank you very much. There were ten killers in my dreams. Dreams can tell you that something is going to happen as the clouds tell you that there will be rain. Dreams also tell you what has happened, 
because they are the activities which are unfulfilled in the waking state. For instance, if you are slapped in the waking state, you will seek revenge in the dream state. Actually, truly speaking, everybody is dreaming because they have not spent their waking state in a peaceful way. If they had, they would not appear again in the dream called samsara. Everybody in samsara has dreamt a lot and has collected millions of lifetimes worth of memories in their mind. Now they can't stop it. You can stop it though, if you have a burning urge for freedom and if you have very good luck. Then you will see a master who will tell you the difference between a dream and the waking state. Then you will see that all are sleeping and you are awake. Sleeping is being unaware of your true self. Wakefulness is being awake to reality, consciousness, truth. What others are awake to you sleep to. They are awake to lust, interests, persons, concepts. Have nothing to do with these things. Sleep to them. This is the difference between wakefulness, sleeping and dreaming. The killers in your dream are the senses, eyes deceive you, whatever you hear is of no use, what you smell is no good, and so with touch and taste. But if you know this the senses lose their strength. If you know the objects of your eyes are not real then, they won't affect you. Whether you hear praise or blame it won't matter. There won't be any difference between perfume and rotten things. When you know who you are you become very strong and these killers, these enemies, will lose their strength. Now complete your work. The sooner the better. Just stay quiet, whatever happens is perfect. It is the unending game of the one who was here before the beginning. It is the dream of the creator. It is the magic of the enjoyer in whose dream we are objects. When your love brings you very close to him, he will give you the same techniques, and you also will enjoy. Then you will not question what is happening. The waves of the ocean ask the questions as they rise, travel and fall. But the ocean, the substratum of the waves is resting and enjoying his own activity. Yet he knows he is not active. All those who have understood this will remain quiet as if nothing has ever happened. Karma, the script of the illusion. The doer must pay for his actions. This is karma. No doer is no karma and this is freedom. Memory is the storehouse of this karma. Each impression in your mind is an incarnation. Millions of thoughts are equal to one eye. Reincarnation is governed by karma, happens to you when you do not know that you are consciousness, because anything else is imagination, and this imagination has no beginning or end. Reincarnation is in the mind only. How can that which is never born be reborn? What is the relation between the absolute and the perfection of destiny? The absolute has nothing to do with destiny. Destiny is the reactions of your karma, and is not fixed by the absolute. Whatever you do creates fruit for tomorrow and tomorrow it is called destiny. Today's actions are tomorrow's destiny. Today you earn dollar one, hundred and put it in your pocket and go to sleep. The next day you see dollar one, hundred in your pocket from yesterday. This dollar one, hundred is called the destiny of yesterday's work. Like this all the karma or actions that you committed last life are brought into this life by you in your own pocket. You cannot change them. Are active decisions just an illusion? Is it all controlled by destiny? All the saints, sages and wise ones in India say that everything is predestined. You can't make any decision by yourself. Ramana Maharshi also believes this. Once a German professor asked the same question to Ramana, who said that even the question about predestiny is predestined. Though everything is predestined. Yes, sun will rise, sun will set. As orange trees will grow oranges, and apple trees will grow apples, so all beings move through the dream exactly as destined. You can't change it. Everything is predestined, there is no doubt. Even an ant cannot walk without its step being predestined. This secret will come to you when you have light. But when you force things to happen your way then you suffer. 
Things happen as they happen so do not imagine that they have to happen a certain way. Everybody wants their own will to be done, but when you surrender to the divine you have no cause to worry. Depend on the will of the mother. Where she goes you go. When she suckles you suck the milk. Instead of doing this most people get involved in circumstances. Is it true that destiny can be altered by the Guru's grace and by chanting mantras? The Guru's grace can do anything. It can alter destiny also. This grace is also predestined. What use is sadhana then to obtain freedom? This sadhana also is predestined. If it is all predestined why does the Guru get angry sometimes when we make mistakes? You make so many mistakes, but I never get angry with you. In everybody there is anger, but you must express it only on yourself or your misbehavior. There is no other way that anger is to be used. Do you understand? Okay. Everything is predestined. Your coming here is predestined. Those who do not come here are predestined not to. Is liberation due to prarabdha karma? No, liberation has nothing to do with your karma. Karma occurs when you are sleeping and have desires for other objects. When there is liberation, there is no prarabdha. Prarabdha is for those who are sleeping, not for those who are awake. When you dream so many things come in front of you, but when you sleep all these things vanish. In sleep there is no person and no object and no desire. All desire comes when you are dreaming or when you are awake, therefore, there is no difference between waking and dreaming. In sleep though nothing exists, only bliss, love, beauty. Where do you get this love from? From the absence of desire. Then you are happy. You can learn how not to have any desire so that you will be happy in all the states, waking, dream and sleep. By sleeping when others are awake, you can be without desire, when they sleep you keep awake. This waking state is a sleep state because people are not happy because they do not know who they are. The question to yourself who am I and all that you desire will vanish. Keep this question in your mind all the time whether you are sitting, standing or walking. Inquire into the source of where these desires come from. This is not different than sleeping to the desires. If whatever happens is destined, is our reaction to this free will or destined? What is your reaction to a slap in the face? Things just happen, there is no question of destiny or of free will, things just happen and you are just one of those things. All is a dream and is known to be a dream only when you are awake. All forms all two ness is falsehood. How to understand this? Wake up from this dream and you will know free will and destiny. Free will is used by a very few people. In satsang you will know that all is illusion. Then you are a witness and are beyond dream and suffering. You will get a third eye, a single eye, to see the illusion from a perfect man who will open it. Two eyes lead you to untruth and form. To see formlessness the third eye must open. Sit quiet for a moment and you will know what truth is. Look at what stirs in your mind and find where this concept rises from. Look at that point. Then you will see something which is unbelievable and which will fulfill all your desires. So even the freedom of choice to choose right and wrong in the moment is predestined. You have no freedom of choice because you are freedom itself. You have no choice to be free or not to be free because you are always freedom. Choice is illusion because only freedom is. Who that would choose and the choices to be chosen are all concepts in mind. The one in the heart of all beings, even the beings yet to be conceived and born, directs all karma to be done. Find who created the universe in his thought only. All beings are a concept in his mind. Nothing has ever been done and there is nothing to do. Find who you are a concept of. You dream of climbing a mountain and resting, but when you wake up there is no mountain, no climbing and no rest. But you have performed this activity. 
is all a dream and all your responsibilities, liabilities, and activities are just illusion in the dream, like a mirage in a dream desert, like an imaginary diver taking an imaginary dive into imagination. Stop chasing the mirage and wake up. Even the thirst which drives you to the mirage is a mirage, is imagination. Wake up and know that peace is within. Then your illusion will vanish, disappear. I see honest people suffering so much while so many dishonest people flourish. Why is this? Why are the honest punished and the dishonest rewarded? This is an obstacle to total surrender for me. It is true. Innocent people often suffer, and the dishonest people hurt the public and flourish. This is due to the desire of some to fill up their cup of sins faster, in order to enjoy the fruits of their merits. Look at Ravana, he would spoil the yagnas of the righteous all over India and steal all the beautiful women and make them join his harem. The result of this is that he could build his houses and much of Lanka out of gold. He had no care for anyone and troubled everyone, he even kidnapped the wife of Rama. Rama was in exile, and he was already suffering. Rama is God and he was suffering. By uttering his name he won't be reborn, but he himself was in a lot of trouble and Ravenna gave him more misery. Rama was in exile due to the trickery of one of his father's wives. His father was the king and at Rama's coronation, as the next king the youngest queen asked for previously promised boon to be granted by Rama's father. The boon was to have Rama sent into exile so her son could be king. The king was bound to agree and soon after he sent Rama to the forest he died from being separated from him. This king's name was Dasaratha and the whole country suffered because of this. But in the end look what happened. Ravana was killed and today we still repeat Rama's name, though he lived 7,600 years ago, in this state, not far from here. Though many saints had a lot of trouble during their life. But sometimes extreme suffering is inflicted on the innocent bystanders. What appears to be innocent bystanders? What do you mean? Is such suffering random or is it prerabd, a karma? How would an enlightened being view such expression of karmic law? This question deals with total consciousness. If I speak that it is prerabdha karma, it is what is normally believed. I will explain in two ways. First, whatever you do becomes prerabdhya. Whatever happens now is due to the past. Some portion of the past has been attended to, but some portion is left. What happens now is the balance of your previous activity. But actually, there is no prerabdha karma. Actually, you have done something previously, but nobody knows. If you believe in the stories of the Upanishads, there is one story that is pertinent. There once was a saint living quietly in the forest near a Muslim village. One day a cow came running into his hut, and a few minutes later a man came by and asked if the saint had seen the cow that he was going to butcher. The saint said yes, and pushed the cow out of his little hut and gave it to the butcher. This is a happening, and it just happened. The next life the saint again became a saint because he did nothing else. He decided to go to the village of Pandapur in Maharashtra where there is a very good statue of Lord Vithal. On his way, about ten cam before the temple a very strong storm came, and he couldn't see which way to go. A man living nearby invited him in, and told him he could spend the night there and the next day he could continue on to the temple. The saint agreed to this compassionate and generous offer. This man, though quite old, had a very beautiful young wife who quickly fell in love with this pure boy and expressed to him that she wanted to run away with him. No, I am a sadhu, I never touch any woman. But I have fallen in love with you, let's run away, I have collected all my gold ornaments and it will be enough for us, she said. No, I cannot stay with you, said the young man, I am going to Lord Vithal. You are already married, and if you go away your husband will be in great pain. So she went to the house, and killed her husband and threw him into the well. Then she said, Now I have no husband. 
Now come with me. The saint was astonished and absolutely refused, and so the woman went out onto the road and started crying that this man had killed her husband and was going to steal all the gold. People and police came and took him to the magistrate. The woman told her story about this stranger to the village magistrate. The judge was baffled. Since a crime had been committed the magistrate decided that there must be punishment, but since there was no witness he decided it could not be death and so he had the hands of the innocent young saint cut off. The saint then continued to Lord Vithal who then appeared before the boy and said, Ask any boon. Cooch Mengolo Mare say the saint said, I am very happy with you. I have always worshipped you. My tongue has never uttered any other name and my hands have never committed any crime, they have only clapped the rhythms of songs in your praise. Lord, if you are gracious, tell me why these hands which only worship you have been cut. The Lord said, Look at the divide arshan before you and see what happened in the previous life. The saint saw the previous story of the cow, the butcher and the saint, and he saw that the cow is the wife, the butcher is the husband, and he is the saint. The cow had to take revenge from the husband who had killed her. That action and reaction now is over. His own hands had to be cut because he had pushed the cow out of his hut which had come to him seeking protection. Though it is with prerabdha. Nobody knows the root of what happens in the present life. We only see what is happening now. All karma must be undergone. You hey, lift a step by yourself, so surrender to the one who knows what must be done. Though can we learn from our past lives? You can learn that human birth is very rare and very precious, and it is not to be wasted. Throughout millions of years you have gone through the 8.4 million species and now you are human, the species where enlightenment is most possible. Is past life therapy or repression helpful? With this therapy one is taken to the past to some event, which is the apparent cause of present psychological disturbances. I don't reject this, but here what is told is to not go to the past. Mind is past and you should not go to the past with it, but bring it to the present where its effects are weak. This present presence is satsang. I don't understand reincarnation, what gets reincarnated. No answer will satisfy you unless you see for yourself the roots of the tree whose branches are this present reincarnation of yours. What is reincarnated is any thought or desire unfulfilled. This you can't avoid. If you don't have a thought you are free. Otherwise, you will have to reincarnate to fulfill your desires again and again. Your desire will take form into that person who will help you to fulfill the desire. Do you have a vision of the spirituality of humanity in this point of history? I do not have a vision or a view but trust. I trust that this spiritual evolution of humanity is not a history but a mystery. Unless you see that it is a mystery you're not a teacher and you cannot teach. As a history it is not a mystery but you cannot understand. The mystery is very mysterious and secret. It is very secret and sacred. Will Westerners have a specific role? Definitely the Westerners have a specific role and they are playing it the best they can. What has been taught for thousands of years in India is no longer wanted by her people. Indians want things of the West and therefore they are going to the West to fulfill their desires, their Western desires. Spiritual desires will be fulfilled by spiritual people who want truth to be realized. So therefore the desire for freedom herself has gone to the West. This very beautiful girl from India has come to those who have gone in this lifetime to the West to fulfill their desires. This is why the Westerners are here. They know what is beauty. All the physical beauties they have seen and have been kicked in the back by all of them. So now they're here for something else which will not kick them in the back, but hug them. Papaji, how to be in this illusion? How can we live in the illusion skillfully and be free of its traps of suffering? Don't forget who you are. We are alive in the world because we have not yet completed our work. Know thyself. Chapter, Thieves in an Empty House 
Always remember, the thieves of peace are thieves in an empty house, because only imagination suffers. You are that which remains untouched. He always is, find and reject the imaginary rejecter of this peace. The I thought is this thief of freedom and inquiry is the best way to destroy it and its tendencies. You don't have to look at the tendencies, the only way to get rid of them is freedom and inquiry is the best way to freedom, so always stay toward the self. This is the abandonment of painful conditioning. Abandon the sanas and mind in your peace. Abandon the notion I am bound and always face self. Desire. Before the wave rises it is ocean, before desire moves it is emptiness. The entire universe is your own desire so enjoy it, but don't be destroyed by it, because anything you desire you are a slave to. The thief of peace is the desire for the transient so aspire only for the permanent. Here this eternal moment, there are no desires. Just keep quiet and then see what you really need. Without an object there is no desire, without desire there is no mind, without mind there is only self. Desire is the veil over the face of truth. Remove it by finding the source of I. You are the totality of being, desire simply does not become you. Any desire makes the emperor a beggar because desire is only begging. I am not self as the beggar. You miss your kingdom due to your petty desires which take you to destruction. So just inquire to whom do the desires arise. Then discharge yourself into the emptiness which has no demarcation. No object of desire is real, no object of desire is worth your peace. If your house is desires, burn it down. It is only the absence of desire that makes you happy, so allow no desire to rise. Just allow yourself to be dissolved by love. When there is no desire, there is love and beauty. If you do desire, then only desire peace because what you think, you will become. Water poured into ocean becomes ocean. Other engagements conceal self. I want this and that conceals self and his other engagements. As a pot of honey with a single drop of cyanide is not honey, so awareness with a single desire is not awareness. Any desire is an alligator, any attachment is a crocodile. Being free from desire you are God, you are ultimate. To stop your race and see. Heart is always open, only desires close it. Desire is samsara, the prisons you feel are prisons of desires. Be always empty and let desires dance as they will. This is true sanyas which is not a matter of cloth or circumstance. Thanyas is not clinging to desire for the transient because desire takes mind out of emptiness. Desirelessness is freedom, so look at where the desires rise from. Without desires you are peaceful and this perfectly still mind is freedom. The desire for freedom will destroy all desires. When this desire arises don't wait. Do it now, sit down quietly and follow this desire. Do not desire to have freedom in the future, and do not make effort to have it now. Between these two what do you see? Questioner, will you help me to love this emptiness that I am and to know true happiness? Answer from Papaji. Happiness does not come from meeting your desired object and it doesn't come from fulfilling your desires. When there is no desire at all for anything then happiness is. When you are empty of desire, this emptiness is happiness. So give up the thought of any desire. When happiness comes you are alone. These two go very well together, aloneness and happiness. You need a very good guide or you will get lost in the forest of the world. You need a guide and this guide is grace. I am a man of many desires and they won't stop bothering me. Let them be fulfilled, who stops them? The desires in your head will break your head where they themselves are located. Wait for some time. There is no hurry. First try what you are liking and loving and fulfill your mind. When it gets lost and sunken then it will know how to reject everything and sit quiet. When you have the desire to inquire, 
no other desire can trouble you. Desires seem so endless. Do all desires need to be destroyed or can desires be bypassed by self-inquiry and stillness? Desires are endless and even survive death of the body. Always the mind is busy with desires. These desires must be fulfilled or you will be born again to fulfill Kem. By the grace of the teacher and by self-inquiry desires can be bypassed and fulfilled. Taking desires one by one will take millions of years and still it will not work. But by the grace of the Guru the desires will be fulfilled in dreams and mind will be satisfied. In self-inquiry, you go under the source of the desires. Here there are no desires because there is no mind at all. When mind is in contact with objects of senses the arising of desires is accelerated. Going into the source, you will find that this world never existed, let alone the desires. That is the place of total emancipation. I had a desire in my last life to be with a particular woman, but I couldn't be with her because I was a big swami, so big that all the banks and shops closed on my Mahasamadhi day. What happened? I had to be born again and this woman had to be my wife. So it is better to fulfill your desires, especially your desire to be free. I also have the desire to be realized. Let this desire bother you. If you really have this desire, it is the end of all desires. This desire will release all other desires. Keep this desire up to the time of your death and you will be realized. All desires must manifest, whatever you desire must be fulfilled. Is it true that all my desires must be burnt and laid at your feet, not just the bad ones? Do you know what the fire is which will burn everything? Devotion is the fire, devotion to the teacher. Devotion is to prostrate to the feet of the master and worship them. Then you don't need to do anything, this alone is enough. In ancient times many won enlightenment only by worshipping the feet of the master. I can tell you many stories, like the story of Bharat in the Ramayana. His mother wanted the kingdom for him, but he had an older brother whom the king naturally had to give the kingdom to. But the king had told Bharat's mother that he would give anything to her, since she was very pretty and had helped very much in a previous war by holding up his broken chariot so that he could fight and win the war. So, when the king was about to give the kingdom to the eldest son, Barret's mother reminded him of the boon that she was promised. Though she made the king send the eldest son into exile for fourteen years and make her own son the king. The younger son was in Kashmir at the time and was told what had happened when he returned to the kingdom. He refused the throne declaring that it was the place for his oldest brother. He then searched for his brother until he found him in Chitrakut and asked him to return to the kingdom. Rama replied, No, I must fulfill the promise that our father has made. I must stay in exile for fourteen years before I can return. You must return to the kingdom and rule while I am away. Bharat said, Then you give me your pajika, your wooden sandals, so that I can put them on the throne and worship them. The devotion of this boy Bharat cannot be measured by anyone. He only worshipped the sandals and got enlightened. This is the reward of one who only does Padam Puja. Meditation alone will not be good enough because even the cranes meditate as they wait for fish to come close enough to catch. The crane stands on one leg, which is austerity in order to fool a fish. But the fish is just a desired object which you jump on when they come close. You do penance, austerities and meditation only for a desired object. Stop all this. Don't be a crane. Only worship the feet of the Lord, it is enough. Devotion alone is enough. How happy you have become when you wash the feet of the Sakuru. The Sakuru doesn't want his feet washed, but he allows it for your sake, so that you become humble. Look at the feet of the teacher. This alone is enough. I challenge you to do this. It is an unfailing method. All other methods can fail. 
Meditations are only for something that you need, but worshipping the feet of the Sakuru is to get rid of everything. Look at the feet of the teacher. There is no more desire, just the bliss that I am. It is the desire that troubles everyone. A desireless person cannot be seen so easily. If you have no desire, you have crossed over to the other shore of life and death. Now you can enjoy everything. The purpose of coming to luck now is to remove your desires and doubts and ego. When these are lost there is nothing more to do. You told me to face the thieves. I did and now there is nothing. Thank you. When things come you must face it. If you don't face it then trouble comes. Everything disappears because it is the ego facing ego. When you face ego you must be tricky because ego is tricky. They'll face things and the ego at the same time. Once there was a tiger who was the king of the forest. He used to kill many animals, but he would only eat a little from each one. Though all the animals of the forest held a conference to stop the killing. They decided that only one animal would be sent to him every day so that others would be saved. So they sent a messenger to him and he agreed but said that it must come at 7 a.m. because he wakes up very hungry. That night they tried to decide who would go the next morning, but nobody wanted to go even though each of their lives were in danger every day. Then Mr. Fox said that he would offer himself first. They gave him a party that night, and in the morning garlanded him as he walked away with his tail up. He arrived to the king of the forest at 9 a.m., and the tiger was very angry because he was so late. No sir, I started at 6 a.m. and I would have been here at 6.45 a.m., but on the way I met another tiger who also was very hungry and said he would eat me. Though I told him he had to wait because I had a promise with another tiger who was king of this forest. I told him so, Mr. Tiger, I will go to that other tiger and some other animal will be sent to you. This is why I am late. The tiger said, there's no other king of the forest, I'm the king here. No sit, I will show you. Come with me. So, he took the tiger to the top of a well and said, Look sir, the other tiger is right in here. The tiger looked and roared with anger and the other tiger roared back. He told you sir, he is a very big tiger, he has given me much trouble. Though so out of anger the tiger jumped into the well, and the fox said yes, here it is. You see. Now come up and eat me. Everybody was so happy that he saved so many of his brothers and sisters. This is the ego, carefully deal with it. Let him jump into the river so you can enjoy. You say leaving desire is the way to freedom. For desires you need some object or subject and they all refer to the past. You must know whether or not that which you love is eternal. Keeping this in mind look at the consequences of your desires. Do they bring happiness, peace and love? If they do not then, it is useless to keep them, so give them up as you do every night in the sleep state. Are you not happy in this state? Why do you reject these objects and go to sleep? You sleep for peace of mind. You reject everybody, even your own body because you can't think of your body and sleep at the same time. Though sleep is even better than your own body. Why do I remain in suffering? There is no suffering when you have a desire for freedom. You can't have two desires at the same time. When you desire for freedom you don't suffer. When you want to suffer you have to suffer because you have decided to suffer. Who has ever made the decision, I don't want to suffer? Most people are in love with suffering and so they suffer. There was a woman in Paris that a mutual friend brought me to. She was suffering very badly so we went to her apartment and immediately upon seeing me, she said that I could stay as long as I liked in a separate apartment which belonged to her, but that hereafter she could not see me. I wondered why she said this. She didn't know me. So, I asked her, I heard that you are suffering, and I came and I can help you, to remove the suffering. She said, yes, seeing your face. I know that you can remove the suffering, but now I am in love with this suffering, and I don't want to remove it because I have lived with it for 39 years. 
If you remove it then with whom will I live? It was a strange story and I decided not to stay there. Though like this everybody wants to suffer. Everybody is definitely deceiving themselves. How can you expect to stop suffering when really you like to suffer? This woman's life was based on suffering and so many people are like this. They don't want to be normal and enjoy life. They just want to suffer. You are so attached to suffering but here, how long can you suffer? You can't suffer here. Here you must smile and be happy and sing and dance. Don't worry, I will remove your suffering without any pain to you. Will you help me to stop suffering? You have to decide to stop suffering. Stop suffering and be free of suffering. When the mind comes tell it that you won't go and tell him of your decision. Refuse him. Don't open the door. If you don't open the door no guest will come in. The mind which troubles you only functions when you desire so stop desiring and when you do all the world is given to you. I have such a strong food vicenna that disturbs me. I want to be free of it. Animals also share this vicenna with you, but what they don't have that you do is the ability to make a strong decision to be free in this life. Don't waste this human birth or a minute of it. Though many people die young. Spend all your time meditating and find where the satsang is and go there. I also like to eat, but you shouldn't eat too much. Eat moderate food, keep moderate habits and sleep moderately. This will keep you healthy and maintain what you want. Like the river, keep on going toward the ocean. Eat to live, don't live to eat. You have to fulfill all of your desires. It is better that you fulfill them in this lifetime where you will be born to fulfill them next time. Since your desire has come on the surface now you must go out and fulfill it, but you must promise to come back because we like you. Eating is the main desire so eat first and fulfill this desire. Kabir says physical hunger is a bitch and that she should be fed. Mind thoughts and mental baggage. Pure mind rises from heart as no mind and this is consciousness. Impurity of mind is when the mind moves and desire arises. This is bondage, this is wanting something not permanent, something that is not abiding and not blissful. Even the movement of thinking I am peace disturbs peace. You don't move, you can't move, only mind as intention moves. When the mind is still freedom is here. Where there is mind there is two-ness and past. Where there is no mind there is freedom. Mind is strong in other-ness because mind is mind only when it touches an object. Mind is the worst pollution because it is the concept of time which steals you from love. Mind is samsara, the cycle of hitch, iking through wombs. Mind is description so see what cannot be described by thought. Mind is your desire. It is not the mind's fault because it is you who trouble the mind. Your old wicked habits of disturbing your own beauty with your thoughts and baggage are slow to die. You are agitated by your own notions, but know they are empty, they do not exist. Though it is most important to know mind is thought only and it can create anything that you want. The mind is a beggar because the concept of what makes you a beggar. The only I am and try to lift the begging bowl. Throw away the begging bowl of ego for the throne. Freedom is when the mind is cremated. Absolute destruction of the mind is freedom. Then mind is no mind. Decide that you want freedom and surrender mind to that. If you offer your mind you must stop thinking and make a firm decision not to fall back to suffering. When you give rise to any notion you start sliding back toward the graveyard. This graveyard is the dancing hall of ego. Ego subsides here and now in being bliss awareness. Mind is movement and creates desires so that it has something to move toward. When there is relation to the past and to the future, the play of the mind starts. Let the mind play, it is water, it is the wave which is not different than ocean, it is perfection. But untold misery and suffering arises from the demon mind ego when it is identified with. 
though play's ocean and give up the arrogance of thinking you are the individual wave. They wake to the ocean to self, and the thief ego will not enter your mind's house. Mind is a playful friend when you give him good work, and a dire enemy when you direct it to sense objects and pleasures. Directing mind toward self is good work. Nothing will arrest mind except inquiry, all else is mind itself. Though use the mind to introduce you to this moment. This mind is this moment, and this is the self, as there are countless reflections of light, but only one sun. To be bound or free is up to you because you are what you think. To inquire, stop thinking, and leave the association of the mind entirely, and just play in no mind. I was deep in an experience when I realized that my mind was playing tricks, creating spiritual experience. This is good understanding. Now you are after the mind and you have known its tricks. When you know who is playing the tricks then he cannot cheat you. If there is any kind of experience it is the trick of the mind. You will be very happy with this experience and tell it to friends and gurus, and they also will appreciate it only because they have not seen a place where there is no experience at all. Therefore, everybody will want to hear how your energy is rising from your bottom and going to your heart and beyond. Then they will assure you that this is the last thing to be done. But when you go after the mind, it will disappear. I notice that these experiences happen when I am peaceful. This is an incorrect statement because nothing can happen when you are peaceful. What more can happen when you are peaceful? This noticing that you are peaceful is a trick of the mind. Otherwise, how will you notice? You can only notice when something is in front of you, when you have subjectified yourself as a body and objectified the pieces being something in front of you to be noticed. This is a trick of the mind. You have not noticed correctly because now you are not to notice inside or outside. Check the trick of the mind by not looking anywhere, neither within nor without. If you understand what I speak then, it is all over, look nowhere. If you understand what will you see? There will be no trick here. Nobody anywhere is taught where the I comes from and so here you must find out. Turn your face to the source of the I. Do it. It is not to meditate. It is not to be engaged in any effort. Do it and tell me what happens next. I experience so much mental disturbance. Can you help me? You experience mental disturbance when you experience something that you don't like. Try to fulfill your desires because if you suppress them they will just dwell somewhere in your brain and you won't be able to sleep. So don't keep anything in your mind. Enjoy your life as much as you can, and when you have enjoyed everything, you will know that there must be something else beyond the transitory enjoyments of the world. All those enjoyments need the bones and leather, but there is a happiness which does not depend on them. When you find this happiness, you will sit quiet, and you will not go back to the cemetery which is filled only with bones. Most people stay in the cemetery every day. Once you know this, you will be attracted to the bliss which will continually pull you deeper and deeper into it. Don't worry. Simply stay quiet here and don't let your mind go back to the previous disturbances. Whenever the mind goes out pounce on it so that it doesn't go back to the previous disturbance. Be a lion. Don't let the mind go back into the past, that's all. I surrender to you in the same way that I surrender to life. But still I experience a lot of trouble. Trouble will eat you up. Any trouble of the mind becomes your enemy and will not leave you. If you want to live in a happy state of life face this enemy and don't allow it into your home. Don't allow the past to enter into your mind. Then you will be free and happy. Most people are too attached to the trouble to part with it. But when you get fed up with it perhaps this trouble will go to someone else. Even then you are still attached to it. You are advised to give up the attachment with the past friend who has troubled you. Stay here and I will show you how to check this attachment. I feel I should acknowledge thoughts instead of suppress them. This is good, don't suppress thoughts, face them whatever they are. 
If you run away you show your cowardice and weakness, and the thoughts will just follow you and become stronger. Now stand and look at the thoughts, and they will disappear. You don't have to run away anymore. Face each thought, and use yoga techniques to gain strength. I want to be free of it. You are on the threshold of success, but you have to be bold and strong. It is a strong one who will win so put your whole strength on this, I want to be free. This is quite enough. I've had so many plans to travel all over, but I keep canceling them because I can't leave. Wherever you go eventually you must stay here for your final realization. Your best guide is your true desire to be free. This will take you to where you have to be which is where your mind will be killed. But she doesn't want to be killed so easily and will appear as your friend. No she is your enemy. I am tired of my mind and I feel so helpless. I don't know what to do. How long have you stayed with this boyfriend? If you are tired of it then stop, sit down and rest. When you walk it walks when you stay quiet it stays quiet. Don't let this boyfriend of yours into your home and eventually will go away. I have not experienced the source of thought, though I have tried many times. Suppose you own a house and you notice things are being taken from it at night. So you stay awake one night to catch the thief. As the thief enters the house you cough and so the thief sneaks away because he knows you are still awake. Soon he comes back and steals more things. You know he is there but you pretend not to so that he is not scared away. The thief leaves your house and you follow him for several kilometers to his den. You enter into the den and catch the thief and restore all your stolen articles. Like this follow the thief which is thought. Thought is the thief which steals your peace. The thief's den is your own self and you enjoy it. You say I should face the thoughts and feelings. How to do this? Stay in the present and look at it and don't run to the past. Stay absolutely in the present. This is facing the thought. When I do this then? When is future and then is past? What thought is between these? It seems that. What do you mean by seems? This is a rose, shows her a rose. Will you say it is a rose or will you say it seems like a rose? Be clear of what is before you and all thought will disappear and you will be happy and peaceful. I want to be happy. I want to give my neurosis and all my perceived problems to you. I am disgusted at how often I get disgusted at how often I am seduced by my mind. To remove all of this just look within your own self. Do it as I say. Look within not without. I can see from the face the neurosis people carry for ages. Yours comes from childhood. You are lucky that you are here because it will go. Only sit properly anywhere and look within, not out at your neighbor. The more you look within the more beautiful you will find yourself to be. This beauty has been hiding for decades, you have to do nothing to know it. Simply do not think, and you will know who you are. I do this I try to look within, but my mind seems to be busy like never before. I want to allow more non-doing to take place. Mind becomes busy when you are in front of something to which you are attracted, not otherwise. If the object of attraction is not there then, the mind does not find anything. If you see a handsome boy, your mind will be busy. When there are two the mind is busy. But how long can mind dance when there is only one? We'll get fatigued keep quiet and sleep. It is not difficult to solve these problems. None doing is possible when you don't have desire for any other object, person or idea. Then your mind will be at rest. I feel stressed and nervous and I always create problems in my life. I do feel quiet and satsing. Can you help me be quiet? What kind of problems do you create? Just to be busy and restless. Just to be dizzy? It is good to be busy because otherwise you will sleep. The best busyness is to find out where you come from. I try to be closer to myself, but the noise of this mind keeps me out. Your name is Matt Woolley, and I gave it to you because Matt Woolley doesn't care for anything whatsoever happens. 
If the mind troubles you, let it trouble you. If the mind doesn't trouble you, let it not trouble you. What difference does it make? Simply don't care what is there. Whatever appears, let it appear, and whatever doesn't appear, let no one sit in front of you. Don't even ask the question of who you are. Don't care about anything lamb quieter now, but thoughts still come up, though they do not seem so important. Thoughts become important when you speak about it, when you utter it. Then it becomes important otherwise. She smiles and laughs. You see how easily the obstacles are removed. Look at your face. It is not the same person who came here. You are not to handle these troubles at all. They will all be handled by the self. Just surrender to the self and it will take care of you. He looks after the whole cosmos. Why shouldn't he look after someone like you who is on the right track? I feel I have met a person who is beyond time and space and mind, someone who I recognize as God and self. Can you advise me? Should I take them as my guru? Beyond mine there is no distinction. Beyond mine there is no difference between a pig and a man. Your thought of distinction, that one man is superior to another, is mind. You say he's beyond mind time and space. Then how will you trace him? You will only find him when you are beyond mind time and space. Then these two beyond minded people will meet in space. Laughs help me to remove my ignorance and to totally silence me. I have had experiences of bliss, but I guess I am still too influenced by the world and by my concepts. If you have had a glimpse then let anything stay with you, there is no problem. No world or events will trouble you. Keep this glimpse in your mind and what can happen. Your father is the lord of the universe, and he cannot disown you. You can do whatever you want as long as you remember that you are the son of the lord of the universe. All these things are for you to enjoy. Like the prince of a king can do whatever he likes. No one can touch him because everybody knows he's the prince. And if anybody complains to the king it doesn't matter because he's the prince's father and he will not punish his son. Just do not disown your father. Otherwise he will become a beggar. It is up to you. Everybody is a prince and those who are in trouble have only forgotten that they are prince. He once said that, even the most excellent concept is still just a concept. Is there any real reason to try to understand words? They just seem to have put me into trouble. You don't have to try and you don't have to understand. Whatever you understand is concept only. Whatever you will or have understood is concept only. Whatever you see around you is your concept only. Concepts of your mind can become so strong that they appear to be real. Without concept you cannot recognize anything. Though all that you see is that which is previously stored in your memory. Like the dream tiger who pounces on you in your dream. It makes you feel very frightened. You don't say, you are a dream tiger, purely a mental concept only, I am not afraid of you. The dream tigers are as fierce in the dream state as they are in the forest in the waking state. Like this everything seems real. Everything you see or touch or taste or hear or smell seems real, but actually they are not. They are all concepts. You will remove these concepts, these dreams when you wake up. Only then you will say that it is all just your concept. For so many years, you have been adhering to this waking dream. Now, it is such a concept that you call it real. But when you are in the sleep state, nothing is there. This you can also experience in the waking state. To stay asleep in the waking state and stay awake while others sleep. As you sleep, stay awake to your own self, and you will know it is all a concept. There you will find your true nature which is eternal is neither waking or dream or sleep. The entire waking state is a concept just as the dream state is. When you know this, you will say now I am looking in a very new atmosphere, and you will know who is always awake, who does not sleep. I will give you a hint on how to do this. Find the concept on which all other concepts are based, find the I. Thank you for taking this baggage from me. 
leave your burdens aside. All surplus baggage must be thrown away. This I learned from my army life. You can't be slow in the army, or you will die and burdens make you slow. Sometimes when I see people who are too serious about some foolish thing I think of something the Maharishi used to say, when you are traveling on the train will you keep the baggage on your head or under your feet? This is the difference between the wise and the rest of the universe. The wise do not carry their baggage, but almost everyone does. Thinking of friends and finances and things not even come or already gone is carrying your baggage. This is the difference between living in peace or suffering. It depends on where your baggage is. If you feel that the baggage that you are carrying is of no use drop it down. Then walk away enlightened into the realms where very few have gone. Don't carry anything. This means do not think. I will tell you a story about this. There was once a Kuru who had a very young disciple. They had to go to another village, but on their way they had to cross a small stream which due to the rains, had risen and become neck deep. They both could cross the stream because they were able to keep their small bags on their heads. But there was a prostitute standing nearby who had to attend a wedding function and couldn't cross the stream because of her nice dress and makeup. So the saint said she should sit on his shoulders and he would carry her to the other side, and so she did. Then she went her way, and the two sannyasins went theirs. Now the student was very confused and troubled. His guru had always said not to touch a woman, but then, he had told the prostitute to have a ride on his shoulders. After about ten miles he humbly asked sir, I have a question. I am very much annoyed with your behavior. You teach me not to see or touch any woman because we are monks, we are sannyasins, and then you touch that girl. Yes, yes, I lifted the girl because she wanted to cross the stream. Then I let her down, and we went our way. Now we have been traveling for ten miles, why are you still carrying her? I carried her ten meters, but you have carried her ten miles. Why do you still remember her? That is over now. Like this, whatever comes in front of you take care of the circumstances and forget about it. This is the guidance. Don't avoid anything that comes. Don't invite anything that you don't need. Attend to circumstances as best you can and forget about it. My old habits keep coming back. Can you help me to get rid of them? These in an empty house the old habits that you had before you came to luck now may still exist but their strength is greatly diminished. Don't worry about them. Just keep your mind on the formlessness of your sack, Guru. Actually, there is only formlessness. The elephant that you dream about seems real in the dream, but is not there in the waking state. It is formless as all forms in the dream are, even though they may represent a person or an animal or whatever. When you wake up everything in the dream becomes formless. Similarly, when you wake up everything becomes formless because form is falsehood and self is truth. Whenever you see form it is because your eyes, mind, intelligence and understanding are not clear and you are dreaming. Though if you see form ask yourself if you are dreaming and with these words you will wake up. Then you will not see any existence at all. Most people will never see this. They are just driven by their desires to go through womb after womb each selected according to the desires of the person. All of you here are lucky and merited, and have had holy births with holy parents. Are the Vasanas mental tendencies of the mind so strong that they can pull me out of peace? When the tendencies drag you to enjoyments you can't enjoy this peace. But once you enjoy this peace, the tendencies no longer have the energy to pull you out of peace. You may think you are happy when you are enjoying the objects that your tendencies bring to you, but the most happiness arises when there are no tendencies or desires. Once you know this there is no problem of enjoying your friends, restaurants, movies or whatever you want to do. You will not be able to forget this real peace, and it will not forget you. You will even be able to go to the fish market but you won't smell the fish. I just worry that the tendencies will take me back away from self. 
there is no back and no forward in the peace that I speak about. What causes emotions and thoughts to arise? You have to inquire, where do these thoughts come from? I will tell you how to stop thoughts. If some thought is arising it must come from somewhere, isn't it? Though go to the root of thought from where it is arising. If you are doing it tell me if the thought is still there. Find the source of the current thought, the one occurring in this instant. As the wave rises from the ocean, find out from where whatever is in your mind rises from. You have to tell me. Can one really develop this awareness to such an extent that they know where thought arises from? That is what I am asking you to do. Be vigilant. Be watchful of where every thought rises from. How do I recreate the suffering in my mind? When the ego is removed you will feel tremendous happiness. It is only because of ego that you suffer and feel unhappiness. But once you throw away the ego how can you let it return? Why did you pick it up again? It means that you have not thrown it away. This happens most of the time. Most of the time when people feel in peace they have not left the ego behind. Once you are clean you will not smear your clothes again with mud. Having had a bath in the Ganga how will you again smear yourself with mud? Though you have had intention to take a bath but you have not done it. Intention is something else but you have to put your intention into practice. If you are hungry you must go to the restaurant and not just look at the menu. You have to eat. Don't just take the menu and lick it. You have just been licking the menus. Once you have eaten, you will not go to the next door restaurant. All you have been doing is collecting menus, but menus cannot remove your hunger, you must eat. You must digest it. Freedom will take you to the proper restaurant or will even take food to you. For the last few days I have been consumed by familiar emotions ranging from hurt to frustration. I have not been able to escape this with my safe insulated American life. Occasionally I have experienced. Not occasionally, always. You must always experience this. When you think there is the world when you don't think there is no world. This is reality. There is no world, no body in sleep because there is no thought. The world is there when you think, so do not think and you are happy. It is hard not to think. When your mind is going to the past, stop it and bring it to the present. Mind itself is past. Mind itself is thought. Look at it, and it will stop spinning. Look at any thought in front of you and concentrate on it. No thought will come if you look at it, so anytime any thought comes, simply look at it. Someone is sleeping, they do not know what is happening, but if you wake them up then everything is finished. Thought is the whole universe, and so looking at the thought will cause everything to disappear. Keep on looking always. Question where is the I? And you will see there is no thought. When I rise as you look at where it rises from. I feel that I am caught in a whirlpool and I don't know how to get out. There is a technique for getting out of whirlpools. I also was drowned in whirlpools in the Ganga and I know this technique. If you make effort, you will not be able to survive because your effort will, ironically, keep you in the whirlpool. But if you don't make effort, you will be thrown out of the whirlpool by the whirlpool. Nobody in the world is successful in getting out of this whirlpool by their own efforts. The one who doesn't make effort will come right out. In fact, he can jump into whirlpools whenever he likes and he will not be in danger because he knows this technique. So know this technique for yourself and you can go back to your home. My home is in America where I am an educator. I would like to raise the consciousness of the Americans by using the media videos. What is the main thing that I should tell Americans about thinking? Tell them not to do it. Americans have learned enough, in fact they are the teachers of the whole world. People from all over the world go to America for their advanced degrees. Tell them that they have learned enough and it is time to keep quiet. They can learn everything in America except how to be. For this they must come to luck now. Tell them this and tell them to always be faithful to themselves and to others. 
Tell them when this thought of I am the body comes, check it and keep it away. Again and again they are to do this. Then something new will come. Something which is not the body will appear. When the billion year old thought I am the body comes, check it. Again and again check it. I don't have a lot of success in stopping thinking. If you can't check the thought, then just let it come. If it comes then don't run after it. It will come and it will stay, and it will go. Just watching may be easier than stopping it. If any thought comes treat it like a car coming down the road towards you. Do you run after the car? No. So like this let the thought come, let the thought stay and let it go. It cannot stay for more than an instant because another is waiting behind it. In this moment there is no thought. Only in the last moment is there thought. What do you think in this moment? Nothing. In this moment nobody can think. Everybody thinks in the graves of the graveyards. This moment is the moment of love and peace, but everybody misses it. Thought is the last moment, not this moment. In the present there is no room for thoughts. So stay here. What difficulty is there? Attachment and past. The only way not to have peace is to be engaged in something else, to be attached to something other than yourself. Any beauty other than self is a dead corpse in a nice dress and attachment to these things is living in a grave with dead bodies. When you live in the association of mind you're in the graveyard, but when you do inquire you are free. Doubting this freedom is clinging to bondage. We cling to our own attachments, but we can fly away in satsang is this open door. It is your choice, old patterns are your own cage. Befriend something permanent and unchanging and you will be happy, this is wisdom the guru. Give up your old patterns of life which are ksanga bad associations. You need the past and thoughts to suffer, you don't need anything to be free. The boulders of the past rest on your chest and destroy your life and freedom. Remove them by finding the origin of the I thought. Freedom waits, but most are engaged with something else. Don't tie yourself to anything in the past or the future because it will not work. Be attached only to this moment. When you hold to something other than your true nature, you will be disturbed. By holding attachments to transient things you declare to yourself that you are not the fullness in which all is. Self is totality and therefore cannot possess or desire, so possessing is a veil, a lie. Everyone is a Buddha, you have to break attachments. You have to renounce because otherwise you trap yourself in samsara and death with your own attachments. Attachment is a demon, attachment is trouble because our attachments become our reality. Only in satsang is this removed. How can I stay in awareness without being troubled by old habits? What will you do with your old boyfriend who is always abusing you when you have a very fresh handsome and beautiful new boyfriend who worships you and gives you peace and contentment? What will you do? This happiness seems desirable but it is just another attachment. This is philosophy. Suppose a prisoner is set free after twenty years, but he refuses to go because he thinks his freedom will be an attachment. Everybody loves to live in the prison in fear, but intellectually rationalizes it by saying freedom is an attachment. You are asking me if to have your legs free of chains is an attachment. You are only philosophizing. Will you help me experience what is real right now? Stop hiding in the bushes of thoughts and attachments and burn them instead. Everybody likes to hide in these bushes. I seem so addicted to trying to find happiness in my partners. It doesn't work anymore. You don't need a man to give you happiness, and if you try, you will get fed up with it. That will be the time to search for your own self because your mind will not go to the past enjoyments. The mind wants to be happy, but those sources of happiness which cannot satisfy the mind are in the end destructive. So after enough destructive experiences it will settle down as it has in your case. Forget about what you have been doing once it is gone, and win the happiness of here and now. 
I have such gratitude for the grace of your presence. You dissolve all my questions and most without me even asking them. I just still have a yearning to be empty of all attachments. Only when you are empty of all attachments are you beautiful. When you have anything in your mind, you are in the graveyard of past thoughts. Anyone attached to the past has an ugly mind and is ugly themselves. Because your mind is not clean, you have fallen to the past. If you live in the instant presence, this is called beauty and love. The whole world is lost in these outside attachments, not just yourself. If any of these attachments give you happiness and peace of mind then stay with them, because it isn't time to leave them. But if you see the snakes in your sleeves biting you it is time to reject them. It is no use to experience what has already been experienced. If you know the fire burns there is no need to be burned again. Like this avoid attachments like fire because they will burn you. But don't be attached to knowledge meant because just as the ocean is not affected by the waves, so thoughts and attachments have nothing to do with divinity. So let them be there. Have a firm decision that you do not want to suffer and that you are here to win happiness in this incarnation. This is the number one decision. If you make this decision, you will have grace. Just don't go and enjoy any object, stop it. Do this practice here and you will be successful. Don't let your mind go outside of your heart. I see no calm, no joy. How to stay in the non abidance Day is such. If you look back, you will not be calm or joyous. If you stop looking back, you will be happy. Stop even speaking of the past. Even when my mind is quiet there is tightness and cramps in my heart. When you are quiet you should be joyful. Though, it means that the mind is not quiet when there is a cramp or a knot in your heart. This knot is not a present knot, it is old, very old. It has gone to your subconscious mind. This knot is there because someone has not treated you well, they have cheated you well. This is for you to forget, and you have to forget it. Don't remember any person who has cheated you and this will open the knot. Untie the knot by not remembering. The old is the old, the past is the past. Of course it is difficult to forget the event, but you have to concentrate on the present day-to-day -day events and not go back. Try it. Tighten your fist also so the mind does not go back to the past affair. Tighten your fists and even clench your teeth. With that much determination you can stop it yourself. Otherwise, it is of no use living this life. Enjoy this life. Nature has given so many beautiful things, we should be open to it and enjoy it. Those who are always going to the past cannot enjoy the beauty of the present life. You are here and we have to help you. This is the responsibility of all of us to help that person. If someone is not happy we have to force happiness on them whether they like it or not. I'm sad because so many places where I once was able to hide are crumbling down, but I am also happy because I want to stop drowning in it all. Though sometimes I am happy and sometimes sad. What do you mean by sometimes this and sometimes that? If you are sometimes sad it means that you want to have one pattern of life which you like. Don't do this this is a game. Let anything happen to you, let it happen. If something does not happen to you, let it not happen. This is relief. If you are happy when someone loves you and not happy when someone does not love you then you will always suffer. For who is there to love? People don't love others as much as they love their own interests regarding others. It is only for the sake of interest that people love you. Will someone who loved you 50 years ago love you 50 years from now? This is only time, and when the time is right everybody is a friend. It cannot remain the same. You are the same and everybody else will change. You can't check the time and it is eating away at everybody in the world. Time is enemy number one and nobody knows it, but you love it. Sometimes. There it is again, do not use the word time again. Do not use the word time at all, for one second, one moment, and have this experience of who you are. 
The trick to be always happy is not to be too friendly with time. Time will kill everybody. It has killed all sages and saints. Though it is better not to speak of time. When you sleep you do not speak of time and how happy are you. Try this now. Whenever you are not happy it means you are holding on to some past person or concept. Past is time. When you are attached to the past, you are not happy, but this is the habit of everybody. All relationships, all objects of the world are past. Even your body is past. But don't speak of time and you are ever young. Nobody can touch you, not even fear or death. Try this from now, don't let your mind go to any person, object or concept of the past. For one moment try this and experience yourself now. Do it now and tell me if you are not happy. Don't let your mind drift to the last moment or day or year. Then speak to me. How not to be drowned in the past. Look at any thought that rises just now. All thoughts belong to the past, what doesn't belong to the past? Just being here. These three words do not belong to the past. Being is this instant, but don't use words for this moment out of time. Find out what the words point to. Being the self you don't keep any other name, object, or person in your mind. Don't keep any person in your mind and tell me what do you see. There is always an object in my mind, what keeps me from being free? Nothing else can prevent you from being free except that you are holding on to something in the past. If you don't hold on to any past you will see that you are always free. Holding on to the past is what prevents you from knowing that you are free. Do you understand and do you agree? For one time in luck now decide that you have to be free of all past concepts and relations, just for one second give yourself this. Then you will know that always you have been free. But you are from New York City aren't you? Though you must be remembering your 8th Avenue. Whosoever has gone to 8th Avenue can never forget it. I used to live nearby there also in Greenwich Village at 14th and Bank Street. Past is like a dust storm in my mind. All these storms of the past mean that still you are holding on to the past relationships with others. That is why it is not very clear. I think these storms will cease when you get rid of your attachments to the past. When you get attached to presence it will be a very different affair. Though don't be discouraged. Keep it up. Fear and fear of death. Fear manifests as death. I am the body is the basic fear. Meditate every day to remove this fear. When fear comes love it and when it goes don't cling to it. How to deal with my deepest fears. Do not be afraid of the fear but go to it and embrace it. Go to the source of the fear and dance with it. You have no fear in the sleep state, you only have fear in the waking state when you bring things from the past into this moment. I have made many changes in my life I still have arrogance and fear. Now I will try to embrace this fear. What changes did you make so that you still have arrogance and fear? Changes were in my morals and behavior. I stopped taking drugs and alcohol. I want to be free and free of fear. Please show me the way to release all of this. You say you have fear, arrogance and pride. I will tell you how to remove it. Look at fear, arrogance and pride if you want to remove it look at it. Pride and arrogance is doership and this causes trouble. They have never paid you, so be humble. Anything that you do conceals self with the arrogance of doership. Arrogance is not recognizing this timeless moment, arrogance is I am the body. Remove arrogance and enlightenment is instantaneous. I am so and so is the first arrogance and this is mine is the second. Look at it. When you look at something you objectify it and you establish the subject as different from the object. The look at the fear and pride and they will become the object and you will become the subject or the seer seeing the scene. Do it now. In a time something is objectified you become the subject. You are the seer not the scene. Find out who the seer is. To sense something you need five senses, 
eyes to see, nose to smell, and so on. But for the eyes to see, they need an object of sight. You are not the sense object and not the senses. You are different from these. To be understand this, but don't make any effort to do so. Simply separate yourself from all the objects. You must discriminate and know that you are not all the things you see. Once you have done this, your purpose of life is fulfilled. To know who you really are. Most teachers divert your attention. They don't tell you that you are not anything. The preachers just dwell on the past. They will tell you about somebody who lived 1,995 years ago. They don't let you find out what is in this present moment, and they themselves have never tried this. The teaching here is very old, 25,000 years. It is the teaching of the Vedas. Find out who you are, nothing else. You can find this. But people have lost this teaching. They don't care about it. Therefore, they suffer. Once you have done this, you won't call it a glimpse. Though do it now for an instant of time. This is all it takes to realize it. Don't postpone like you do with other things. People say, "I will meditate when I am retired and old." But perhaps you will not see old age. Perhaps you will not even see the next moment. So do it now. It is available now because it is wisdom. It is light, and you can always see this light in now, in luck now. Don't postpone it. To see the light, the wisdom. Don't make any effort. Don't give rise to a single thought in the mind, and just keep quiet. This is the trick I tell you, and it will not take more than an instant. People have done it. You can do it now. Don't postpone and don't try. If you try, it means this trial will be something to be done in time. I will try. If you say I will try, it means that you are postponing for the future. So don't try and don't make effort and don't give rise to any thought and don't care about whether you have done it or have not done it. What is this then? Nothing is left for you to say except for the declaration that I am. Come on, speak up. I am. It is true. I have so much fear and anger. You have to be Nishala, that which does not move. Let there be fear and anger, but you don't move. This is enough. Repeat your name. I am unmovable. I do not move. Let the fear and anger come, but they will not enter you. When you become weak, they enter you. But if you face them, they will not trouble you. Stand like a mountain, like that which does not move. Wind in the form of anger will come, strike and subside. Waves come and drown the rock, but when they recede, the rock is unmoved. So don't move. You can't fight anger with anger. Keep quiet and don't move. The wind troubles a weak sapling, uprooting it, but the mountain cannot be uprooted. This is how you will succeed in controlling the anger. There are so many things in my life which keep me from peace, including so many of my friends. Can you help me? You must have the joy of your own real friend first. Then your face will change, and so will your friends. Just stay here for a few days, and it will happen. Now your face and eyes show so much fear. You are too young to be afraid. When I was young, I came face to face with tigers and elephants in the forests of the Himalayas, but I had so much mental and physical strength that I was not afraid even of them. I was convinced that if they attacked, I could kill them with my bare hands. And often, I could not even look people in the eyes because they would not be able to take it. This much self-power was there. Why are you afraid? Even if you don't tell me, I will go to your childhood and find out. Your parents gave you this fear. I will discuss it with you in private after the cricket matches, or we can continue now. Now, how do I stop the fear? How do I detach from the ego? I tend to abuse others and myself. Fear comes from the mind. To stop it, find where the mind comes from. My mind is in my head. Where does this head come from? When you sleep, do you see your head? No. So the head also is not there. So where does the mind come from? Mind means thought. Thought means I. 
There is no difference between I and mind. When I rises, the mind rises. So find out where the I is rising from. From birth, you use the word I. I am attached to this person. This person is attached to me. Which is this I who is attached to and abuses others and abuses itself? All this will instantly stop when you find the source of I. It is not there. Are you thinking? No. You asked how to stop thinking. This is how. When you stop thinking, there is no fear, and who can you abuse? It is very good to ask your questions. Everybody must remove their doubts. Don't be shy. Without asking, how can you realize it? Then you are here. Finish your doubts instantly. I used to have such fears, especially of being killed by burglars. It is the fear which will kill you, not the burglars. This fear is inside you. And is the real thief of your peace. It is probably due to a childhood experience, probably a death in your family. My sister died when I was young. This fear of loss has grown now, and if I tell you to just stop it, it will not work. When you lose a near one, you lose your balance, and you are shaken. Even J. Krishnamurti was very upset when he lost his brother, and he had to work to get over it. The work on your own self by knowing that this fear is your own creation and that it is rooted in your childhood. It may take a long time to go, but you must see that you live a happy life anyway. I haven't been able to sleep, and this is becoming a distraction for me. If you cannot sleep, this is because of how you have spent the waking state. If you have spent the waking state in a good way, you will sleep. But since you do not sleep, you have been very active for things which are not necessary. Your face shows an introverted mind, which is concentrated on one fear that has happened early in childhood. Maybe some kind of abuse, which has now gone into the subconscious mind. Yes. Though I think if you extrovert your mind, you will be better. Go out on the town or to the forest with people, not alone. Don't fall back into the black hole. This can be cured. It is not a big problem or a disease. It is a state of mind, the overworking of the mind, always going back to the past event of the childhood. Though a new chapter has to be opened for you to live in the present life, present way, present things, and then you will get well. If you are not able to sleep on account of some reason, make use of this time by making inquiry. Who is not sleeping? If you find the good answer, it will be the one who has never slept, the one who is always awake and always conscious. Let your mind sleep, let your body and ego sleep, but you stay awake. Look at them. If you don't make this inquiry and you don't sleep, then you will have to consult another person. Is the fear and insecurity at both an inner conscious level and on an outer conscious level? Fear and insecurity can only be at the outer conscious level, because there is no fear at the inner conscious level. When you see the inner conscious level, you have no fear at all. You have to look at your fears. When you are aware of them, they vanish because you are the witness of the fear. Where did you get this fear? You are carrying fear from the past, not from the present. This fear is from your childhood. Nobody can help you to throw away your fears. You have to do it yourself by going to the root of the fear which has disturbed your mind. You will find out what is the cause and how to deal with it. In the last year, I have had a growing awareness of fear of the world, especially other people. It means you are hiding something; otherwise, you would not be afraid. If a robber goes to the forest. He will suspect that a person behind him is a policeman who is after him, because he has something to hide. He always has the policeman in his mind. So something is there that you are hiding, and so you are afraid of people in the world. I feel I am hiding anger. Anger and fear go together. Both are robbers. What crime have you done? What have you done to others that you are angry with them? Your anger is to wipe somebody out. Both anger and fear are very fierce enemies of a man. You are probably hiding something from childhood, but if you don't know it, it is good luck. 
Now you are on your heels to face fear and anger. Everybody has come here to face these enemies, lust, anger, greed. Everybody will be harmed by these three enemies. I am just arriving from France and I am in a lack of trust and I can't let go. What do you want to let go of? There are many things to let go of. My fears and my tensions. Oh, so you are always thinking about your country. If you don't let go it means that you are attached to something and that you are afraid that it will leave you. You must be attached to something of the past and it will not leave you. If you understand that there is no real friend and that everybody is after your flesh for their own interests and enjoyments, not yours, you will get fed up and search for the friend who is always present but hiding. Find the friend who is always hiding in your own heart. Did you ever turn your face to your own heart? You have been looking at others, but you have not looked to your own self. Don't think and don't make effort. This is what I can't do. If you don't do it yourself then whose problem is it? You must solve this for yourself. If you are hungry you must eat because it won't help you if others eat for you. So if you want peace, you must find it yourself. Tell me if not thinking and not making effort doesn't make you happy. Anger and dissatisfaction. Anger, greed, attachment, and aversion are the diseases of the mind which make meditation, knowing who you are, impossible. Anger arises only when there are two and this two-ness is ego. Anger, greed, hypocrisy, lust, and jealousy all are mighty enemies on the battlefield, but conquer ego and you will conquer all of these. Do not get involved in anger, greed, or lust, these are the ego, don't let yourself be involved. If greed interests you be greedy for freedom. If you are angry then be angry with God, and if you must lust, desire the union with your heart. Check the flowing river of mind by damming it, and then channeling it or the dam will break due to floods of anger and greed. The channels must irrigate in the right direction. Then anger, greed and grief will run harmlessly. To let them arise, and as they do know that you are the source and forget about them. Remember only your true self, like this you can face all circumstances. I am sorry to ask you such a personal question, but I am experiencing so much anger lately. What can I do? Anger is a curse which cuts short your life by burning the entire nervous system and troubling your breath. Express your anger and kiss what makes you angry. It is no problem to get angry. Just don't remember the circumstances which made you angry. Don't carry anger or love. Forget everything. Don't worry about asking personal questions because I must take care of my children and see to it that you are happy. Why do I get so angry when I think of certain people in my past, especially my father? These old thoughts are like prison walls. These thoughts are not you, they are the creation of the misbehavior that you experience from others when you were a child. Now, they do not leave you. But by good luck you are here and so slowly they will leave you. Others are driven to suicide by this, you will be free. Simply sit and listen. Your old thoughts will be overpowered and destroyed and a new fresh way will take root in your heart. Don't try because if you do it will not happen. Simply keep quiet and don't make effort. This may be difficult, but it is possible. Activity will leave you and you will be quiet. Stillness will remove the concept of activity. Activity has never given anyone a peaceful and loving state. Keep repeating this is not for me when you are suffering. I want love peace self. Turn the mind this way. There seems to be so many opposing forces. You will see that these opposing forces are actually helping you. The direction that they take are for your own good, they are not your enemies. What is destructive is your desire for objects. You will see that there is no difference between stillness and activities. No you will succeed. Do you have any other questions or doubts? I have been unsatisfied with my life even though I have been given so much, including this precious atzing. I can't open up and be happy and feel joy. 
The cause of your unhappiness is that you want something to enjoy, and that something cannot give you satisfaction, because what you want is from the past. But you have to understand that nothing of the past will give happiness to any person. Happiness and peace are here now. Look for something that will give you rest, peace and happiness instantly, and you are not to work for it. Now tell me, doesn't this dissatisfaction belong to someone who has deceived you? Everyone will deceive you and is deceiving you. Remove this concept from your mind and tell me if you are satisfied. If you are not attached to any person or object or idea for just one second, tell me how do you feel? I still feel attached to persons. Ah, but I told you not to do it for one second. You may be 30 years old and involved with your dissatisfaction for so long, but I only want one finger snap of your time unattached to anything. Afterwards you can go on being attached. But why not just try this now? Give this second to yourself. You haven't done it and therefore you are dissatisfied and disappointed and you will die in this dissatisfaction. But do what I tell you and death will not touch you. All your pain is rising from physical relationships, but tell me how you will look in 50 years and how attractive you will be. I don't want that. Then stop looking into the mirror that will show a beautiful girl one day and an old hanging woman the next. Instead, look into the mirror that lamb showing you. The way of the world is that everybody wants other people only for their own benefit. But you can change this now, because by your merit you have won the opportunity to come to satsang. Now at this moment are you satisfied or dissatisfied? I am satisfied. In this now you are satisfied and in this now you can run about as you like. You can stay with those things that you are attached to, but do not forget this instant. Sit with the person with whom you are attached and speak to him about this and see what he speaks about to you. Just look into his eyes. That's all. I am lethargic and dissatisfied. This comes after three months of what seemed to be divine clarity. Can you shine the light on me and alleviate this painful condition? Tomorrow we will play music and you will have to give a song. Are you prepared or do you have to make some rehearsals? No, I will make some rehearsals. You must finish your thoughts. If you are hungry, you must eat. How did you get so lost in this musical program after saying what you just said? I wanted to see how easily you could get lost and distracted. I wanted to see how hungry you are. If you are hungry, you will first go to the restaurant and not play soccer with your friends. I simply tested you, but you got so lost. I could have given you some guidance, but you must not need it because now you are making rehearsals and two things cannot happen at the same time. I do want to be peaceful. Recently I was meditating at your home when somebody told me to leave. This really upset me. What is that meditation if you are disturbed so much right after it? I don't know. And who should know on your behalf? Find out. One king went to see a purr with sweets, cloth and food loaded on elephants. He also took his queen, and the ministers of the state followed on horses. This procession went to the thatch hut in the forest where the purr stayed. When he arrived he asked one of the purr's attendants to inform him that the king of the country would like to pay him respect. So the disciple went in and informed the saint. The saint told him to sit under the tree and unload all the gifts and he would be called later. The king waited for the call and sent the queen back to look after the children and the ministers to look after the kingdom. Night passed and he stayed under the tree. The next morning he asked again if it was time to see the saint, but was told that he would be called later, and so three days passed. All the sweets and fruits were rotting and a rain started. Again the king asked that the purr be told that he was waiting to see him. Now one week had passed, then fifteen days, and finally the purr said that he only has one more hour to wait. After one hour he asked if it was now possible to see him, but was told he had to wait another five minutes. After five minutes there still was no call from inside, but the message that he had to wait just one minute more. 
but he couldn't wait and ran inside to touch the feet of the saint. The saint asked him why he came in without permission now and not before, and told the king that it has taken twenty-nine days to erase his ego. You had the ego of a king and wanted to be received like one, but that will never happen. You had an ego, but now you came without one and fell down at my feet. There is no one to tell you no. Immediately upon arrival you could have come in, said the saint. So the king had stayed one month, but you have been here in luck now for so many months and your ego is still here. If someone tells you to go you are disturbed and so there is no use for meditation. If someone tells you to go, you should because there is no difference between coming and going. If you have been told to go outside the room, go and I will call you again. Many cases are like this. Apogee, is this deep discontentment that I feel another layer of mind? or is it something else? These in an empty house discontentment of course, is a layer in front of you so that you cannot see the clarity. You must remove all layers. Look at this card he shows him a painting of the gopi swimming naked in front of Krishna. They have removed all the layers between them and the self. This photo is the explanation. What is the layer between self and you? This layer you must remove. This dress that they are wearing is the layer between you and the self. In your case it is discontentment. Though, remove everything, remove all the thoughts. Denude yourself and you will see the self. This is the photo explaining it. Undress means not wearing any thought or concept, no ego, no past in your mind. Then it will be clean. I have also been feeling such a deep dissatisfaction lately. You are not satisfied because you are trying to measure the depth of the ocean with a yardstick. If you want to see the depth throw away all your yardsticks and dissolve into the depth of love. Throw away your yardsticks, your calculations and your expectations of what should and shouldn't happen. Throw away your concepts of what will happen. I have been so trapped by these depressions and disappointments since childhood. You have to make a strong decision to be free of these depressions and disappointments and then you can do it immediately. One very strong decision is enough. Decide where you want to go and what you want to obtain. Decide this here and now. What do you want and how far do you have to travel to get this? Though there is only a confusion about deciding, because once decided you have already traveled the whole distance. So take care of your decisions first. Decide to be free. I used to have so much anger and so many problems, but now I have a barred time remembering what they are. Oh you are a very good boy. This is a very good experience and I can appreciate it. Even in forgetfulness, anger, and sleep there is an awareness of the embrace. When you don't mind what state you are in, whether it be anger or arrogance, then your state is beyond these. These states will come in front of you, but you won't make any differentiation because you have found something else and have no time to think about the states. It is good to have crossed these hurdles such as anger. Anger raises your temperature and doesn't allow you eat or sleep peacefully. Some people are agitated with anger for their whole life. Anger is the dire enemy of peace. Being with you has removed all this anger and has given me so much peace. A glance of the Guru is compassion and removes the darkness of those who really want to be free. In the proximity of the teacher, it doesn't take time or practice. Instantly light is here like you touch the switch and the light is on. Only your honest and sincere dedication is needed. Can you tell me about expectations? To be happy you should not expect anything. Have no expectations about reality, just be reality. In sleep you are happy because you don't expect anything from anyone and you are left alone. When there are no expectations, this is happiness. Do you work with no expectations for the results? They are not in your hand. Someone else decides the result. Your dharma is to perform activities which are needed to your standard D and not to seek results. This will give you happiness. 
nobody can fulfill these expectations. Even when people are old, their expectations are still young. So don't get involved in any kind of expectations. I came here to face my demons, all the unresolved dark fears like the ones that Jesus had to confront in the desert. You think I have done this sin, this thought manifests as a ghost, as a demon. One man from New York came to me in Rishikish Klamenji to be followed incessantly by a woman demon. I saw that this demon was the guilt that he was carrying from killing his wife. By sending blessing as to his wife, by the purifying effects of the Ganga, and by spending time with me he became all right. His wife's soul was pacified and his demons of guilt were removed. Captor, Sadhana, there is no becoming being. There is no becoming being. It is simply a trick of the mind to think that you need to be established in self. You are that. To stay as you are wherever you are. Be there and you need to think. Be here and you need not think or use mind. This is peace, this is beauty. It is a joke to look for peace when really there is no escape from it. Search and practice is sheer ignorance, because only being stupid requires practice. The river makes no effort or practice to come to the ocean. He's thinking and making effort and you will get it. Don't complicate yourself with thought and practice, don't even practice non-practicing, just stay quiet. The traps of search practice and process. Everything you do is for stillness of mind, for happiness, and yet anything that you do disturbs your mind because doing is mind, it is a trap, whether it is a samadhi or bliss or whatever. Anything that you try to do conceals the diamond with the arrogance of doership. You have been doing for 35 million years so now simply keep quiet. The self is not seen during effort, nor is freedom the result of effort, it is already here now. You miss bliss because you search for the transient, but truth cannot be seen, it is the seer. Find that through which you would search, and you find that being is bliss. Trying and searching comes from all directions like mosquitoes to distract you from knowing self now. Make no effort for doing is mind. The brush that cleans the mind is the mind. Though it is better to just give the ego mind away because you will speak of cleaning the mind only when the mind is unclean. On three accounts searching and practice are foolishness and misleading and are only the clever mind postponing freedom. The first is that it creates a searcher. This reinforces the concept of an individual sufferer that is separate from freedom and that self is something other than that here and now. The second is the search. Searching is a distraction which causes postponement and endless needless suffering. Searching promotes religions, traditions and paths to be adhered to which serve only to trap you deeper in illusion. The truth is only here and now, but the search says it is tomorrow. The third account is that search creates an object to be found, and this can be the subtlest and most misleading trap. As you start a search you conceptualize what it is that you are searching for. Since the nature of maya of illusion, is that whatever you think, so it becomes. Whatever you think the goal to be you will attain it. There is no doubt about this, as you think so it becomes. So because of your search you will create and then attain that which you think you are searching for. Any heaven or high spiritual state that you long to attain you will attain after you conceptualize and create it. Then you will rest satisfied in this trap thinking that you have attained your heaven. This is pie in the sky freedom custom made for you out of your very own thought and conditioning of what the ultimate is. The truth is beyond thought concept and conditioning and this truth is what you are and only the truth is. So stop your search, simply be quiet, definitely do not stir a thought or make an effort, and the truth will reveal itself to itself. Practice takes ego, which reinforces subject-object relationships and all practice is through body-mind and senses which reinforces body-mind identification. Any identification is misidentification. 
Whatever you think you become so thinking of name and form is thinking of ego mind world senses illusion. You must think think of existence consciousness and bliss. Best is to simply know I am that Brahman. Direct practice is now itself, just being itself, not waiting for the next moment or the next thought or the next life to accomplish something. Direct practice is the bliss of turning your face to self, direct practice is existence. Prescribed sadhana requires and reinforces ego to become something special when really we are one. You cannot practice being, you are that. Have no pride, just simply be self. You have to strike at the root of ego, but not with sadhana which is by the ego for the ego. Offer this ego pride to your own silent peace self-being. Only going to the source of ego mind with inquiry will do, and once you ask this question do not come back. Stop thinking and surrender all name and form to silence. Mind is movement and this is a wave. Self is stillness and this is the ocean. To know yourself you must stop the movement for one moment and be quiet. The concept of I am the body is the concept of time. Leave the time concept behind by facing the source of all. All concepts are borders. Take on concepts and you take on borders. Another trap is thinking I am empty which is ego because it is only relative to the lack of ego mind that the concept of emptiness arises. Therefore there is no bliss in this emptiness. I must be dissolved for only emptiness to be. All is emptiness so how can there be process toward it? Most attempts to remove the wall serve only to fortify it. Though effort, method, doing and process are the deceiving mind. It is not even not doing so why waste time to clean the mind. Mind is only desire and you are only satyam home is here now. Questioner. Thank you for the love and light and for making yourself so available to all. You say that enlightenment is here and now. In the past I have tried very hard to wake up from the dream, but I have failed. Answer from Papaji. And this was the cause of your failure, you are trying. Find this enlightenment you are not to try for even one second. Trying is postponement which is time, this time is mind and mind is ego. That is what we understand here in luck now. Though right now do not desire for anything or try to do anything and tell me who you are. If you don't try you won't fail. Why not get it right now without doing anything? Do not make any effort, do not even think. Then you can see who you are. Is effort important on the path of enlightenment? He gives Papaji a lotus flower. What effort does a lotus flower need to blossom in the lake? The lotus does not touch the lake even though it lives in the lake. Only the legs touch the lake, not the head. Though make effort with the legs and no effort with the head, and you will see that you will not have any connection or relation with that in which you are living. This amsara is the lake. If you want to live like a lotus, live in the world with no relationship to it. Most people are drowned in the lake and are not called a lotus. They are the creepers growing from the bottom. This is a very special method for the few who want to live free of any relationship and yet be involved in relationships totally. This is the secret. If you are aware and if you need it, you can get it but not otherwise. I don't advise you to make any effort for peace. It is not the result of effort. The best way is to keep quiet and not to make any effort. Better to be like the gopi and make effort to forget him. You must be so much in love with your own self, that place, that you must make effort to get out of peace. This is something that you cannot understand. If you want to make effort, make effort to forget your effort of making effort. To go somewhere you need effort, but to go to your own self you don't need effort. Wanting to make effort is just putting it away for future where you will move to reach your own self. But just understand what you want and how far this something is from you. Then make a choice of what process it will take to reach him. It is inside of the inside nearer to you than your breath. Once you understand the effort will drop by itself. 
If you don't understand where your beloved is, you must make effort to reach him. When he is behind your retina, how will you look for him? You can't. The eyes will see some object and not the eyes themselves, because they don't need to be seen. That which is within is so near and dear is hiding in your own heart. If you don't make effort, it will reveal unto you itself. I am so glad that I have come to you because I have been searching for a long time. I have done vipassana meditation for 27 years, hatha yoga for 22 years. I can easily go into samadhi and have gone on pilgrimages to over 300 sites in over 40 countries. Still, though I have found some peace, I come for your help. You have done many practices and gone on many pilgrimages and have even found samadhi and peace, but going places and following methods will never pay you. Now you have exhausted yourself and have come here. Here you will not get any method to practice or any teaching. I will not give you a way to practice or a samadhi to enter. The highest way to enter your own self has not been visited by you. You have never questioned who the I is that has done the practices and who has gone on the pilgrimages. Here you have come to find out where this I comes from and this no teacher will tell you. Now give me a straight answer, where does the I rise from? Silence you can't say. When you are searching for the source of I, where is your mind? During this short period when you search for the source of I upon which practice or pilgrimage is your mind on. Where is the mind? Again you do not know. Then perhaps you can conclude that there is no mind. If it was there you could have seen it. There is no difference between mind and time and space. It was mind that was taking you to the spaces and places and it was the same mind which did all the practices and it was the mind that entered into samadhi. Has cheated you. This mind has cheated you for lifetimes. You must have developed some merit, this I accept, and this merit will pay you now. The ego has been hindering you by suggesting that you go to a shrine on the top of the Himalayas like Bhadri Kedar Gangitri, Yamnatri. Actually, the people who go there return with inflated ego more than what they went there with because they will just say that they have visited the temple there. They don't say what the god of that temple has given. The prasad that they get from those temples is not peace and happiness, but sweets poras and coconuts. They are happy with this when they return and distribute these things among many friends and family. There is no place in the world which will give you peace and no god which will give you enlightenment. You have been visiting so many temples, but never did you visit the temple in the cave of your own heart where I am taking you now. We started with trying to find the source of I, but when the previous I could not find it, I disappeared. Mind was finished, space was finished, time was also finished. Now for the third time without thinking of the places or persons or mind or time and staying in this without thought or effort, if you see anything, tell me what it could be. I do not know. Ah, you do not know. Who is the one who says that I don't know? I do not know his knowledge itself. What is this I which can even see that there is no knowing nothing emptiness? What is this I? I don't know. Again you do not know. I will tell you why you do not know. To know or see something you must have mind because I must be there. I see the handkerchief. Some observer must be there, some seer. You are the seer of the object that is seen. Now, who is the seer? Find out. When you see the object, you are observing and the object is observed, now find out who the observer is. This is my difficulty. Why is it difficult? You have observed 300 pilgrim places in 40 countries. Was this difficult? Maybe you had some physical difficulty, but with this you can ask who has been fatigued. The body is fatigued. Who is the one who observed the fatigue of the body? What must you do to see the seer? You can't because then you need two observers and the observer is one. If you can't see the observer what are you to do? The answer is very simple. The observer has not been seen or touched by anyone so far. 
the what are you to do? I will tell you that the observer cannot be body because this is seen. It can't be mind because it thinks, and you are the knower, the seer of what it thinks. Now you can't deny, and so you must accept that I am the observer. That you have not done. You have searched someone else, but not your own self, who has been sitting quietly patiently in peace. This doesn't take any time, because it is so near and dear. This is why you miss it, it is too near. Your eye can see the finger, but how can you see the eye? Only in a mirror. Yes, a mirror gives a reflection of the eye, but if you remove the mirror you remove the reflection. So remove the mirror of eye, which is a reflection itself and tell me, who reflects in the eye, to see other reflections. You must go behind the retina of the eye. How? As you get a message from somewhere before the retina to see through the retina, so the eye is a reflection and the retina of the observer. Again go back. All that you see comes from your own self. No I am the self, I am the self. Can you doubt this? I don't doubt but I do not know. But is a doubt. There is no difference between doubt and but. Hell, seventh hell, is the result of doubt. When Shiva walks up to you doubting whether or not he is Shankar is a straight elevator to the hell where you will stay until the next Kalpa, where after the Creator is born again, you will be given another chance to come to Satsang. This is the result of doubt. I feel that I am at the banks of the river and I have not jumped in. All the retreats and practices you have done have been done on the banks of the river. You are not to move anywhere, you are not to retreat anywhere. Why go on long retreats? Abiding in now is an instant retreat. You are not to abandon or renounce anything any time. Here you are wherever you are. What you have to do is to remove the notion that this is not real or prove that it is real. So don't move anywhere and don't renounce anything, just find out what is real and don't be attached to what is not real. All the meetings with teachers and visits to holy places are yet on the banks of the river. If you go to the Sakuru he will look at you and keep quiet, but if anyone else does this it won't work because they can't make any money this way. This best and closest Mecca is within you. It is here, you need not pray for it. You need not travel anywhere. Just stay quiet and see that your mind is not racing. If your mind is racing in the beginning bring it back. Again, it will go away and again bring it back. Slowly it will learn how to keep quiet, because otherwise it will just receive beatings. This is how you have to train your mind. It will not be happy today or tomorrow, but eventually he will be happy with whatever you give or don't give. So don't let this bull run and plunder other places and get beaten. Keep him home and he will learn how to keep quiet. All the methods are only intellectual, psychological, but not practical. None method is practical. In no method everything will happen. In this no method, you don't aspire or desire for anything. Let go of the search. It is neither effort, nor non-effort. It is neither thinking nor non-thinking. I just can't believe that it takes no effort. I always feel that the only way anything will happen is if I push my way into it. Once you stop your pushing, you will feel the power of the pull. Give up all your efforts because only this pull will move you within. Pushing in is not very effective. It is like a whirlpool that pulls you into itself and allows you to sink down. Throw away your oars and break the mast and just keep quiet. The rest will be done for you. I can't trust that this will happen if I do not do it. It is happening by itself. What do you think you are doing here? Just keep quiet and throw away everything that you have and it will be very smooth sailing. Your rowing and sailing has brought you into so many accidents. Throw away the oars and go along with this river. Give time for this heart to open. It will not open if you are making effort. Be quiet, turn your mind within, and let this heart speak and guide you. When there is no thought heart will open. Let it work, don't interfere by making effort. 
I feel this, I feel an energy, an opening, but it feels like it comes and goes in waves. There seems to be a block to the energy. Coming is the opening. The closing is your resistance to it in the form of your effort. You have been making effort for millions of years and suffering. Decide now what you want, effort and suffering or an open heart and happiness. It depends on you. There is no block, there is only now. There is nothing to be completed so make no intentions because practices to avoid blocks are blocks. The silence always is, always is complete beyond notion. I want to end it. Then end it now. Who is stopping you? It is alright don't worry and don't be disheartened. It is happening. I have been doing spiritual practices for over 20 years, but I just feel all the more lost in a new set of concepts. I am tired of all this. Can you show me my true nature? I am tired of struggling. For enlightenment you need not struggle. You only need to struggle to continually carry your concepts. For instance you may feel that the Son of God will give you peace and happiness, but this will not happen. This Son of God is a concept from the past. Forget all that you have read and all that you have heard. Your parents have told you that you belong to a certain religion and through the Christ of the religion you will be saved. This is all foolishness. Come out of all these stupid concepts of the old people, be brave and simply be quiet. Then all is over. In this quietness you will find peace, not by attending the masses for centuries. I have met so many monks in the monasteries and people in the churches and still they are hanging on to a two thousand year old cross. They have no peace of mind. Rest assured you have to find peace within yourself here in luck now. Instantly get rid of the old concepts of all the sons of gods. You can do it just don't think about it. The thinking is the burden. When you think everything will come. When you don't think you are with yourself. Do it now and whose love is in your mind, and who is the lover, and who is the beloved. Though no spiritual practice is needed to do this. You need practice when you find you are missing something. For instance, if you want to be an engineer, you must make practice and spend seven years in the college and get a master's of engineering degree. But here you do not need practice because it is already here. What you gain you will lose, but what is already here you have just to see. See who and what I am is. Don't find it through some method because the mind will cheat you for millions of years, and therefore do not listen to your mind, just keep quiet, and it will reveal itself to itself. You don't need the mind at all. Mind will cheat you and nobody is happy with the mind, not even kings and emperors. You are happy only when there is no mind. When you sleep there is no mind and you are happy. In the dream and waking state you are not happy because of all your relationships. When you sleep you are peaceful, but that is beyond all these states. Who is it beyond sleep who experiences the happiness of the sleep state? You are that. You need a practice to attain something that you don't have now. If you want to be a boxer you must learn boxing before entering the ring. Practice assumes an absence of something to be achieved at a later date. Because self is not separate from you, no practice is needed to attain it. Self is never absent. Practice is postponing something to a later date, to the future. Though you need no practice to know yourself. Give up this concept of practice and keep quiet. Simply keep quiet and you achieve everything. Everything comes to you when you ask for nothing. But when you run after things nothing can come to you. So simply keep quiet and see what happens. All the people have done enough practice and therapy in all the ashrams and centers in the world. But here we don't teach anything, we only tell you that you are that which is always free. How can you become free? How can you change from one thing to another? Self is already here, always changeless. But you think you are different, and this mental concept of a difference must be removed. Remove all the concepts from your mind and remove the memory which holds only past. 
There is no use to enter into the memory and aspire for anything. Just for one instant keep quiet and see who you are. When you want to sleep what practice do you need? No practice. For like this you should sleep. This is the prescription from Krishna. When the world around you is sleeping you keep awake. When they are awake, you keep asleep. What a prescription this is. When the universe is awake, you keep asleep. This means that you should sleep to all the things that the universe is desiring. Not desiring all these things is called sleep. When they sleep you keep awake means that you are awake to yourself, you are awake to the secret of truth, I am self. But they are sleeping to this secret. This is a very good prescription. The whole world is sleeping, but the wise man is awake. He knows that it is all a dream and that all the dreamers will repent later. Though when all these people are flowing downstream, you go upstream. It may be difficult and you may not have any companions who are swimming upstream in the Ganga, but you can do it. This universe is the current going downstream taking everybody with it. To go against this current of this ocean you need the might of the decision, I have to do it. This is quite enough. Thank you. I have been doing Kriya Yoga, and I have found some peace but... What do you mean some peace? You haven't found any peace. Peace doesn't come a little at a time. When it comes it comes in abundance and devours you making you peace itself. No individuality is left. Peace attacks you in full force. I just want to go deeper into the peace. There's no depth at all because in peace there is no division. When it comes it comes. When it doesn't it does not. You practiced intense sadhana before realization. Doesn't this mean that you must practice some sadhana to purify the mind? How can you purify the mind by practice? Look at the water in this glass. What is the impurity in it? Impurity is something foreign. Water is pure itself and some dust has entered it. Though, if you sieve it water will come out and the dust will stay. This is what I tell you to do. Originally you are pure like water and you have not to do anything to be pure. Some foreign element has entered the water and this is attachment. To sieve the attachment out of the self which is already free. You cannot become what you originally are. So you can't return to your original state by practice. You are the original state. Just don't touch what is foreign to it. The foreign entity is attached to something which is not eternal and permanent. Remove this and see what is left. It is what you have been always even before death. This is mine I belong to him, our attachments. These thoughts should not come in your way. Freedom is already here. If you win anything it means that it wasn't there before you got it and after getting it you will lose it because anything you get you will lose. So you have to be as you are always. Don't touch anything which is not eternal including your own mind body, senses which do not belong to you. If you don't touch things you will see that you have always been free. Freedom cannot be won by any practice. Practice only brings the transient, the material, not the eternal freedom. What was not there will not be there. What is here is always here. A firm belief in this is realization. Often you use Buddha as an example. As I understand he attained enlightenment through meditation. But you seem to imply that meditation is limited. Can you speak about this? According to Buddhists you must meditate. According to Buddhists not according to Buddha. The man passed away and then his students couldn't do it as he did. They couldn't renounce like he did. So they have to do what is easier for them to do. They don't sit quiet. He sat quiet because he rejected everything, even meditation. He simply sat quiet. His freedom wasn't the result of any meditation. Buddhists often don't think about what Buddha was all about, enlightenment. Most are so busy with their religious practices and paths that they forget to sit quiet as the Buddha did. So be wise and solve this question, who am I then you will know. No teacher can tell you this. 
Even Buddha kept quiet when Ananda asked him what he found under the Bodhi tree. This silence cannot be explained, but everywhere you go you will find a play of words of the teacher, not silence. Don't run away from the truth. Buddha didn't run away but stayed. Unless he got it he would not eat. The strong decision must be there. Don't run away. It is your problem I can't say more. If this isn't enough you can see me in your next life. After the master dies, the students don't follow the teaching. There was one teacher who had a lot of rats in his room who would pinch his legs during meditation and disturb him. Though for this reason he got a cat and then all the rats disappeared. He had two main disciples. One of them decided to keep two cats tied to his legs during meditation because he thought it would be twice as good as his master. But when the other students saw this a rivalry arose and he kept four cats tied to his arms and legs. Now, the number of the students was proportional to the number of cats and so they each started to keep more and more cats and their students started keeping cats but there was no meditation. So to remove the rats the master kept a cat. This is quite reasonable, but cats are not the source of enlightenment. This is what happens. Yesterday you guided someone to self so beautifully. Can you give me the same road map? I have thrown that map away. Can you then put a little current in the stream that my little leaf can follow? There is no map, and the little stream will just go wherever she will. Throw away all maps and just let it flow. Then where will you discharge into? You will discharge back home in the ocean. My home is here. If your home is truly here then, there cannot be any there. If you are there then you need a map to get back here back home. But if you are home, you do not need any maps. So just stay as you are and throw away all maps which have been misleading you. But I don't want to throw away all the maps. This would be like saying that all I have done has been a waste of time, but I do not feel this way. I feel that all I have done up to now has been beneficial. Yes up to now as you say. Now you have arrived at now and all is over. You are up to now. You are home. Throw away all your maps. You don't need a map in now because now is what you are. Now is home and you are here and you are that. Give up all notions of maps. Destroy all notions. They are absolutely not needed now that you are up to now. They is thus. That is all. Wherever you go and whatever you do you are free. This here has no corridors, frontiers, or demarcations you see. Go on expanding. This here is expanding, expansion itself. It is never ending and expands wherever you go. It is space, and this is what you are. You are not in space but you are space. This is all that you have to know. This is already yours. Aha! Uh -huh. I just caught myself looking for my glasses through my glasses. Though it is with freedom, people say I want to be free, I want to be enlightened. You are searching for that through that. You search for consciousness through consciousness. If you give up the search, you will see. It will come to you that you are wearing your glasses, you will know that you are consciousness. Don't search for anything and don't expect anything and you will find it. It is already here, and is not an object to be found, it is the subject searching for itself. When you stop searching you will know who am I. If you give up your notions and intentions, you will immediately understand. The only impediment, the only hindrances are your notions and concepts and intentions. You are searching for the glasses through the glasses searching for freedom through freedom. Freedom is not an object to be found but is the subject which is searching. I feel that I have one foot in the water and one foot out, one eye looking for the diamond and one on samsara. Your feet will be together. You can't have one foot in satsang and one foot across the street with the pigs. If one foot is with the pigs then they both are. If you are here then both your feet will be here and both eyes will be on the diamond. Under the ocean of samsara, there is a diamond die for it. The one who wears this diamond is in peace, love and beauty, 
but if you wear any other diamond you will be in fear. This diamond is very close to you very near. How near? I will tell you a story. There was one very special pickpocket who would never touch gold or money. He would only steal diamonds. He came to Delhi, which had a diamond market for centuries, with the moguls as the main customers. His pickpocket went to the shops posing as a customer until he found his victim. He found a man purchasing a very costly diamond worth about dollar fifty thousand. He followed him to the Delhi train station where they both purchased tickets to a deluxe first-class two-berth coupe bound for Calcutta. The diamond merchant, who was a clever man, suspected that he was being followed. He has seen this man at the diamond market, at the booking office and now in his coupe. Now as night falls he goes to change his clothes in the bathroom and is very careful to keep the diamond in a safe place. In the night when the merchant slept, the pickpocket searched through everything, including the clothes that the merchant was wearing and the bathroom, but he couldn't find anything. Finally, the next morning Howard Junction came and both of them stepped out of the train. The pickpocket introduced himself to the merchant and said, I am a pickpocket who picks up only diamonds. It is below my dignity to touch gold. I saw you purchase a diamond yesterday and in the night I searched everywhere for it. Even in your shoes and your underclothes. But I didn't find it anywhere. So will you tell me where you kept the diamond? I saw a lot of money your checkbook and your gold watch but I didn't touch anything. The merchant replied I smelled that you were a clever man but I am also very shrewd. So when you went to change your clothes last night, I put the diamond into your coat pocket. I knew that you would not search your pockets, but only search my pockets. Then this morning when you went to use the bathroom, I took the diamond out again, and here it is. So what this story tells is that you will always look to other places. Everybody has the diamond, but we search the pocket of others. We go from ashram to ashram, from swami to swami, from satsang to satsang laughs, but never will you get it because it is in your own pocket. God himself has kept the diamond in each heart, and yet we search for it elsewhere. The diamond is here. If you do not think or make effort, you will have it. In between these two conditions of not thinking and making no effort is a diamond. Everywhere else you will find commercial business. Yoga teachers and other teachers will charge you money, but here it is all free because we are not commercial. The diamond I speak of cannot be sold. You can have it in an instant, you can do it. You remind me of the musk deer who wanders through the forest looking for where the smell of musk is coming from, not knowing that the musk is in his own navel. You have smelled freedom and have come here to find it like so many have, and they are all like musk deer. The musk is within you. Freedom is within you. Stop your searching, freedom is within. Put yourself in that between past and future. The mind has been hanging you for lifetimes. Now hang the mind between past and future and see what happens. Don't touch your mind to any object and see who you are. Keeping quiet is much easier now and more blissful, but still I feel there is a layer separating me from myself. Don't look here or there for anything and you will find that the goal is already arrived. This layer is a desire and you will be happy. The only thing you must do to be happy is to stop having and holding desires because this will give you trouble. If you do get it, you will lose it and then you will be troubled. Just keep quiet and don't hold any desire. It seems that one develops detachment and relaxation after years of spiritual practice. Is there a process or progress before realization? It is beyond attachments and detachments. When one detaches from that which he is attached to he gets attached to something else. Though detachment needs attachment to something else and therefore it is not detachment. Attachment depends on detachment and detachment depends on attachment. The essence is beyond all notions and is untouched by imagination and there is no progress or process in it. Progress is to be given some method from the past by somebody. 
any method that he has followed gets dumped on you and then you start practicing. So whatever method you start you have in your mind what you want to attain. This attainment is per planned attainment that you plan to get after a number of years of practice. This planning is your own thought creation. Actually, there is no process because it is already here. If it is not already here and you get it through some method, you will lose it. Any gain is lost some day or another. But if it is not attained, you will not lose it because it is here and always will be here. You say no book or practice is necessary, but you yourself have read many books and have done thousands of hours of practice in this lifetime. Why then do you give this advice? Because I was just a boy of seven or eight and some experience came and revealed itself. I didn't work for it or do any practice, it just revealed itself. No one could explain this to me and it was not described in any book either. Later on I tried to read the books written by many saints including the Gita, Bhagavadam, the Upanishads and even the Vedas but I didn't see anything that tallies with my own abidance. I found that nobody ever spoke of that which I am is. For this reason I read many books and came in contact with many gurus from north to south. But everything that they spoke about was all in the books and they followed this like sheep running one behind the other. No one that I saw had realized the truth and nobody spoke about it. Therefore I rejected all the teachings, all the books and all the statements that anybody so far has made about that. Then I met my master. Now when I speak it is not the object of speech that I am speaking about. Some people catch it and they cannot explain what has happened. For sixty years I have asked people to describe it but they cannot. Because the intellect and mind which is the basis of explanation does not accompany you. You are quite alone. There is no mind or intellect, you are just alone. It can never be explained though many people say they got it. They don't know what they got but they know they got it. It is not even an experience because experience depends on the mind to create an experiencer, an object of experience, and their connection which is the experience, all of which can be explained. But what is beyond the mind cannot be explained. Even the book of knowledge, the Vedas, say neti neti after four Vedas. This book, written by Vyasa 25,000 years ago, is very honest to speak that it is not that which they could write. The best explanation is neti neti, not this, not this, I do not know. You said I can drop my search. If there was no search then why wouldn't all the lazy people become enlightened? When I say drop the search, it means the search that you have carried all of your life and in many of the previous incarnations. The search must end because you must realize that you can't search for it because you have not lost it. So those who go to satsang will realize that it is not by searching that they will be free. For them it is advised to give up the search. Lazy people are also searching for things, but not for the self. Sincere seekers search from place to place for where to truth is available. But when you know that you are not to search and you know I am the here and now, you don't need to be a sincere seeker, but you need a teacher. The seeker needs a teacher to tell him that it is not by laziness nor by activity that it is found. Only know who you are. To so understand I am already that. You can understand this but since birth you have been an extraordinary being. Is it really possible for an ordinary person like me to be free? What should I do to understand this and what should I not do? It is neither doing anything nor not doing anything. So sadhana is just a waste of time. Sadhana can be a complete waste of time or if you are with the best people, it can be the best use of time. Then you are spending time where there is no time. I have had such a proud mind, but in the last week you have exposed all the parasitic tendencies of pride in the mind. Going through this experience has been like going through an illness, and I am very thankful for this. Apogee is full realization of process or is the idea of process just a form of postponement? Your essence cannot be achieved by any process. This idea of process is just to postpone the precious present time to be realized. 
Everybody wants to make a process and postpone. They go to pilgrimage places, they become pilgrims in the expectation of getting peace, but they don't get it. They go to temples, but they don't get peace. They make charities and build temples, bridges and wells, but they do not get peace. All of these activities which they have done will pay them a reward in the heaven after death, it will not go to waste. But as he strains in the high altitudes of the Himalayas on his pilgrimage, he will not find peace, even if he is at the top of Everest at 29,000 feet. The people who went there did not find peace, but came back exhausted. Peace is not found anywhere, neither down in the ocean, nor up in the skies. You will spend many ages looking for peace until you will know how easily peace is available in no process. Simply attend a satsang once or twice, and you may be enlightened in this life, in this year, this hour now. If you make up your mind that you will be free in this lifetime, you will find that it is fiction that there is a mind. This mind is postponement. There must be mind where there is postponement and there has been postponement for generations. Someone here where there will make up their mind to cease the postponement and do it at any cost. When this strength comes it reveals itself, not through a process and with none of your effort involved. Some call it grace, win this grace by being very beautiful inside. Outside beauty will not give you peace. You have seen the skin beauty of the outside on the Miss Universe pageant two days ago. This beauty fades in a few years. So first think of the inner beauty. When you see your inner beauty you do not need judgment, and you do not need to compete. People will be drawn to you by this inner beauty. This Maharshi of Turavanamalai did not get a title, but he is the most beautiful person to whom all the beauties were attracted. The queens came to him and all the diamonds and jewelry and everything was offered to him, but he didn't even look at it. I was there when Queen Sophie of Spain came. He approached the manager of the ashram to introduce her to the Maharshi. Then gold jewelry and diamonds and baskets of fruit were carried into the Maharshi. The manager Mahar, she's own brother wanted him to have a look at the presents and to bless the queen for the thousands of dollars worth of things that she brought but he didn't look at her or her things. I was watching this. If there is so much money and a queen walks in front of you, will you not look? Everybody would look at her and the money, and at least give a word of thanks, but he was unmoved like a mountain. Then this Strigananda Swami told the queen that he was blessing her. But she didn't know this Indian blessing, not moving, not looking, the eyes open but not seeing her. This is true beauty. Papaji, please show me the way to this beauty, to ultimate freedom. Who told you that there is a way to freedom? Where did you get this map? There is no way. There is no way to freedom. We means that you start from somewhere and arrive to somewhere else, and that there is a distance to your destination, but you don't need to go anywhere else. Creation of distance is the deception of the mind. So forget about any way and any freedom also. If you do this stay wherever you are. You are not to run anywhere else. Somehow you must get rid of this concept of the mind. Days you are wherever you are. If you do this instantly, you will know that you are what you have searched for for millions of years. There is no search because search is only for the lost. But when nothing is lost there is no meaning to searching for an object. You simply keep quiet. Don't stir a thought from the mind then you will know who you really are. Should I abide as the pure I and have faith that purity will come? Don't waste your time in the purity of mind because mind cannot be pure. Even the desire to be pure is the trick of the mind. You will spend many lives purifying the mind, but it will never be pure. Look at the story of Vishwamitra and Manaka. After purifying his mind for 10,000 years, he still falls for her instantly. It is better to just allow your desires to arise and not let them touch you. Let them arise and let them be fulfilled. You simply stay quiet. Don't try to become anything, don't go anywhere and don't do anything and don't undo anything. 
Find the source of these concepts and stay there. This is bliss nothing else. This knowledge is bliss. The trap of deceitful gurus. This is the Kali Yuga, even Rakshashas will incarnate as teachers to mislead you. Those who must be destroyed by these demons will be. You must test your guru. Test the guru by looking at the guru's lineage, it is very important. Test the guru by the teaching, without inquiry there is no teaching. Chun, every teacher who does not teach vichar. Directly looking at your own face is the only teaching. Preachers only speak of darkness, the understanding of darkness, and the removal of it. But there is no darkness, and no understanding, there is only light. If the Kiru says, I am enlightened, it means the ego is enlightened so stay away. Western teachers who say this are preachers and only write books to load more garbage on seekers, and more money in their pockets. They will attract so many students, but in Kali Yuga, it is the falsehood which will draw the crowds. The truth and the true gurus will be neglected. If there is a teacher and a student for more than one second then both of them go to Avachi Hell. I stayed with some people who said they were spiritual teachers, but I was abused by them and now my mind stays with them. Why go to people that you don't know when you have sat saying here? This pain you have now is the result of meeting stupid people. Stupid people go to stupid people and this is the result. One of them once claimed to be your disciple. How is it possible that people get corrupt and distracted even after strong awakenings? I don't think people will get corrupt and distracted. One who is awake will not be distracted, because all the distraction and corruption is from the mind only. If distraction arises surrender is the only cure for this. When you don't surrender and you think that you are the doer then this is corruption. Surrender to the higher consciousness to the self itself, and no corruption will be able to come near. When you believe in that because you have had the experience I am that, then this doubt which is the I thought will not appear. Doubt appears only from mind and mind is only the past, and past will not affect you in this present moment. I am feeling a lot of grief and anger in my heart since coming to you because now I see more clearly how I have been led astray in the past. Can you help me overcome this? Why are you sad? You must feel happy. You must be happy when you get rid of someone who has no respect for his own teacher. He doesn't say the name of his teacher. Here we honor the lineage. My teacher is sitting on my head, and we just celebrated his Kuru Purnima. One who cannot love his own teacher is not fit to be with because that person is a rogue, a scoundrel. And he is all the worse if he abuses his own teacher. So consider yourself lucky. My master always prayed to his teacher. It may be a man or a rock, it has nothing to do with anything. He worshipped this rock, this mountain, Aaron Achala. He was not shy to prostrate before him. To those who questioned he replied, A body is a corpse and when it dies nobody will touch it, but yet you always worship and praise it. I worship my teacher, but you will see that my teacher stands forever. It is a beacon of light. Bodies will last 100 years maximum, but my master is already 2 billion years old, and is the center of the world. So you should not be sad. You really should be happy. You have asked many people to go and teach. Are these people messengers or masters in their own right? Can you explain this? They are messengers. They are giving this message throughout the world of what is happening in luck now, so that the whole world is happy. They are just messengers, but with some of them ego crops up and so they claim to masters. They will go to a hell along with those who follow them. Messengers are messengers, but is it right when they are given something to give and share, that they say it is from themselves? Why not be honest? They should say, I got this from this place, and so you can go there if you want the same thing. But ego is very strong, and that is why they say you have to serve 12 years so your ego is removed. The person who hurt you so deeply stayed with me for 25 days. 
In these twenty-five days he stayed in tourist bungalow and came to me for one hour in the morning. This means he stayed twenty-five hours. And you can see the result of this twenty-five hours. He says he has surpassed his teacher. Another one stayed just twelve days and declared himself the master of masters. But this freedom is a prasad from the teacher. He will touch your head and then he will be satisfied with you. When he is satisfied he will hand over this precious diamond. Though all this is arrogance of the person. Ignorance and ego play this part. All the teachers of the world have this ego of being a teacher. The teacher must be so humble. He must be like a servant to serve the people so that they become happy. If the teacher is arrogant what can he or she teach to others? Practically every teacher in India and the West are arrogant commercial teachers. Everything is becoming commercial. You have to be careful about the messengers. When India sends out ambassadors they cannot say, I am the Prime Minister. Ambassadors are ambassadors and must get instructions and consultations of the Prime Minister. But if they behave like the Prime Minister, they are called back. There seems to be cases of where people have a mistaken conviction that they have attained the ultimate truth. Many saints, sages and teachers think they have attained ultimate truth. Is it possible that someone is established in a state of ultimate truth without knowing it? This of course holds true for everyone. Everybody, every being is established in the ultimate truth and are aware of the ultimate awareness, but they do not know. They do not know it because when they try to know, this is done through the mind. To know that you are an ultimately realized person you must use the mind. But to use the mind in this way means that you have a doubt about it. Mind itself is a doubt. Mind is the doubt. Another name for mind is doubt. When there is no doubt there is no mind, and when there is no mind there is no doubt. Awareness is beyond mind, much beyond it. Mind gives you doubts, fears and worry and keeps you unaware of that beyond the mind. The role of mind in the play is to keep the person in the dark in the past. Where there is no mind there is no time or past. This is the ultimate truth. Merely reading the book is not sufficient. If possible find a person who is still in his physical form and clear your doubts with him while he's still available. But most of the teachers are preachers who teach only dogma and have no teaching. This preaching is heard mostly in the West. These preachers who are often Indians have mushroomed in the States making money. They are just business people and they know not what to teach. None of these teachers and preachers are the Satguru. The Satguru has no teaching or method to give you. He directly reveals within your own self and doesn't prescribe any method to you. How can I regain this innocence with which I started the spiritual journey before I was betrayed by so many teachers? You are born in the world to see that you are free of this cycle of births and deaths. This is your number one purpose. You are very careful at the market not to buy anything that is not good. But the only thing that you bargain with is a few dollars or francs. So why aren't you careful when your life is at risk? How can you risk your life? You must test your teacher first of all. Find out what the lineage is. Go back several generations. Find out who his teacher is. You have to be careful. In India to find a mate for your child you go back seven generations of the mother and of the father. So don't sell your life just because you see the handsome teaching of a person. If you want good words then the professors in the universities can express it better than the sages and the saints. You can't sell your soul to unsafe hands and so you have every right to test the teacher. Some ashrams even kill you if you try to speak about the teacher like the one in Fraunfell, Switzerland. I have been there and have seen this. Don't be lost with the beautiful sweet words of the teacher. If your heart accepts him then you know. Don't be fooled by a big beautiful ashram. The teachings you are not to get from the cement or the bricks or the iron rods. The teachers have always taught from beneath a tree. What can you get from walls? 
your heart will accept the teacher. Not you, not your ego, not your mind, not your consciousness. Sit with the person. If your heart is dedicated to a person only then, he is your teacher. The teacher doesn't ask anything from the student. He only sees that you are in peace and beauty and love. The price he gets from you is seeing you happy. That is all. There is no price, no donation. I give you this advice. You take care. Why do some teachers teach and display so many tricks? Don't get involved with them. The true teacher is one who doesn't allow you to do anything, but simply tells you to be quiet. Then everything of the world will be presented to you. The true teacher has few requirements, just a little food to maintain his body in which he helps everybody. I want to go visit a famous guru near Bangalore. You can go if you really want, but like going to a restaurant where you pick what you eat, choose carefully what you want to take away from there. What I want is to reach God. You don't need the help of anyone to reach God. Don't be fooled by famous gurus who are not easily seen and who charge money. Be wise and smell the place and see if it will give you peace. God brings you to the place where you get what you want. You want freedom, this is why you are here. As I try to integrate your teachings into my workshops in the West I often do not find success. To teach meditation is not so easy because you must find your own self first. If you have not found yourself and try to teach meditation, you are just deceiving people. Telling what you don't know yourself is only cheating others, it is deception and you would be better to avoid this. Though next time when you go to the West, tell people what you have gained from satsang. That's all. But I want to give satsang. Okay, you can start with me. Just practice looking into my eyes. Oh, you are very good. Now my ego is gone. Now go to the States and look into the eyes of girls and fax me the results. One other man who asked me this same question is doing this job very well. Daily he transforms two to three girls. I've been working so hard on cleaning the shoes of those who come to satsang just as you have told me. I told you to do this in order to remove your ego, but it hasn't worked. You are proud of this service, which was given to remove your ego. Go to any temple and you will see the Indians cleaning the temple. They clean it and forget about it. They don't tell people that they swept the floor of the temple as you are saying. Even the women in their saras clean the temple. This doesn't work on western people, only on Indians so I have given you a wrong prescription. I will tell you something next time. Papaiji in satsang a few days ago my father's image occurred within me. I could see that he was happy that I was here. He died when I was eleven which caused a deep part of me to shut down. Search for a new father figure led me to a swami near Bombay, but he betrayed my trust. First of all, your father has died so why keep a man who is no longer in the world in your heart to disturb you? A man who is born must die, this is his nature. So don't keep him in your heart, everybody must die. You are not a graveyard where the dead are kept. Don't be a graveyard which means don't remember the past. Forget about your father. Your true father, your eternal father is the one who will give you peace and happiness. Your eternal father is your own self. It is of no use running here and there. What could this Swami give you when he himself did not arrive at that state where he could forget others? Once in Paris I stayed with a friend named Annapurna. He was a devotee of this Swami and organized his satsangs in Europe. He wanted to ask some questions, so at dinner she came down dressed as a Swami and asked some very good questions. I won't tell you about the questions, because they will trouble you because some people stay with teachers who have no right to call themselves teachers. They have stolen things from the books or have not stayed with someone who is a master. If there is a master you must stay with him all the life until he sheds his mortal coil. Then if he picks you up, go and teach the world. But you must stay with him for twelve years. It is better not to teach and spoil the life of the students. 
it is better to stay quiet, go to the Himalayas. Teaching is very important, but as long as your ego is there what can you teach? Egotistical teaching will trouble you all the more. This teacher who steals the teachings will go straight to hell number 8 along with his students. Seven hells are defined, but this hell is beyond conception. This hell puts people into the fire each moment and each moment they survive and this will continue for another 12,000 years. So I gave the answers to this girl. She was very happy and said that she could never get the answers before and now had gotten them over the dinner table. Though she wanted to quit working for the Swami I told her she could continue since it was her work. But her heart was so clear and so she quit. She wanted to come with me, but I was going to Caracas. So instead, she opened up a center in southern France to share what she got with people. So now you have to find out where the eternal father of all beings is. Do it in just one instant, do it now, not in years and years that you have spent with teachers. Then just one instant. This instant is not in the time, it is out of time. Saint Kabir says, one instant, one half the instant, one half of the half of the instant, if you are with a real Sakuru you will no longer have to return to the ocean of Samsara. All the teachers who say you must postpone it are butchers, not teachers. You don't need to spend any time here because you have no distance to go. To go from New York to Lucknow you need to know the distance and take a plane, train or a surface road, whatever is needed. But if you know that it is no distance from you, that it is deep within and nearer than the breath, in between two breaths, then how much time do you need? No time. Time is mind. Mind means postponement. And now there is no mind. Look right into now. That is what the teacher says. That is what Kabir and some of the ancient teachers have said. Turn your face toward the Eternal Father and say, O oh Father, I want to see you, have grace upon me, I cannot live without you, this is the time which I should give you. Why is it that when the Guru leaves his body it causes so much strife and separation between his disciples? Some go to other teachers, some become teachers themselves, some become Babas and Mass, and usually they all speak badly of each other. Can you talk about this? Most of Gurus are businessmen. They are not enlightened, and they cannot enlighten any other. In all of India, I do not know of a single Guru who has an ashram and is enlightened. Therefore, it is of no use to stay with them. You yourself have stayed in many ashrams. Have you seen anyone who has been benefited? No, not really. After the Guru leaves the body who will declare when the vision is realized. Those who have not lived with a perfect saint will not realize. They will live in a game of imperfections because they have been misled by some Guru and will carry on this misleading all their lives. The vine which gives sour fruit spreads quickly, but the one which gives sweet fruit has a short life. The truth will be held by the honest, and the honest will not be followed. Only the dishonest will be followed. Traps of religions, traditions and ashrams. Religions, traditions and ashrams often start good but turn bad when they fall in the hands of those who want gain and fame. Enlightenment is not the product of these religions. As you can see throughout history the work of religions is fear and death, fear of hell and death to the infidels. Take the hell out of religion and it will not be a religion. Religion is fear and fake. Fear is the very foundation of religion. Religion is a hindrance to freedom and has even banned I am free. So walk out of them because you are. You are complete here and now. You do not need the sheep's fold. You do not need any religion, you are always free. Are there some traditional things that must be done in order to proceed on the inner path? On the inward path there is no tradition. You need no traditions at all. Outer traditions are outward. The Rudraksha beads have nothing to do with it, though they help with physical problems and may give you a tranquil mind. 
You can wear the same cloth that others do, but tradition is outside only physical and mental. Inside you are simply to sit quiet and not allow your mind to touch the outside. Sit for just one second like this and you have fulfilled the purpose of your life. Just don't let your mind touch any tradition and you will be finished with samsara. I had a dream where a panther with green eyes ate me, except I was in the form of a sheep. I realized it was self-dissolving my sheep-like mentality. Everybody in the world is a sheep who is always looking for a shepherd. This shepherd usually is the founder of some religion. You are a Catholic priest so you know this. The shepherds don't allow the sheep to go away from the herd and so the sheep stay as sheep. But some have escaped the shepherd and the sheep herding dogs, the priests, and are no longer controlled. There have been some good saints in these traditions who spoke of the truth and their different scriptures have some good sayings, but for the most part I have seen very little benefit from them even though I have traveled all over the world for decades looking for it. I am glad you've come here and crossed over the religious barriers. You have come here as an independent person. You need independent views and understanding to know yourself. Don't depend on the past or anything you have heard or read in the past because the truth is now. Yet free yourself now and then you can understand what the saints have said and written. Can one find the truth through any religion? Yes, one can find final truth in any religion, but they must be ardent, true and honest to really love God. It is not about going to church or to a temple. You will find God there but only within. Religion doesn't have much to do with the life of men except for giving fears. Though if you live without religion at least you won't have any fear. Live independently, it is better for you. The God of religions is a projection of security to take care of your projected fears, desires and possessions. It seems that spiritual communities are filled with hierarchy, formality and control. This seems to contradict what freedom is. Higher, archy and power struggles seem especially common around spiritual masters. You have had a taste of freedom, but then you started censoring other people and judging what is good behavior and what is bad. Stay with the experience of freedom and don't look at the inadequate behavior of others or you will lose your chance. Don't push freedom into the background by getting involved in what others do or don't do. Let them do whatever they want, and whatever is in their karma to do. Who are you to check them? How long will you spend finding faults with them? 100 years. People will always have faulty behavior, and you will have to keep being born over and over just to judge them, there will be no end of it. It is far better to take care of yourself and to fulfill your purpose. You have come for a definite purpose. Don't look here and there. Just sit quiet. You are like the man who found a diamond and tied it around the neck of his donkey and kept working hard carrying bricks. This foolishness happens to everybody until they come to satsang and are praised of the fact that they are a valuable diamond. This diamond had been shown to you but again you tied it around the donkey of your mind. This will never give happiness. Mind your own business and let others do what they are destined to do. You can't put your finger in this process. It belongs to someone very intelligent who knows how to look after the people. Take care of yourself. If you ever have the experience of self again forget everything. Even the kings have rejected the kingdoms and have gone to the forest quite satisfied. Your ultimate desire must be freedom whether you are with a saint or not. Now you have become lost because you are in the company of people who do not speak of freedom. Ashrams do some good things, but most of them are just interested in the social relations of their guru brothers and sisters, they don't sit quiet. I don't recommend that anybody waste their time with useless activities and not sit quietly. Don't just create social relationships with people all over the world, sit quiet. You have to see whether or not your mind is peaceful in your ashram situation. It doesn't pay to just socialize or to just gossip about other people or to just read books. Sitting quiet is most essential. 
Don't waste your time by not doing this. Hiru useful sadhana and dropping practices. There is no sadhana better than just staying as peace. If you must do any practice then do vikshar. Joy is also a good sadhana because it destroys mind, so always be happy. Always think of it and be happy. Spend the rest of your life knowing you are existence consciousness bliss. Thumb practice is better than getting lost in samsara and is good in that it sometimes fatigues the mind, but typical sadhana is usually important only for the ego. All sadhana is projected by ego so it is on a sandy foundation. This ego projection is samsara so search only for the seeker. I is ego so when this meditates there are no good results. Choice of practice depends on the choice of results. Brahman has no attributes and is beyond mind so no practice will take you to that, it is self-revealing. Ramana says simply keep quiet for it is here and now. This is the nearest practice because Brahman is your very nature. Though I do not prescribe practices, some of them are prescribed in the scriptures as being of benefit. Since you have some questions regarding them, I will tell you about them, but they will not necessarily give you freedom, and will seduce most people into the trap of process. First know who you are then do sadhana if you wish. Dropping practice. How to stay more stable in self. Does formal practice help? Simply witness the circumstances, don't be touched by them. Don't receive them. Simply witness and keep separate from the circumstances. I've been practicing purification techniques given to me by Tibetan Buddhists, but you're helping me be the practice, not just do a practice. Yes, you must be the practice. I don't tell you to practice anything but to get into the practice. This is very hard to understand for those who are not serious, for those who want to continue in samsara. Even if you tell them, they will not be able to see that this is all illusion. It is as if they are in a desert and believe that they see a river which will quench their thirst. So they run after it but it just continues to shift farther away. Everybody, six billion people, are running after their desires wanting to have a nice swim in the cool waters of the mirage. Above them is the hot sun on their heads, and below is the hot sands under their feet, and still they run toward it. Though this is your own creation, it is illusion, there is no river. But when somebody tells you this you do not believe them. Only if you believe that it is a mirage. Buddha rejected it, and still 2006, hundred years later he gives us peace because he rejected everything and won everything. Like this you must sacrifice all things that trouble you. You gave me the name Sadhana one year ago. Can you tell me what it should mean to me now? Sadhana means practice. Any kind of practice, dancing, singing, running, swimming. All of them need practice. Keeping quiet also means Sadhana, and this is the meaning for you, because keeping quiet is the best Sadhana for anything that you want to do. Sadhana has one more meaning that few know keep quiet, and I will tell you. I've let go and I am waiting to continue my meditations. What kind of letting go is this? Why do you want to continue your meditations? Because it feels good. You have let it all go, even your meditations and the meditator. Even let go of the desire for meditations and the desire for emptiness. I trust that my mind and desires will disappear. You have to disappear. So many people go off to some cave to do their sadhana, but their minds follow right with them and their practices increase their bondage. If you disappear where will mind be? I met one such man as I was on my way to Badri. It was a very rainy night, and so I asked a Baba in a small hut if I could sleep in his hut for the night. He said yes and so I gave him some money to buy vegetables and dal, and we ate at ten o'clock at the banks of the Ganga. Then I saw a hut raised above the Ganga and offered to sleep there, but he insisted that I sleep in his hut which he thought would be more comfortable. He had been living here for thirty-six years, supported by a man who sent him twenty rupees a month. 
His bed was made out of sand and covered with burlap cloth, and of course, so was his pillow. You could really see his renunciation of the world. I thought it was better not to have such a hard pillow, and when I removed the pillow there was a magazine of sexy film fare with nude photos of women. Why live on the path to Badri Narayan if this is what you are keeping in your mind? What is the use of his meditation? Better to keep yourself in the house and don't hear it, be it. Surrender to his will. What comes, comes by his will. What goes, goes by his will. You have spoken about several ways through which self can be realized, like self-inquiry, devotion, service, surrender. You have left out many other ways which I speak in satsang. For instance, painting. Nature becomes one with the paints. I have seen some good painters in Germany and France, and when I asked them what they were going to paint, they said that a good painter doesn't know what he's going to paint. One man even said, "I don't think only the brush is working." Dancing is also a way to realize the self. Tukaram danced and found that God would come. He was from Maharashtra, and when he was about to die, the chariot from heaven came down to get him because nobody is dancing in heaven. The chariot was waiting, and he said to his wife and friends to come, but they all made excuses, and so he flew away and never came back. He was a devotee of Krishna and would sing and dance, but his wife would get angry at him for not working. Once spring season was well underway, and Tukaram had not yet sown his fields. But all the other crops of his neighbors were one meter high. The one day she took up some sugar cane and beat him in the head with it, saying, "This will not do. You have to work. You have to plow. You have to till the soil." Everybody is laughing at you. He didn't care, and instead, every morning would go to the quiet side of the mountain. But she was a good wife and would find him in time to serve him his lunch and then eat lunch herself. Once on the way to find him, a thorn went into her foot, and so she couldn't walk to find Tukaram. A young, beautiful boy appeared and offered to dress the wound, but she said, "No, no, you go away to my husband. You have spoiled him, and now you are going to spoil me. I am not going to listen, and you cannot dress my foot. No, mother, let me do something for you. You can't walk otherwise." Though she agreed, and he dressed the wound with the yellow cloth that he always keeps on his shoulder. When he finished, she told him to go away and not to follow her. When she found her husband, she told him the story. This man who has spoiled you has come to me, but I kicked him away and told him not to touch me because he had already spoiled one member of my family. You are such a good lady that you have seen God with your eyes earlier than I have. He exclaimed. Few days later, a cyclone came and destroyed all the crops. But at this point, he sowed his fields, and he was the only one with a crop that year. This is how God will help you if you are serious and sincere. Sculpture is another way to realize the self, and also music. Many saints have found themselves and become free just by singing, like Marabai and Kabir. This is why we have a little of everything in satsang. We speak about who am I, but when you get bored, we have music. Laugh so there are many ways, but you have to be sincere. I want to be a better musician and artist, and I want to know silence. When you play the flute, you don't think, and when you don't think, you play the flute. Any painter, dancer, musician is silent at that time. The dancer is not acting; he is not moving. He is absolutely immobile, with no mobility at all. Then he's the perfect dancer. You won't understand this unless you are near an expert. I have read of all of the hours of practice that you have done, and I don't think I can do it. Enlightenment feels so far away. Practice is needed when you have not come across any teacher. I had been practicing on my own accord since early childhood, and I continued because I did not find any guru in Pakistan. So simply, it came into my mind to meditate due to some previous samskaras. I also had a vision of Buddha, and like Buddha, I sat in meditation and fell in love with him. He was very beautiful. I wouldn't tell anyone in my class or in my house what I was doing, and I myself didn't know why I was doing it. 
Simply I wanted to be as Buddha was because he was so beautiful, and for this reason I started to meditate, not for any definite purpose. Day or night, I could not forget him, and as best as I could I was always meditating. This is how my practice started, I was doing it for fun only. It came to me from birth. But luckily I've seen the master. Perhaps very few people can meet such a master who showed me the no way of keeping quiet. He used to say only keep quiet. This was his only teaching, and this is what I speak to you. He himself was quiet, and therefore I say to you keep quiet. After intense meditation gods and goddesses visited you. Why? These gods have been visiting me because a man who is enlightened is superior to God. Gods can live for thousands of years, but eventually they will fall back down here, but the enlightened one is free of everything. The gods have unfulfilled desires like being with their goddesses. This is why gods and goddesses are always together. Therefore to remove their attachments they come to see people who are realized. I used to have a meditation room with only one mat, where no one else was allowed to enter. I would return from my office at 5 o'clock, have a bath, hang my clothes outside and enter the room wearing only a loincloth as the mahair she wore. I would not speak to my family, but keep quiet alone in my room. One day before my usual wake-up time of 2 am I heard some voices outside, and so I went to look thinking that perhaps some relatives had come from the Punjab, and their train from Peshawar had been late. When I opened the door I saw Ram, Sita, Lakshman and Hanuman standing there. I thought I was dreaming but I wasn't. So I quickly went into my wife's room and woke her up saying that they had arrived and to please bring them some fruits. She came to where they were but couldn't see them and so she went angrily back to bed. Rama said, Hanuman has told us that there was a Krishna back to here and so we have come for your darshan. It was too much for me. Garuda was there as well and eventually they all left on him as I watched. That day, I did not chant the mantra or meditate for the first time in years. I kept standing there until my wife told me to go to the office. I had spent about six hours looking at them. I can still see them and read the palms of their hands as they held them up in blessing. That weekend I went to the Maharshi and told him what had happened. In Tamil he told me it was very good. Last him, why did Rama visit me when I always worship Krishna? He replied, there is no difference between Rama and Krishna. All gods will come to worship you. Though Hindu gods and goddesses really do exist, gods of all religions really exist because they live in your faith. When you have faith in someone that person loves you. Jesus was real for St. Teresa of Avila and Krishna was real for Mira because they loved them so much. I also have seen Krishna so many times and I saw Jesus on the Jordan River with Peter once when I was sitting quietly on the Ganga. After Rama's darshan in Madras you couldn't practice Krishna meditation anymore. What exactly happened when you went to Ramana for his advice? This happened in my residence on Lights Road in Madras. Rama left an impression on me of what God looks like. No longer could I chant the name or meditate. Though I went to a temple in Gopal Puram near my house where there was one gory mission. I used to go there in the evenings to take part in the arti and to sing bhajans and curtain. That day Bhaktivedan was there and I told him that I had no interest left to chant or to meditate. He told me I had to keep chanting because sometimes demons visit a man to keep him from performing his rituals. I wasn't satisfied. Then I went to Ramakrishna Math in Mylapore where I would go every Sunday. I asked the Swami there about it and he told me that it was the dark night of the soul. I wasn't satisfied with this either so I went to Ramana. I asked Bhagavan, I have been an ardent devotee of Krishna but now I can't say his name anymore. What is happening? How did you come here? He asked. By train. From the station to the ashram? By bullock cart, I replied. Where is the train now? I said, the train was at the station and now it has gone. 
From there, I took a bullet cart to you. I sent the cart away once I got to the ashram. Then he said, you made use of the train, but then you left it behind. Then you took a cart and also left it behind when you arrived to see me, because it was of no further use. Like this, all the things you performed are of no use now and they will be left behind. It is most important that you keep your intention in mind. You wanted to see me, and now you are here only because you left the train and cart behind. The Maharshi continued, What comes and goes is of no use. All your bhaktis, meditations and chanting was to direct you to some light and now are of no use. Then I said okay and went to the other side of the hill where I played with Krishna. When I returned to him, he asked me where I had been and I told him what I had been doing. He asked, do you see Krishna now? No sis, I don't, but I have played with him since childhood, he's my friend, I replied. Then he said, what appears and disappears is not eternal and is not truth. What does not appear or disappear? Then he stared at me a beautiful glance, retina into retina and all my doubts were cleared. Something happened and my body shook. I knew what had to be known. Maharishi transmitted it to me and in that instant also permeated me with the power to transmit this to others. Now by his grace only, I am able to help people all around the world. He is forever my master and when I speak it is him speaking, have no doubt about this. If for just one instant I thought it was Punya speaking I would surely be destroyed and I would have no right to sit here because whatever came out of my mouth would be false. It is my own master who speaks, it is your own master who speaks, it is your own heart speaking, it is your own self speaking to you. Meditation Elam Practicing Vipassana What is your opinion about it? You can continue this, but actually you don't need any practice. Practice makes you dependent on practice, but you are that which is not dependent on anything. Practice also is something taught to begin and continue but nobody teaches you how to stop. Practice is the past. To stay quiet here. Why did you continue your Krishna meditation after you first met Ramana? Is it beneficial? Meditation is always beneficial, even after enlightenment. What else can you do? Meditation means that you don't have to be attached to anything that is not everlasting. This keeps you at home. Sit quiet and meditate always as much as you can. Why run around when peace is found only when you meditate? Don't waste your time with the talk on the road. Just now you can find the difference between the faces in this house and those out on the road. It is better to have meditation always. In the time before your departure spend meditating, then your departure will be beautiful. How long should I sit in meditation? Meditation has no time, don't look at the watch when you sit. If you do you are not meditating, but you are concentrating on time only. Meditate whenever you can, but don't think of time. You can think of time in your office, but not in the time when there is no time. Then it will be like sitting quiet for thousands of years. Simply sit, and when something pulls you go and attend to it. There's no restriction to how long you should meditate and my advice to you is to always meditate. Nothing else will bring you peace. All your life, waking, dreaming, sleeping, just meditate. As Krishna said, do whatever you want, but always meditate on me. This is the teaching. If you have a teacher concentrate on him and if you don't concentrate on your own heart and work. Work is your duty and you can't avoid it but the results are in my hand. You will get according to what you want. This is the advice that I can give you. I know that you say that meditation will not enlighten anybody, but it does help me to get some control of this monkey mind. You can continue your meditation, but alongside don't forget to find out who is meditating. 4. Your meditation was focusing on some past object. And so all meditation belongs to the past, not the immediate present. But asking who the meditator is will lead you to the immediate present. Why dig in the grave of the dead and try to feed them bread and wine? 
This is what meditation on any object is. You can spend years meditating, but it only takes one second to give up the concept of meditation. If this one second doesn't pay you then you can return to your graveyard. Not digging the grave is not touching the past. Try this and tell me if it doesn't work. I ask only for one second, one second devoted to your own self, though you have spent millions of years devoted to others. You have lived for the happiness of your parents, of your teachers, of your spouses. For one second don't belong to anyone and find who never belonged to anyone. A woman gets up and sings a beautiful song. A man sitting in front of Papaji, who was in a seemingly deep meditation during the song, suddenly jumped up and applauded loudly. This is what happens to the people who meditate. One man meditated for ten years in a cave of the Himalayas having no food or water, until one day a girl started to dance in front of him. Instantly ten years of meditation was finished. He starved for ten years and in seeing a very rich meal in front of him. Lengths look what can happen. All samadhis will be disturbed and so it is better to listen to the music and don't confuse yourself by meditating. You should be true. When you meditate, meditate. If you want to enjoy music, enjoy it. Why meditate when there is music going on? Then five minutes in twenty-four hours. No problem. That will give you a rich reward. For just five minutes keep quiet and don't look here or there anywhere. Just five minutes. If you can't then two and a half minutes is quite enough. Decide this sometime in your lifespan. Even the thought of meditation is a thought, and therefore I do not suggest what most people call meditation. Just keep quiet by looking at the thought and the thought will disappear and what remains will be silence. Silence is most important for you, and this is the meditation that I speak of. You can keep silent when you are doing your activities by just looking at the thoughts that arise and knowing that these thoughts belong to the past. Mind itself is the past, it is a thought, it is time. Though when you look at the thought time is gone, past is gone, mind is gone. The no mind state is a state of quietness, and if you stay here you are always quiet during your activities also. Tillo is the name of God, of reality, and is always chanted to cleanse body, tongue, and mind. Tant Om at the beginning and end of the waking state is that vibration in which millions of planets hang. Inquiry is only through the mind and this mind is in the vibration. Om is vibration taking you to your source. Om takes you to being. To chant as long as possible is one way to empty the mind because it pumps all the vasanas and desires out of the heart. Then sit in meditation as long as possible and you will win freedom. This three was picked up by Christians and called Amen and by the Muslims who call it Amen. They are both forms of Aum is Brahman is Sat Chit Ananda, contemplation on Aum is contemplation on self. I want my body to say Aum every second. I want to have a cave to be in peace. Please show me the path with love. Are you chanting Aum or simply wanting it? You have to do it. Chant Aum always and this is enough. Then you will be happy and in peace also. Don't try to understand, simply go on chanting day and night, from when you wake up until you go to sleep. Om should always be in your mind and on your lips. You won't lose anything. Even if you do this for only one day, you will know what it is. It is meeting the self because this word is the self itself. Unless you do it wanting it is of no importance. Start for now. Chanting by tongue will do. Then I will teach you how to chant this from tongue to throat, which will give a better result. Then mental, then transcendental. I will show you that, but you start with chanting. Not very loud and in a low tone in your mind. First do this and come tomorrow and tell me what happened when you slept. You can't find the answer unless you simply do it. I will take you and not let you see anything else. If this lasts, it is realization itself because Om is Brahman. You are not to chant Om, you are to love Om. 
Is this why the Om symbols are hung on the walls bearer? Om must be inside and outside, because this symbol of Om forms into the emptiness of the space when you repeat it. It is not a word at all. When you breathe out listen to what it is speaking. It is speaking Om. The first word of the baby when it is born is Om. Om is everything. It is not a word nor is it a non-word. Is how the creation was created. But the word Om creation was there. Om is a soundless sound. It created everything and after the dissolution of everything it will be there. It is eternal sound and it has no form. You can read Gaudapada's Kairika. He comments very well on Om. In 1972, I was in Cannes in southern France, where I saw the interview of the Cardinal of France and Bactivident. The Cardinal was insisting that in the beginning there was sun so the light was first, otherwise, no creation could be found and no souls could live. So he said, in the beginning God sent light, as is written in the Bible. The Bactivident said that sound was first, and this sound was Om as Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, whatever it is. He said that there was sound in the beginning and not light, but the cardinal was not happy or satisfied with this. People I was with asked me if I could speak something regarding this. I said, yes, and I will silence him. Though a time was made for me to meet with the cardinal, on a Sunday about ten days later from four to six p.m. when I arrived there were monks and priests and local people and again the same question was asked. So I said when your God said, let there be light, there was sound. This let was sound and so light was after sound. Out from Om comes let and therefore this sound is before light. And he didn't speak, but quietly in French he said, he is a very clever Indian. Mantra. Mantra is used only to concentrate the mind to bring it back again and again. I am emptiness should be your mantra. Reaffirm I am consciousness not I am body or I am suffering. What is mantra meditation and how does it work? It quiets your mind by engaging it in something so that it won't follow objects. It will help you concentrate by its sound. Chanting any mantra is usually for beginners. As long as you chant the mind is busy but immediately goes to outside objects when you stop chanting. Chanting is good but not the end in itself because it doesn't give you happiness, but only engages your mind. This mantra can continue for some time until it is of no use. Mantra is used to give only one occupation to the mind. You can't think of two things at the same time and so it is necessary to chant a mantra in the beginning, unless you see a teacher. When an elephant is taken in the market the mahout takes a rod or a log and gives it to the elephant to carry with its trunk, so that the elephant will not pick up the fruits and vegetables at every chance. Mind is like that, so if you give something for it to hold in its trunk it will stay quiet. This mantra will take you to a teacher so that you will find out who you are. If you do not get an answer, simply go on chanting and someday, you will see that this mantra will leave you and quietness will be there. Simply keep quiet and let the mind repeat this mantra, the mind, not the tongue. Then you will be quiet, for it will give you quietness. Your purpose is to be free and not to go on chanting the mantras. When you sleep you don't chant, this is only in the dream and waking state, but if you chant long enough, you will also chant in the sleep state. At that point the mantra will leave you. Most mantras will give you some name or form as the mantra Ram does. But who am I does not give you any name or form so this is the best mantra that can be given. Without repeating this mantra one cannot be free and you only need to say it once. This mantra gives you liberation because it doesn't take you to any past and doesn't represent any name or any form, it keeps you in the immediate presence. Therefore this mantra is invisible and will give you peace all the time. Just keep quiet and don't make any effort. Chanting takes effort, but in keeping quiet don't use anything or make any effort. Try this now and if you need more advice ask me. 
You chanted a Krishna mantra for 25 years. You said mantra quiets the mind. Does mantra also purify the disciple's mind? Yes, absolutely. Repetition of a mantra will allow you to see God who is within your own heart. He will see that you are calling him to you from within. The mantra purifies your mind by engaging your mind away from distraction which gives suffering and eventually frees you from all attachments. Eventually you will chant all the 24 hours of the day. At this point, your mind is attached only to God, the one whose name you are chanting and that manifests in front of you. Then you will see in a vision the one whose name is chanted. The guru I had 15 years ago gave me a mantra to repeat. I prefer to just sit quietly. What do you recommend? As I said mantra is usually a preliminary stage, but because there isn't much quietness in the way the world is today it can benefit you. Habir was always chanting the name of Ram as did Tukaram and Namdev. This was their path and it obviously worked. There are two main ways, Vichar and Devotion. The way of Maharshi is Vichar. In Vichar you must inquire, Who am I? In Devotion you sacrifice your ego to peace. You are lucky to be sitting quiet because so many other paths become traps of doing what you can't get out of. Truly being quiet will give you much more benefit than chanting the name of God. When chanting the name you chant the name of someone who is not there, but when sitting quiet you are that. Whatever practice suits your temperament do it. But beware, you can be so attached to it that you lose the original intention. Surrender to your teacher and he will take care of you. I cannot say I am free because freedom is everywhere and so these words feel so limiting. Can you say something about this? You cannot say I am free because when you have this experience you don't need to say it. Just as you don't say I am a woman, because it is something that you definitely know. This is a slogan for these people who are battling for the victory, just as the soldiers in the battlefield cry, Victory, 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 even though they do not know that they may be defeated or victorious. Though this is a slogan to always keep in the mind, I am free, just to check the mind so that it will not go some other way, and into bondage. I am free will break the limitations, and when the limitations are broken even this will fall back. Though always say, I want to be free, I am free, I want freedom, and this mantra will take you to a place which does not come from your mind. So, if you don't have the experience of freedom chant the slogan as a mantra to the mind so that it is defeated because otherwise the mind likes to stay in bondage. But if you have this experience you need not speak about it. Freedom just is always there. This is what I speak every day. I was introduced to yoga and meditation early in my childhood by Swami Venkates Ananda. He gave me the mantra Soham which, I am told, means I am that. No, Soham means that I am, not I am that. I am that is Tatvamasi. That is the difference. It is not a mechanical thing to repeat. It has a very deep meaning and you only have to say it once, that I am. Why repeat it? It means that you have not understood. It is not to be repeated but to be trusted and known, that I am God. That is all. Did I chant the mantra I instead? Why waste your time chanting a mantra? If you have extra time spend it looking for a teacher instead because if you spend just one moment with a teacher you will know who you are. How can I deepen this inquiry into I? What people call meditation is really concentration because there is an object in the mind concentrated upon. In meditation there is no thought in the mind and one is very beautiful. So don't make this eye an image to concentrate upon. Simply know and have great trust that Soham. Since Ramana has the same root as Rama, would chanting this name help? Chanting can help in the beginning, because it brings attention to the person whose name why you chant. Who am I will take why you to the source of all mantras, the source of all quietness and peace. 
Once in the source there is not purpose of the mantra, and it will drop by itself. You will not disturb this peace by any sound. I was in Anandashram doing Ram Nam, but to no avail. What was I doing wrong? You can chant this name Ram, but nobody knows how to chant it. It will work to some extent, if you don't know how just because it will keep your mind off distractions. But if you know how it will be much more powerful than this. The first thing to remember is this, chant the name on the breath, not with the tongue. Let the breath chant the name, not the tongue. Don't put a pressure on anything. Just let the breathing in and out happen without your notice, naturally and habitually. Then this will continue while working, walking, shopping and sleeping. I've seen people who have chanted this name for crores of time with no effort. Do it this way, and within days you will see the one whose name is chanted. In the Kali Yuga, there is no time for penance, but the power of the word is tremendous. Ram purifies. The word Ram will enter your heart. It is a raft to cross the ocean. Let it be the last word of the last breath. Ram will confer freedom without practice. Beyond everything there is nothing to do and no appearance of anything there is only the self which is neither subject nor object. This is the highest experience because there is no experience or just peace. Then you know that, I am that seated in the center of the heart, and this is Ammani Padmi Hum. Master can I have a name? I'll give you a name and you can chant this name as a mantra, because there is no better mantra for releasing you from the suffering of samsara. It will work even uttered once, but it is a name so you will use it many times a day and the merits that you earn by using this name will work because the name will penetrate to where it belongs. This name is Sita Ram. Tita is your wife and Ram is her husband. Everybody can chant Sita Ram. Even once uttered, even once uttered it gives liberation to a person. Thank you. Karma Yoga Will you speak about the yoga of knowledge and the yoga of action? I've read the Bhagavad Gita, but still, I am confused about them. What path should I take? The Gita is the book which removes doubts and confusion of everyone who reads it, but you are confused by reading it. You are confused because you don't know how to react to the circumstances before you. This Gita arose when a man was in doubt about fighting his own family and teachers. He asked the advice of a wise one, Krishna himself, who drove the chariot of the doubtful one into battle. Krishna even advised Arjuna to fight against his own cousins when they wouldn't divide the kingdom of Hastinapur, which is now Delhi between them. Krishna told Arjuna to fight for his rights, especially since his cousins were not good dharmic people. Krishna not only told Arjuna to fight but told him he must kill all of them. Arjuna said that if he killed his cousins and gurus that he would certainly go to hell, but Krishna replied that those who even join with the unjust must also be killed. Krishna told him, Your profession is to fight because you are a Kshatriya, a soldier. Your cousins have not been following the true path and don't deserve your compassion, so rise and fight. Abandon all your duties and dharmas and surrender to me. I will take care of you. Surrender your mind to me and I will give you salvation. Do not worry. So Arjuna took up his bow and arrow and he killed everybody and he won the battle. His confusion was removed by his teacher, so he fought and he didn't run away. The killing did not send him to hell, because he was fighting for the good of the people and for the peace of the country. Krishna fought for this and so did Rama. Karma Yoga, the path of action, is to not run away from anything that comes in front of you. If a fight comes then fight. If love comes then love. This is the path of karma, don't run away. Simply react to the circumstances that are in front of you. Your dharma is to fight, and the result is not in your hand. Leave this to me. Just perform what needs to be performed, and don't imagine any result. The result is not in your hands. You can plan all you want, but may simply die the next moment. Then what use is all of your planning? 
though simply react. So this is how you could be both an anti-British freedom fighter and a Krishna devotee. Krishna himself carries the Sudarshan Chakra on his finger. This is the greatest weapon of all. He also killed many people and demons who were bringing great harm to innocent people. An example of this is when he killed his uncle Kamsa because he troubled the entire state. There's no trouble in fighting unless you kill innocent people, which of course is a sin. You can fight so that all beings may live in peace, but not for selfish reasons. Yoga and Pranayama Yoga and Pranayama will give you a fit body and mind, and this is needed. Is Pranayama necessary for inquiry? It will give you some relaxation as long as it is there. In Pranayama you can stop the breath for some time, and during this time no thought will arise. Holding the breath inside or outside in retention is called comeback. The mind cannot think anything in retention of breath because mind and breath rise from the same source. When the mind rises thought rises, when the mind ceases thought ceases. So Pranayama is next best to inquiry. Pranayama with long retentions is a very difficult process and I do not advise it because it has a very definite code of life. Food, environment, behavior, responsibilities all have to be taken care of, but now it isn't practical so let's not think about it. True comeback is making no effort and staying quiet. A yogi who knows how to perform comeback does not die. Inhalation. Stop. Exhalation. Stop. You don't need effort. Simply be conscious of the retention between inhaling and exhaling. That point is 12 fingers from your nose after exhaling and on the heart after inhaling. You only have to be conscious of it and that will be your fixed place where nobody can enter. Watching the breath can help your inquiry at first because then your mind can't go anywhere else. Just watch witness from where the breath rises and to where it returns. I would also like to know what you think about Hatha Yoga and Vipassana meditation since these are two methods which I practice. The word yoga also means union and is explained by Patanjali who began the Yoga Sutras with Chitvriti Nirada Iti Yoga. Chit means the mind, actually something more subtle than the mind. Vritti are the concepts of sensual desire or any sensual activity. Nirada means to cease. So what Patanjali is saying is that yoga is the cessation of the vritti of the chit, or union is the cessation of the movement of the mind. When you abandon all the vritti, or all the desire for anything of the universe and when they do not rise, this is the union of soul with the self, which were separated for so long. This is an indirect explanation and a direct explanation is not yet to be found. Yoga is the reunion of the Deva with the Paramatman. So when any tendency arises about anything in the mind, even God, reject it and be quiet. This is what Patanjali says. Atha Yoga means the eight limbs, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dayana, and Samadhi. But nobody practices the first two yama and niyama, inner and outer purity, which are the foundations of yoga. Without these practices how can you even sit? I once was invited to a yoga center in Lisboa which did not teach yama and niyama. I asked the director how can they practice yoga unless they are clean in mind and in habits. The director said that since teaching yoga was his profession, he couldn't afford to deal with purity because then no one would come to his classes. The main interest of his students was to stay young, strong, and attractive so that they would remain attractive to their partners. It seems that so many people in the West practice yoga for sex only. There are books just for this. Yoga is a very good method to control the mind but you have to be pure and you have to go to the right teacher who will teach you properly. Otherwise there will be no benefit. Do you recommend that I continue my yoga practice? If you do yoga and pranayama correctly then no disease will touch you. 
you need good prana and a healthy body, and so I recommend that everybody do some yoga. What form of pranayama do you recommend? For sitting for vikshar or meditation you can have three nadi shiddhana pranayamas which will purify the mind. This helps meditation and concentration and helps to do vichar in a right way. Bhagavan said that we have to meditate on the spiritual heart and not on the space between the eyebrows. In which way should I do it? You say just to be quiet. Can you help me experience the spiritual heart by your grace? Whether you concentrate on the heart or in between the eyebrows, it is just to arrest the outgoing tendencies of the mind. Concentrating on either place you are thoughtless. This leads you to quietness. But I don't tell you to do this because if I did you would be body-minded instead of searching for yourself. So when I say keep quiet I don't want you to concentrate on any part of the body, I only want you to keep quiet as you keep quiet when you sleep. Simply keep quiet and don't let your mind touch any object. This means quietness. Look at the rise of thought and it will not rise. This means vigilance, simply watchfulness. Simply keep aware of what is happening. Between the ages of four and six I had the ability to walk on water and to levitate and I had other powers. There is no doubt that in your previous life you were a great yogi with lots of siddhis. But if these siddhis really were of any use why did you come back to this world again and embrace suffering? It means that these siddhis are only magic of the mind and not worth having, much less striving for. They did not give you peace of mind. I have seen some yogis in the Himalayas who had most of the siddhis, but were not happy and peaceful. Their teachers had taught them so much and also taught that it was not the end, that they needed someone to teach the real knowledge because all of these tricks are nothing before the sun of real knowledge. This life you were born in the West to fulfill all the physical attractions that you could not fulfill here in India. That is also a must because otherwise you are not complete in your experiences. Now you have come back to your own land to continue further. Kundalini Yoga How is Kundalini Shakti related to sexual energy? Kundalini Shakti, Sexual Shakti and Shiva Shakti are different names for the same thing. But it is not true experience. Sexual experience you will forget, but you can never forget true experience and you can never describe it. Anything that you can describe is false and stupid. True experience has been had by very few and none of them describe it, so you need to find a very expert teacher who can give you practical lessons in this. You are the master. Yes, you are the master. Laugh since practicing Kundalini Yoga, I have a pain in my first chakra. This Kundalini is lying dormant in everybody in the Muladhara chakra of the astral body which is in the heart of the physical body. This energy is sleeping and you give rise to it by concentrating on different chakras one after the other. If you are interested in it, I don't advise it because it takes special guidance and it can be dangerous. Focusing in the chakra will cause the energy to start traveling upward through all the chakras. Finally it reaches the top and then you will feel that you are not the body, but that you are out of the body. This is a difficult process and takes at least 12 years in a quiet place with a good teacher. And the benefit is that you will have power of the mind to levitate and manifest anything you want. I remember one yogi that I met who had these powers. I was on my way to a place which enters directly into heaven that I had heard about in a Lahore Urdu publication. This was the same place where all the Pandavas had gone after the Mahabharata war. Though they all tried to make it, only Yudhishthara was able to do it. All the others fell into their deaths on the glaciers. Though on the same road in the high Himalayas, I came across this yogi. He had been living in Jammu Kashmir as the son of a sub-postmaster, but ran away and met a guru who taught him all he knew, but also told him that it was not the end. Before his guru died he told this man to find someone who could give him knowledge of the self, Brahman Yoga. He had left school very young and found a guru who taught him Kundalini Yoga. 
He spent twelve years with him and learned everything, but his guru told him that it was not the end. The end was jhana yoga. But there is no guru for jhana yoga. I asked him what his training had done for him, and he started levitating. He could sit on the earth or he could sit in the space. So I said, what is the use of this? Any sparrow or crow can do this. You are a man, but you are trying to become a bird, so you will be born a bird in your next life. Then he said I can manifest anything, and since we are both hungry I will manifest food. Though he said food, and there was a lot of food including Chola Bachara and Gajar Hava, all according to my taste and served fresh from Kashi by a Brahmin. I said to him you worked for 12 years for this. Why not just work for money so you can buy food or use the herbs that are here in the mountains? He then told me, I can go to different planets and realms. But I said, to be in this one planet is troublesome enough, why visit so many places? He did say that there was one realm which he was not allowed into, Brahma Loka, the plane of knowledge, threw him out. He could also speak any language by just praying to Saraswati. So I tested him with Persian, Karnak, Tamil, Telugu, Malayam and Bengali and he could speak with the grace of Saraswati. He traveled all over India looking for a guru who would teach him jhana yoga, but wherever he went people, yogis, gurus all wanted to know what he knew instead. Even in the Kamba Mela, where there are eight million sadhus, he could not find a jhana guru. So I told him to sit down alongside the small hot spring-fed river which was totally surrounded by snow. He had a magic staff in his hand, which was from Yamaloka, the realm of death which made him immortal and which was the source of his powers. His guru had given it to him. I took the rod and threw it into the river. This staff that he was so proud of and worked for so long to get was thrown away. Actually, it was his pride which I threw away and all his powers were finished. Then I told him, I am going back to the plains. I have only come here to find Swarga where the Pandavas had gone, but I couldn't find the way. So now I am going back. He said that his guru had told him that whoever gives you knowledge you must serve for the rest of your life. I replied that I always travel alone and that though I was going back to the Punjab he could come as far as Rishikesh. I told him to stay in the mountains and that I was a householder, not a yogi, and that he should go his way and I will go mine. Though if you want to practice this go out and buy the book Serpent Power and practice. Many people try to practice but they do not get it. If you want guidance I will guide you. You will have to live in solitude and have special food and circumstances. You have to be very strict. You are a very young man and you could do it. You could become another Sai Baba. Laughs but why not just have a simple way of living? Just make inquiry and find out who you are first. See the divine within yourself but don't see anyone else, don't see any other thought. Keep only one thought in your mind and that thought should be of God. I realize now that I am not here for Kundalini. By the true knowledge of the self, the Kundalini arises by itself. It's not that you will first feel the rise of the Kundalini to the Sahasrara, and then you're enlightened. It's not true when it will not happen. If you realize yourself by simply keeping quiet, you will see that the nature will listen to you and obey you, including God's. Try this, and if it fails, Pilel teach you Kundalini. There is no path, no person to tread on the path, and no mind to think about all these things, and there is no time and no space. This is called Jhana Yoga. There is no practice because any practice is in the time. When you sleep there is no time and you don't make any practice. All these things you must avoid. Don't stir a thought in your mind and don't try to attain anything. If a thought comes reject it. Whatever is left you should speak of Tomi. I will wait for the answer. Kundalini has suddenly arisen in me. I don't believe it. Your face doesn't show it. Maybe you are experiencing the impact of a new culture, but not the Kundalini. 
When Kundalini arises the face changes and the decisions are no longer made, but they come by themselves. These are symptoms of the Kundalini. He gives light and wisdom, confidence and contentment. I don't advise working on Kundalini Sadhana because this usually only brings magical activities like levitation, multilocation and manifesting objects. These siddhis have nothing to do with freedom or with dissolving your desires, in fact they can trap you deeper into desires. I don't advise it. I advise you to do no practice, but to simply sit quiet and watch the movement of the mind. This will give you such strength that you will feel that when you walk the world walks with you. When you breathe the world breathes with you. That feeling you will have, oneness with all beings and this will not be an up and down experience. Yatra. The true Yatra is returning home to here and now. I want to go on a Yatra to some sacred places. It is better to just sit where you are and ask yourself who am I, most of these sacred places are sacred, because there your mind is focused on the saint who is related to it, like Buddha in Bodh Gaya. This focus benefits you by strengthening your decision, not the place itself. Most people who live in Bodh Gaya or Tiruvannamalai are not affected, but those who go there focused on the saints and teachings of these places are benefited. Find where the eye rises. There is no better education for only this brings you to no past object, but to yourself. Who am I finishes your relationship with time, and in this timelessness you know who you are. Go to the sacred places, but the main purpose must be to know who you are. After inquiry the two places I usually recommend for a yatra are Arunachala who is Shiva and also my Guru's Guru, and the Ganga who is the Divine Mother. By drinking her water, you will remove all your physical problems and diseases. He is a heavenly nectar, and therefore Ganga is worshipped. If you keep her in your room, it is quite enough to purify the atmosphere of the whole room. This is why we keep containers of Ganga in our houses, and this water will stay unpolluted for 100 years. Also, when people are dying a tablespoon of Ganga is placed on their tongue, and then they're not reborn, if it is the last sip of water that they have. You can go to the source of the Ganga, Gangitri, and there you will see that there is no river. Like this, go to the source of your mind which has become a river of so much samsara and time. Don't forget that going to Gangitri is symbolic of something that few people will understand. If you do want to find another sacred place besides these, go to where you can feel the peace. Adi Shankarakuriya was traveling into the forest once when he saw a frog and a snake together. You know frog is the food of snakes and so they can't stay together for long, but he saw a female frog giving birth and a cobra using its hood to protect the frog from the rain. Tankarukuria thought that this must be a holy place since there was no enmity there and started an ashram there which is Sringari in Karnatak state. Whenever you see enemies living together you know that it is a holy place. Somebody must have lived there who removed hatred from the beings, as wherever Buddha walked all the animals, deer, rabbits, lion and tigers were peaceful with each other. Where Buddha walked there is only love, no hatred even among the animals. This Buddha still lives in your heart. If you have no hatred for anything, you are the Buddha. Then there is no hatred for men, animals or birds. You can try. Everybody is a living Buddha. I want to sit with you and connect in our hearts. I've been traveling all over India going to sacred places and now I want to connect with you. Where have you visited? The Aurobindo Ashram in Vrindaban. What did you do in Vrindaban? I sat and listened and just visited the temple. Which kind of Vrindaban did you visit? I don't understand. You don't need to understand when you go to Vrindaban. You have gone to see structures and buildings only. That is not Vrindaban. Vrindaban is love. Didn't you find this? You said you wanted to connect. 
Did you connect with the dust of Rindaban where the devotees sang, danced, and played with the Lord himself in form? That is Vrindaban. It doesn't matter. You just stay here now and learn how to stay in Vrindaban. You have to dance in love, that is called Vrindaban. Not simply running from temple to temple. For that Vrindaban, you must look into your own heart just for a few seconds. And you will find your way to Vrindaban. If you can enjoy within, then only you can enjoy outside. This is the connection you speak about, connect yourself with your own self. If you do not, no other connection will give you peace. So how to have this connection? Do not think of anything from the past, just for one instant, and you will have connection with the presence. All the past connections will disturb you so look into your own Vrindaban, which is inside you. Yantra I bought a Sri Yantra in Rishikesh. Can you tell me how to use it? Keep it in front of you and do puja with flowers, and use the mantra that is written on it. Concentrate here clockwise around petals and rings of triangles in a spiral until you get to the center. When you can concentrate here, it is another way to stop your mind. I will tell you the mantra before Shivratri. Someone gives Papaji a letter with a swastika written on it, you have drawn the swastika backwards. It must start the other way. Drawing it backwards is the German swastika which Hitler used, and he lost the war. It makes all the difference and this is how Hitler was defeated. Swastika means intelligence, and it must be used correctly. It is an ancient symbol of intellect, Ganapati, and it must be worshipped. Tantric sex. Some people use union with a partner as a means of liberation. Do you think it is possible to use sex as a sadhana? For the Westerners, it is very suitable according to some teachers. They say the bliss of sex is the bliss of self. I don't have any objection to this, but I also don't see any results from it. I have not seen anyone realized through sex. This is because they have not been taught in a true way. At a certain point in sex there is rest, there is peace, there is no desire. But people miss this chance and stir another desire for another activity again and so this has not worked. This peace and realization does not come from the union, but because of the disunion. After the sexual activities you get some shock of weakness, which you call peace. This peace comes because the desire for union has left you. During the desire for union you are disturbed and you search for someone to have union with. When you meet with someone you are no longer desiring, and this absence of desire gives you peace. If you know this you can do anything that you like. But only if you reject everything will the happiness come, as Buddha rejected everything, and the result was enlightenment. So do not forget this, when an object of desire appears in your mind you are not happy. When it leaves you, you are happy. So if any desire touches, you do not accept it. Then you are happy. Allow the desire to fulfill itself without touching you. Are the tantric yogis wasting their time? Tantra is a worship. It is their way of worship. The idea of tantra is to take you beyond the mind and beyond sexual activity by worshipping the goddess. It is meant to take you out of sexual attachment and not to get you more attached. The original book which describes this was written by a Rishi about 3000 BC. It is said that the staircase that you have descended out of bliss is the same which you must descend into bliss again. I think he was wrong because the staircase must be rejected and not continued forever. Most people just use a meaning of Tantra that they like the most and lose the original intention of the Rishi. So chapter, living skillfully. Living skillfully, if you know it play in the Leela. Inside abide alone and yet play in the Leela outside. Manifestation is a play never forget thy, is a transient actor whose friends are body mind elements. Identify as that, keep aware and play the game in Leela as you wish but do not leave the source. World is here to enjoy. 
There is so much to it. Open your eyes and live wisely. The world is so beautiful and exists for you because you want something to do with it. The wise will aspire for something else, for what sees the beauty, for who decides what is beautiful. Essence of skillfulness. Whatever comes let it come, what stays let stay, what goes let go, always keep quiet, and always adore self. This is the essence of living skillfully in the world appearance. During all activities of life always know that you are the self. The way to live a happy beautiful life is to accept whatever comes, and not care about what does not come. Things will come so enjoy them and be happy. Let the play happen by the supreme power, you will be taken care of. Be free to be happy love has no traps. If you are happy all will be happy, if you suffer all will suffer, if your mind smells bad others will be affected. Keep yourself happy in peace, light, wisdom, consciousness. This is your responsibility. Be happy and have compassion and live hand in hand with nature. This makes birth worthwhile. Start from heart and see that all arises from heart. Always do this, always be this. You cannot be skillful and arrogant at the same time, but without arrogance all will be skillful. Face the one, seeing everything as one is no mind and this is the pure state of being of self. When you are one with all do not hold or possess and it will be. When you are connected to all things do not hold on to the connections because this makes them separations and you will have divided yourself by creating other. As the lotus does not touch the water, so do not let the world enter you heart. Being busy in the world is no trouble unless you are troubled being busy. Then the only trouble is the trouble. Let attention go to manifestation, just know that manifestation is Brahman. Let there be creations and destructions, all is Brahman and you are beyond even that always. Your environment is very important so stay where there is no tension. Make sure that the circumstances within and without are not disturbing, so be with peaceful beings in peaceful places. You need a place of love and beauty and peace, even your own apartment and body must be peaceful. Love and quietness is enough. If you speak ill of anybody else, you speak ill of yourself, if you speak good, you speak good about yourself. Words have great power so use only appropriate words. Speaking from the head is pain and from the heart is pleasure, so shut your head and your heart is open. Don't trouble any being and do not let any being trouble you. Don't get angry with anyone. The tongue doesn't get angry with the teeth when the teeth bite it and this sometimes happens when the food is good. Contentment is absolutely necessary because whatever you will be in the next state, or in the next life, is whatever unfulfilled desire that you have in the present state. Therefore desire only the infinite. Let the other desires arise and see that they arise from me from emptiness, and then let them fall as waves must. Don't run after projections on the screen be very wise. Do not lose your peace at any cost. Things will rise and fall so not to be caught. Peace is most important, you have to be happy in the Leela, no mind limitless happiness with freedom in your mind not problems. Here in this moment there is no problem and daily life is within this moment, you cannot walk out of it. Just try to invite past and future problems into this moment. They cannot touch here so do things of now now, and do not touch yesterday or tomorrow. Remove all becoming, you are being. Coming is effort, being is no effort. You are always that so be like the breeze that is attached to neither the garbage nor the garden that it blows over. Do not run away from worldly activities, only always keep in the I am self, stay as the screen on which all the projected activities take place. In all activities simply keep quiet and know I am home. Your business is to keep quiet. You cannot say that it is a dream unless you are awake. So in the true waking state, the state of wisdom, it does not matter if there are dream objects or not. Emptiness is not affected by any dream object, not even duality. 
Ocean does not complain about the dance of ten million waves. So don't be concerned about the rise and fall of thoughts. To be nowhere is home. Not allowing thought to land is home. Allow thoughts to arise, but do not jet them land because thought landing is an object which brings desire for the object, which brings possession of an object, which brings insanity. There are only two choices: freedom or insanity. Choose I am free and happy. Bad moods are either past or imaginary future. In the present, there are no moods at all. Moods belong to circumstance, to the past. Face the sun, and there will be no shadow of moods. Give up all concepts and remain what you are. Identify yourself as cosmic consciousness. Don't accept name or form. Detachment is your own nature, so the wise are not attracted to the transient. Only the foolish cling to that which brings unhappiness and are thus butchered by time. This world is a garden, a game. Play this divine game very well. See things only as they are, but do not possess them, or you will be in trouble, because even your body is transient. The next breath is not guaranteed, so do what you have to do now. Play well, play wisely, by first finding out who you are. Yoga only, no boga. First, finish your work, then go to the world with a heart that is dancing. Don't use words for this dance because the game is tricky. Just be silent. The world is like a tail of a dog; its nature is to curl. The best you can do is to stay quiet and not let anything bother you. Visitors will come and go. Don't interfere with these waves. Be always empty and let desires dance. Being asleep in the waking state is being asleep to desires and aversions. The avalanche of asanas which may happen as you approach the summit is notions, intentions, and ideations. With no intention, there is no summit, and that is here. Hidden tendencies arise to leave when you are quiet, so it is a good sign when vasanas rise. Do not be dismayed because they are self. Let vasanas arise; they do not exist. The world is a playground for the wise and a graveyard for the foolish. Let the vasanas play; they are transient imaginations, and even the high to which they occur is imagination itself. Abide a substratum and allow circumstances to come and go. Stay quiet with no intention or notion, not even to inquire for freedom, and don't utter the word "I." Then the gods and demons of the vasanas will vanish. Your true nature does not come and go. They with what comes and goes. When they arise, they will disappear. Allow them to go away. Let things happen through mind, ego, and just stay quiet as they happen, with the firm conviction: I am, I am. This meditation is absolutely necessary to clear tendencies. Only in the dream do you see objects. Know that all objects are dream objects, and that the dream snakes are not real. You have been ignorant for years, so when you know the truth, you must focus on staying as such for some time. What else is important? If you find that you are still in the mind, never mind. Don't remember. Then you will not forget. Though name and form and place and fields are different, consciousness is never different. So let there be these differences. But do not accept and reject anything, or you divide yourself, and there is no love in this division. Take a cent from a dollar, and you no longer have a dollar. A fool doesn't look at foolishness, and so is foolish. The wise one looks at foolishness, and so is wise. Have no individuality. Surrender to space, or dissolve the ego with knowledge. Just keep quiet and watch the ego. Keep vigilantly alert. Aware but not involved, doing is trouble. Clinging to non-eternal things is arrogance. No clinging is loving all. So don't cling and don't don't cling because both conceal the truth. What you have, you have to lose. There is no water in the mirage, only dry sand. Be attached only to that which is impossible to be separate from. If you have to think, think I am pure consciousness. If you have to speak, speak about the self. 
if you have to read, read what the enlightened have written. I advise you to keep good company, a pure sattvic diet, attend satsang, and live in harmony with nature. Be as you are and allow no concepts to trespass into your peace. Your foremost duty is to remove concepts and engagements. Love all beings, love all beings, love all beings. Treat the ego and mind like shoes, wear them when you need to go out and take them off at the door when you are home. Otherwise the seat in which knowledge would sit is occupied. The thought I am the body is enough to occupy the throne, so keep the mind and ego out with the shoes until there is no in and no out and no one left to wear them. Buddha nature flows from simple doing not doer thinking doing. Allow things to happen you just stay here. What has to happen is happening just remain here as peace, just remain as peace, just remain as peace. Questioner, how to live in the world? Answer from Papaji. When you are strong in the experience of that you can live in any circumstances. This is the end of desire. How to stay with desire without disturbing our consciousness, our awakening. Simply do not touch what disturbs you. Be aware and drop back to this pure I as pure consciousness at an individual level. If you have this experience you'll help other people by simply being and not necessarily speaking about it. Waves radiate from this one and others are benefited, as a silent rose attracts by its radiant beauty. Eternal love is the perfume that attracts people. Try it, you'll find people pulled to you. Does one need to live in comfort or in austerity? India doesn't offer the comforts of life. India has everything, but it doesn't allow you to use these things as bodily comforts. It may not be the same comfort that they speak of in the West, though. A true comfortable life is very simple living and very simple things. This comfortable life is only available in India, not in the West. How do I let go of control and be natural and let existence guide me? Many people ask this question. You must know this answer for yourself. I will tell you this though, when you say let go you imply that you have jet in something. How did you allow this letting in? In and out is the same gate. This is what the Bible means when it says, from dust it comes and to dust it returns. From where something arises there it falls too. Who did you allow in? It is of no use to keep an old habit. Keeping an old troublesome habit is like keeping poisonous snakes in your arms. Now is the time to hold this snake by the tail and throw it out. This snake is someone that you love. If you feel the bite of this snake, throw it away. This doesn't take time. Unless you throw out the old habit, you will not see the beauty of the fresh habit. This fresh habit will bring tears of joy from your eyes. Let go by knowing the pain of holding. There is no struggle in sleep. Who does not struggle in sleep, and who struggles when awake? Everything that happens, happens naturally. What is born must die. It is only that you want things to happen in your own way, and that is the trouble. How can I add more peace bit by bit to my life? I don't believe in bit by bit like the sparrows eat. Crocodiles swallow the whole thing. You just slip in and stay comfortably inside. Millions of people are inside the stomach of the crocodile of death. Every minute a person is dying and is being chewed by this crocodile, even a day old baby, but nobody knows. Avoid this death by knowing that there is no crocodile and that you are free, swimming in the ocean of freedom. If you say, I am so and so then you land in the stomach of the crocodile. But if you don't use any name then who are you? Don't land on any name of the past, present or future. You have to abandon everything for freedom, God mind and especially I. Then when freedom comes it comes instantly, it comes immediately, all at once. The only impediment is the indecision of not removing the arrogance of I am not that. This is saying I am suffering which is like a fish in the water saying, I am thirsty. So simply say I am. 
In this dream is it better to act with love, kindness and generosity, as so many spiritual teachings suggest or doesn't it matter how you act? These are suggestions from the teachers. Those who have truly experienced emptiness have no teaching or suggestions. They simply say, keep quiet. How can I be non-identified when suffering and emotion comes out? Suffer when there is suffering and be happy when there is happiness. Just don't accept and don't reject. Be like a breeze which just flows through the gardens and garbage equally. This moment cannot be separated from air. Learn from the breeze and don't stay at a particular place. And what to do when a desire arises? Fulfill it. When there is an unfulfilled desire, you are in difficulty. Why not finish it? How can I always be happy? There's a state between waking and sleeping and between sleeping and waking where there is no time. They like the state and you will be happy. They with no desire for any person, object or concept. This is called sleeping, but nobody knows how to do it. Waking state is the attachment with persons, objects and ideas. This is called the waking state. Keep up the state with no concepts which is the sleep state of a realized person. The suffering state of the unrealized person is the state of persons, objects and concepts. Stay in between the transient in between time. Don't ignore the zero time between waking and sleeping, between inhalation and exhalation, and between day and night. The first and last thought should be, let there be peace, so stay aware as you transition between waking and sleep. In this moment simply be existence consciousness bliss. And time with self at this moment. Your homework is to always feel happy. Leave aside the I thought, and all other thoughts and just keep happy. The past is hell so the secret of happiness is that nothing touches you in the moment. Human life is celebration. Welcome to the planet, plunge into this moment. This is happiness, all the rest is suffering. You have nothing to do. Simply stay as you were, like a lotus in a pond. You may live in the dirty water but you are above it, and you don't do anything about the circumstances. Don't touch the circumstances, don't be attached to anything, and yet live with everything. Would you advise me to go to Ramanashram and inquire there? Grace is there as it is here so it doesn't matter. What matters is that you make the best of any circumstance that you are in. Your time must be utilized in a perfect way. Don't look behind but have a strong decision that you will do it. Do not plan to leave and this planning is not in your hands. You came for three days but have stayed three weeks. Just react to circumstances. Planning does not work, simply be. You are right. You will always be in my heart because I don't exist. And this will be your name, I don't exist. This name is Mena. Mena was the mother of a king in India in ancient times. The king had four queens and once she was sitting in the balcony above where the king's four wives were giving him a bath in milk and honey mixed together, as was the custom then. He should have been happy, but she wasn't and a tear dropped and landed on the body of her son. Though the king was covered in milk and honey and the hands of the queens he still felt this one tear because it had so much power. What is this I have felt? And in looking up he saw his crying mother. Mother you should be happy. I am enjoying my bath and you are crying. She replied, Yes my dear son, the body you are looking after and that which the queens are rubbing is not worth it. It is not worth it because every next day it becomes older and it will lead you to death. Don't only look after your body, Look toward your happiness because the body stays only 80 or 90 years and after that what will happen? So do it now. After the bath sit down and meditate. Then he prostrated before his mother and left the palace to go and win freedom. This is the instruction of a good mother. The only way I can thank you for what you have given me is to be still. If you are still you can't lose anything. When you are still, everyone will think you are attentive and awake, 
and they will not come near you. Stillness is the greatest achievement one can have in life. Stillness is not so very easy and so few people will opt to be still and among these a rare one will be successful. Now you have started losing objects. Next you will lose your desires. Then you will lose your ego and finally your ignorance. Losing all this only stillness remains. Papaji, I have a letter for you, but it is very confidential and I don't want you to read it out loud. I have no privacy. Don't keep anything confidential or secret because the day will come when everything will be known. Keeping anything confidential will trouble you. You are here with your own family, your own friends. Kabir says this also, don't keep anything confidential because if you do it will revolve in your head and at the time of departure, it will be your next birth. What you concentrate on will bring you your next birth. I want to serve people from my heart from essence to essence. I don't seem to be able to do this in my present occupation as a doctor. Tell me what to do and where to go. What is the number of my flight? The number of your flight 000. Your destination is here now. Just don't get attached to the transit lounge as you wait for your flight. Your neighbors to the right and left are coming and going and now you are left alone, where nobody is on the right flight. I have heard that people like Ramana and Ramakrishna had to give up their studies and games in order to develop spiritual strength. You don't have to give things up to develop spiritual strength. I don't teach to stop your studies and to meditate. You can keep up your natural interests whatever they are. I have played cricket and now this is my interest. See cricket, I don't lose anything. The games and studies can be carried on without any difference and you can still realize yourself. Ramakrishna did it as did Ramana, you see. Though Ramana had only a high school education, the doctors bowed down before him. He was not an illiterate and he didn't give up his studies. He was as common a man as anyone, helping in the kitchen to cut the vegetables and playing with the monkeys and cows. He didn't leave his interests. He studied very well and was in love with everything, including rocks, monkeys and cows. He didn't leave anything. What Ramana has taught me I am teaching to everyone and everybody who truly listens to me will become Ramana. I want to be silent. You can always be quiet no matter what you are speaking or doing. Inside you will still be silent. Silence is always there, no special time is needed. I make everybody quiet without disturbing their routine of life and wherever you go you can keep this quietness because one is always quiet. In your own place, in yourself, no one can die. But the fisherman which is the mind will try to take you away and bring you to the market. Then in the evening you will be on the table. Therefore stay in the water and don't become enamored by the food of the fisherman because underneath the food is an angle that you do not see. Whenever you enjoy there is a hook but you don't see it. All enjoyments hook you, but now be aware and do not go near the easy food where you will be angled. Beware. Stay in the deep waters and food will come to you by itself. No fish will die in the deep water. It's only the greedy ones who go for the quick food who die. This is how to keep quiet. What should I do with my judgments? Don't judge at all and if you do judge your own self. Give up the concept of judging. If you want to judge, judge what the purpose of your life is. Judge yourself, judge your intention and judge your mistakes, not those of others. Allow others to do what they are doing. It is not your problem. Though I am a devotee of Shiva and have been chanting his name for years, I have recently been having dreams of Krishna. Why is this? Shiva lives in the cremation ground and you have gone there and so he is very happy with you. Because of this he has sent you out of the graveyard to enjoy the gopis with Krishna. When God is happy he fulfills your desires that you are carrying buried within. In your case he is removing your allergic reaction to women. Don't carry anything of the past. Let it happen and then forget about it. You have come from the cremation grounds so now enjoy yourself. 
Krishna teaches you enjoyment. Shiva and Krishna are the same God. Don't care about which one is before you. In the Shiva aspect he says to go and meditate in the graveyard and have fierce renunciation and determination. This means that you should go to where nobody can interfere with you, go where your mind is not disturbed. Stay alone in the graveyard. Then when you have everything, enter the universe because it is beautiful. This is the Krishna aspect. Why shun it? Why run away from it? You only need to know the proper tact of handling the serpent either by the tail or by the tongue and fangs. That tact you must learn from me because it has two tongues. And one simple prick of its fangs is quite enough. So handle this serpent by the tail and shake it and you will break its bones. Then, it will still be a snake, but it will be harmless because it can't move. Like this you must know the tact to handle everything, not from the front but from the back. How to kill the serpent demon. You must kill the demon as Ram killed Ravana and Krishna killed Kamsa. Kill the demon by purity. Few people can create what they want in their lives. Are you speaking on your own behalf or on the behalf of the planet? Look after yourself first and then look after your neighbors if necessary. It seems that since we are made in the image of God that we could have that creative power or will to satisfy our desires. But instead we live in fear and frustration. If you believe you are made in the image of God then it will be all right for you, but you don't believe it. If you believe that you are the image of God, then there will never be a problem since God will look after you. But this image is running after something else not God, but demons hence your fear and frustration will never end. But your fear and frustration will vanish when you come to satsang and stay with the teacher. If you try to do it yourself, you will only listen to your ego and mind and you will be frustrated. See that you don't touch the ego and mind. Never touch it. Only then will you be happy. Don't follow the foolish. Follow the footsteps of the sage and you will become a sage. Only one in a billion on earth are really wise and know. Know that you are being pulled up from the millions of pigs on earth to be eternally happy and to challenge death, to be untouched by death. On this side this is the reward, on the other side is the slaughterhouse. Pick up what you want. You won't find satisfaction to the physical desires of your physical embodiment. Nobody is happy, not even the kings and certainly not the beggars because they are all ordinary people governed by the mind and ego. How can we make our universe a more colorful and happy event? The universe is given to you to play in, not to cry about it. You are not to cry, weep and suffer. There are so many beautiful things like the forests, rivers, animals, mountains and birds all for your happiness. But you are suffering and so the mountain gives you suffering. Find out how to sing like a small sparrow sings for the joy of everyone. Why can't you do this? Who stops you? The only problem is that you want to do things the way you want them done. Leave everything in the hands of the divine and your activities will be divinized. Surrender your will and you will be happy. Surrender your will to the will of God. Let it be done. This will give you happiness though nobody ever does it. Just try it for a day at least. I thank you for your love and compassion. How can I be like a bird who leaves no footprints? If you are always in satsang you will not leave any footprints because you will not look to the past attachments. When you are free of attachments you have no footprints. This is very simple. Don't be attached because it will land you in difficulty even if they seem to give you happiness at first. No attachment ever gives happiness because both the attachee and the attached are in the attaché case. All attachments close you into a box and you are carried away by your desires. Don't follow any attachment and get rid of the company of those who give you chains of attachment. Keep the company of the free people who desire freedom. Think of freedom, walk in freedom, stay with those who aspire for freedom. This is the only way not to have footprints. Is there more to it other than just being and accepting what appears? 
that is enough accept what is presented to you and reject what doesn't come to you. If something comes accept it. If something doesn't come to you do not aspire for it. Don't desire what your neighbor has, don't think of it. Be contented with whatever you have. Don't look at others. This is the best teaching that you can have and you don't need any other contentment. Everybody is greedy and jealous and hateful because they are not content. They do not know the simple trick, keep happy whatever is given to you wherever you are keep happy. How can someone make a decision based on dharma and not ego and the I thought? The supreme dharma is to reject all dharma. This is your dharma. All dharma of doing things and not doing things don't care about. The supreme dharma is to reject all the dharma of the world. If you reject everything what will happen? This dharma will reach you to the perfect peace and love. Your supreme dharma is to reject all dharmas. Will you change my name? Govinda dances with illusion, Radha, but he knows he is dancing and keeps as a witness of both of these dancers. Dance with the circumstances, but keep aware of the dancers and of the purpose of the dance. I will give you the name Govindas, the devotee of Lord Krishna. Krishna is responsible and will give you all you need. Being a devotee of the mind everyone is proud. Don't sell yourself for the sake of pleasure and then suffer. How much time do we have and how much of this is for sleeping and eating? Don't waste your time. Make the best of it. Depend upon the Lord who looks after the creation. Surrender to the divine will, not to your will. Though I give you the name Govindas. A servant of the Lord only. I have met many crocodiles in my life, but you are the only one I trust. You are becoming a crocodile yourself and are even learning the language. You become like the association that you keep, you become one with them. I was living such a dark life of theft and robbing before coming here. What snapped me out of it is when I started to plan a murder. I am so glad I have come. You look like a good boy, where did you get all these bad habits? Bad company? Don't worry about your past and live the rest of your life in service to man, not killing them. Humans are a good species. They don't have tails. But those who do not behave like humans are really animals, they bark and bite others. You are a beautiful boy so behave like a good human being and not like an animal. Relationships, marriage and sexuality. The relationships you keep have a great effect on you. You become what you associate yourself with. To so stay only in holy company, only travel with those in the same boat. Nothing is better than satsang, so keep your friends here. Associate only with those going in the same direction and go to truth at any cost. Be the one for one is none. This is the basic good association. Where there are many there is falsehood. So send all your thoughts away and their bad association. A friend is one who does not disturb your mind. Maintain no friendship with ones who disturb your mind, no matter how close they are, be it a person, a place or idea. Do not accept the invitations of foolish persons because when you live in their society truth will not kiss you. Wicked habits and society will come back to you. They are very strong and so you must be. You are going upstream to the source, they are flowing downstream and will drag you along. The love that any two beings share is the love of self for self. Keep away all notions and intentions, and you are meeting all beings in this love. This is self-meeting self. All attraction is for the self only, though appearances are deceiving. If you use this word love for what goes on between skin and skin, it must be replaced by the word lust. Relationship causes separation, anger, fear and grief, it does not cause love. Understand that you are not in love with a body. Body, be it man or woman, is a corpse. Know that what appears to be love for an other is really love of self because other doesn't exist. Though this innermost love can be given to no other. Love of friends is for the sake of self, not for body to body. 
True love has no lover or beloved because all love is love of self. If you want to really love, love the supreme self right now, love the ultimate truth. This love is freedom. Wherever there is two, there is fear of separation, and this separation must eventually occur because body meeting body is transient. Only marriage with freedom will last. Any friendship with anything else will not abide and will bite you in the end. This isn't to say you should run away from relationships, nature is not foolish, man and woman together is okay, being a householder is not a hindrance to freedom. Even all the rishis and gods are householders. You just have to be with the right person, going in the right direction so that you keep focused on self. Just remember freedom first. How can loving be more natural? Loving is natural. It is hating that is not natural. Love cannot become natural because it is the natural state. The unnatural state is to hate those who irritate you. This unnatural state will create so much trouble for you in this life, and it will create more lives in which you will be troubled. Be free of this by begging forgiveness of those who have insulted you lifetimes ago. Love who will not like it. Love everybody because love is God. If you love everybody, you will become God. As God, you'll never hurt your own creatures. This makes the difference. Love is natural. Console your mind and make it listen. Love all or it is not love, make your mind love this way, and you will see the magic of this every day. Then other people will come close to you. When they do don't hurt them. Is the feeling of love for a loved one a creation of the mind? Love of other is mind. Love for the self is not a creation of the mind. To love someone else is a creation of the mind and will not give you a good experience. You can only love self. Mind is destroyed when you love yourself and you can't love yourself with the mind. Apogee, my husband is a spiritual seeker and wants to focus on that, but I still want to have sex and a baby, can you help? All activities are possible in no mind. Actually, when you are meeting so close together, it is a form of natural meditation, though this is a different yoga than what I speak of. Do everything with no mind. Sleeping together with no mind is called meditation, and this is called the beauty of love. You become one, you are one and you will see that you are one. You are not meeting anyone else, you are not touching the physical forms of each other. This happiness does not arise from your body, but from another reservoir. Don't forget about this reservoir which gives you the bliss of this union. Go to this reservoir during every activity and you will see that the bliss is the same, whether there is no activity or the best of activities. You have to understand this secret. I want to share my life with a woman. Is this a distraction? Can you advise me? Why don't you enjoy life like that famous teacher recently taught? He taught people to enjoy sex now because you didn't know what will happen tomorrow. The example he used is that the same ladder you used to come down you must use to go up. Though it is sex which brought you into samsara so it is sex which will take you out and the bliss of sex is the bliss of Brahman. My teaching is different, neither coming down nor going up. You don't need an old bamboo ladder which will break. Now there's elevators that bring you to the top floor of the Empire State Building in seconds. Get in this express elevator and press your own buttons. You don't need anyone else. Inquire where you have come from and you will not be able to say, stay here. Here doesn't mean anywhere. No, you are always beautiful and fresh, shining everywhere. Understand this. Those who love are the wisest of this world's six billion. Very few will know it, because you are not to do anything and not to think about anything. This nobody knows. Here there is no teaching, no past, no time, no future. Just know who you are and that is all. This is what you hear in Lucknow. You came from all nations here to Lucknow because there is no country which you belong to. 
You are the self within untouched by earth, water, fire, air and ether. Instantly you will know this, and this is why you have come. Is it wrong to want to stay in duality in order to love? If you love your own self is it duality? If the wave loves the ocean is this duality? It is not duality, but there is a way of thinking otherwise. Unless you know yourself, even your own body is duality. But in sleep there is no duality at all. Even your body is not there and is not duality. No relations are there because you are simply sleeping. Though if you want to remove this, duality feel that you are sleeping. Sleeping means not looking at others as others, but all as one. When you dream the duality arises. Though many mountains and rivers arise when you dream, but when you sleep where do they go? It means that you create this duality. Otherwise all things are one. You create duality. I am here somebody is there. I am a woman somebody is a man. This is your own creation. When you wake up, everything at the first instant, instantly rises in front of you. Just an instant when you wake up from the formlessness of the sleep, everything is there in just one step out. Why should it be there? Where did you bring it? It means you create the universe. You create the relations. Where were they in the sleep? You don't even see your own body. No gods, no teachers, no students are there. Are you not happy without all these things? I feel that my boyfriend and I can help each other toward freedom, but we both are so fearful of abandonment that we cannot commit to each other entirely. You want to help each other toward God and toward freedom, but how can you do this with so much fear in your mind? I don't understand this language at all. Most people love each other, and yet this fear of abandonment is there. This fear I find only in the West. Here in India we don't have this fear. So, I advise you to be united with the very strong bond of marriage. The people who are afraid are those who are not married to each other, so they have fear. In India we marry and then it is finished. You can't leave each other, there is no fear. You have to stay with each other until the end. This union will bring you very close to divine light. During the marriage ceremony, the Vedic mantras will be chanted with the meaning that you have to walk together step by step, hand in hand, consulting each other before you do anything. Each one of you will give love and happiness to each other and not be interested in one's own self. You will live for each other. These marriages are permanent and eternal and with each other these people find peace, love, light, wisdom and everything. Don't have fear. I had two friends who stayed in Paris for 13 years without marrying because the man Michael would not agree to it because he thought he would be dominated and not allowed to see other girls. So I scolded him and told him how special this girl was and that she had lived with me in Rishakesh. I was very angry with this boy, very angry, and so I pushed him out of his own house. I had forgotten I was his guest. It was the month of December in Paris, and you can imagine how cold it was. Though his girl free and D asked if she could give him a coat, he will freeze master, he will freeze, can I give him a coat? I said no, he is a very bad boy, a very bad boy. I didn't care. When I woke up the next morning I saw a sign on the door, thank you master, we are going to marry now. So we performed a Vedic marriage with a Yagna and Homa. That was 17 years ago and now they have three children. It is a very good marriage. You have to commit entirely if you love someone. If you have fear you can't even meet God. Though, you must decide. This is my only advice. You can also live together without marriage if you have this understanding. Most of the sages like Dhyanaka, Vashishta, Maitri, Krishna and Rama were all married. The problem with being unmarried is that people usually think and dwell on the opposite sex more than a married person does. Though outside there may be a yogic posture, inside there are disturbing thoughts. Though why not be side by side? 
You can do whatever makes you happy. My partner causes me to suffer so much. I want to be free of this distraction. As the ass kicks the donkey and yet the donkey keeps following behind her trying to smell under her tail. Again the ass kicks and again the donkey with a bleeding nose continues to follow her. At this time the donkey doesn't try to ask any questions about realizing God. It just keeps trying to smell under the tail. This is exactly how most people are. Exactly. So you'll get what you want. You must be very sincere and honest. Then you can get it. It'll come if you have a pure heart. Then you'll get everything and all will be offered to you by nature. Try now or today or sometime during the span of human life. You will see how easy it is, but if you want two things at the same time it will not happen. Touch the nectar of love and see what is offered to you. Two things though cannot go together. We just can't break out of the rut we have developed together. Forgive and forget. Look at your own mistakes and not to the other's mistakes. Then you can lead a beautiful life. But most people make the mistake of finding the other person responsible for the trouble while they themselves take pride in their own purity. They believe that they don't make mistakes themselves. To forgive is divine, look at your own mistakes. You will see that it was due to your own mistakes that the misunderstanding arose. If a man makes the same mistake day after day then it becomes his nature and you must accept it. Now stop thinking about your girlfriend. Enough is enough. You are in satsang for two hours a day. You can give your girlfriend the other twenty-two hours of the day to suck you, but give these two hours to satsang to your own self. Do this, and you will not repent later. This is wisdom. Spend two hours for your purpose. Don't let your mind go out while you are in satsang. Slowly you will see the prize you will get for keeping quiet for two hours. More and more you must get attracted to what you actually are, the eternal self, and not to body, mind, ego, or anything with name and form which comes and goes. Discriminate between transient things and the eternal love that you are. Then do whatever you want, whatever you please. My heart is so filled with love and gratitude. Even though this love is always there it is sometimes covered up with fear and disappears. Love doesn't disappear at all, but this word love is mistaken for lust. Love is pure, it cannot change. If you once fall in love with your own self, there is no escape from it. But when it comes and goes, some person must be involved in it, and that is called lust, not love. Several years ago I had a husband, a house, a job, and a child, but the child died and the husband left, and I left the job. This is what I say, your husband was involved in this love. Here you have the difference between love and lust. Losing everything is a good sign. Otherwise, you never would have come here. For the sake of freedom, everything can be lost, and in your case it was in your stars to happen. You could not and cannot change anything and so you should not think about it or worry about it. After all, what benefit can you derive from relationships and for how long will you have these benefits? When the sparrow which twitters in you flies off they will get rid of you as fast as they can. This has to happen, so if it is going to happen tomorrow then understand it today, then you will be happy. Otherwise you lose the game that you are here to play. So take things as they come and be happy and lucky on this occasion. Now I experience an emptiness, but this emptiness keeps me apart from others, especially males, though I long for a man. There is no male or female in emptiness. You must be experiencing something else. You have been given some trouble by a male, but this doesn't mean all males are bad. You can try to satisfy yourself with relationships, but the time will come when you know that you don't need any relationship. This is why kings get enlightened. They have no more desires. Beggars are not enlightened because they are attached to their begging bowls and their robes and malas. The kings have so many queens and gold and diamonds and elephants and maidens. The night comes when they realize that it is all not enough. 
There is a story in the Upanishads of a king who had two queens. One was Maitri and the other Kaishini. The king was sixty, Kaishini was forty and Maitri was twenty. Just imagine the taste of the king. Maitri was the beauty of the land. One night he saw a glimpse of the truth and told the queens, I have decided to leave the kingdom. Tonight I divide all the kingdom and treasure and ministers and servants and army evenly between the two of you. Maitri said, When I came to you you said that I was the most precious thing in the world and that you were more attracted to me than to anything else. Though your desire to leave me is confusing, there must be something more beautiful than me because otherwise you would not be so foolish to leave me and the kingdom. So I will go with you and serve you and together we will find what is so beautiful. I give my share of the kingdom to Kaishini. They went into the forest together and both of them attained freedom. This is the resolve that is needed, that you would even give up your kingdom. Not less than this will do and therefore the kings have done it, and not the ordinary person who is so filled with desire. Get this and you will be the king of the kingdom of heaven. If you attend satsang with only the desire for freedom in your mind, you will be rewarded some day. This you will gain, and you will lose nothing. I feel that my fun life of music, tennis, girls, drinking and eating is distracting my spiritual growth. Self-realization doesn't tell you to shun the things that life needs to do. The self is not so timid to do or not do something. Self is fullness and accepts anything that you do. You say you are distracted. This distraction has to be distracted from your mind. This self is not afraid of girls. Is suffering needed to balance the enjoying? If you are trained in the yoga, I speak of, there is no suffering, only enjoying. If something is there you enjoy it, and if it is not there you enjoy all the better. After you are with the girls you sleep and you enjoy this better than anything else, even though you are not with them anymore. Though this is the trick, whether you are alone or busy with the activities of the world, you should not differentiate. Feel as alone as you are when you sleep. If enjoyment is there then enjoy it. If it is not there then enjoy that. Normally when you enjoy you must suffer, but if you learn the trick then suffering and enjoyment are the same. You must know, if things are there then enjoy, if they are not, it doesn't matter. My marriage has fallen apart, and with it, I feel that the part of me which was married is dead now. This is a beautiful death. After this death you can come to Satsang, but only if you leave him behind. He has left you, but have you left him? I have left him. And don't speak of him. You really haven't left him. You have to be strong. The weakness you feel is from the conditioning of male arrogance. I want a new name to begin living anew. Name is not important, what is beyond name is important. I will give you a name of that so you forget the world of names and forms. But if I give you this name, you will have to vow not to touch anyone who has a name. This is reasonable, isn't it? Sometimes I am very reasonable. Very good. Hello. Why do you recommend people in Satsang to marry? Why should you live alone? You can help each other in this relationship that is greater than the relationship with father, mother, brothers, sisters, children or friends. The husband and wife relationship is a very pure relationship. I recommend a married life because it is this life which will give you peace in the end. The friends which enjoyed your youth will not come near you when you are old, but your partner will because you are one soul in two bodies. It is very special and I can't explain it to the people of the West because they don't know the relationship of husband and wife. It seems to be out of fashion to be married. There's so much confusion in marriage in the West. There is confusion before marriage, during marriage and after divorce. What is the proper way of marriage if the purpose is realization? Realization of the self also is a marriage of the soul with the Paramatma. Harmonious life between two is only possible when freedom is their common goal. I can tell you about the Vedic way of marriage. 
First you have to ask some special guests to your wedding ceremony. Earth is your mother, and so Earth is worshipped first in any puja. All the elements are worshipped, as are all the directions and the gods and the sun and the moon. They are all called to the wedding as guests to witness and bless the puja. Then you eat honey milk curds and sweets, so that your speech is sweet. You are married for freedom. This is what you are moving through this species for, and why you are human this time. What is true trust and devotion in the context of marriage? The husband trusts the wife, and the wife trusts the husband, and there is no divorce, it is an eternal marriage performed before your birth. But Western marriage doesn't last long and people hitchhike between partners until they are too old for it. In the Vedic wedding you take an oath to not even look at another person. This marriage you cannot break. You walk around the fire three times which symbolizes the fire of life. Equality is shown by each taking a turn leading around the fire and each sitting on both sides of the other. And one attain enlightenment while married. I believe and the Aryan culture agrees that you have to marry. If you don't you will keep the other inside your heart and if you do they will be at your side. Sex is very important to everybody and so married life is necessary. If a lack of sex helped you to be enlightened then eunuchs would be the first to be free. Your marriage is the most important factor in your life. Brahmacharya usually is taken to mean celibacy but it means also to be with your wife or husband with the intention to produce children. Marriage is only Vedic. All other marriage in the West is not a marriage. Thing near yourself is real brahmacharya. You have said it is good to be married, but my experience is it is better not to be. In your case you spend all your time trying to be together, and you never found a minute to be alone. It is the aloneness that makes you happy and not the time together. When you have no more desires you are happy. Desirelessness is happiness. This only happens when you are alone without person, concept or object in your mind. You can stay as a couple, but never forget the purpose of your life, freedom. Two people can be together as husband and wife if they both have the desire to be free. Then there is no harm. The partner you have been with wanted you only for physical enjoyment so of course it did not work. You both have to be on the same track in order to be helpful to each other. There are so many couples here in Satsang living together and helping each other. Avoid those partners who only suck and lick your skin. Isn't it a trick of the mind to think I need a marriage partner? The trick of the mind is that you think you don't need freedom. Be wise. You can select a partner, but make sure they're on the same track. Marry the person who you are balanced with. I want to be free and I want to meet a man. But things are not going to happen. One at a time. Either you are busy with a man or with your own self. But I will give you a trick. First be busy with yourself, then if you are busy with a thousand men, you will not be touching any of them. I am usually so blissful when I am alone and I forget who I am when I am with other people. You can only be blissful when you are alone and not when you are with someone else. When you are with someone else you can't be happy because there is always a fear that the person may leave. There will always be this fear unless you learn how to live alone without other. From morning to night, you are always jealous and in fear and conflict. But when you sleep the fear is gone because you are alone. Not even your body is with you. You are alone when there is no contact with body, intellect or senses, then you are happy. Is there a time in the life of a devotee when it is better not to have sex? Sex and devotion can run concurrently. Are you satisfied now? There is no clash between sex and the search for truth, because truth is beyond all, beyond every concept and activity. Truth is not involved in anything. It is absolutely immaculate and untouched. Sex can be continued if you take care of yourself. One way to do this is to keep on laughing because then you won't get old. So when you have sex you laugh and tell me what happens. Laughter always is the best song. 
Self-realization is pure and cannot be polluted by semen or any effort. It is untouched. So with all these, self-realization can still happen. In the Upanishads there is a story of a prostitute who wanted to be free and started going to all the swamis seeking help because she heard that peace was available in the ashrams. But the swamis told their students to turn her out. Everybody rejected her, so she decided to find peace herself. He kept quiet, but the regular customers kept on banging at the door. When they walked in they saw her meditating and her face was aglow with light. Then they sat around her and started meditating, forgetting the purpose of their visit. This makes the difference. You are not to specialize your habits in order to win freedom because freedom is free of everything. Most saints tell their student to live a special kind of life, but ask the Swami if he is not a product of sex himself. None of them have won freedom. Though there is no particular rule about it. I want to be free is quite enough. It has nothing to do with your circumstances as I have pointed out with the story. For sex you need two bodies, but self doesn't belong to one sex or another or any body. I have children and I have grandchildren, and I have great-grandchildren too and none of them have held me up. You don't need to be without sex. How can I produce children without sex? Everything was there and I didn't reject anything. Does the quality of making love make a difference? The quality of making love certainly makes a difference, and this love is with your beloved one. That will make the difference. Make love with your beloved. Do you know who your beloved is? Is someone who you have missed and that beloved is waiting for you. So fearlessly you should go straight away to your beloved. This will be a very special meeting for the first time. Then you will become pure without thoughts, looking at your beloved. What should one do about the sexual drive? Drive it. But make sure you remove the concept of otherness before you do, and then look within. Then you are in love. Now what are you thinking? There is silence. Go deeper into unfathomable silence. Don't touch mine, touch only love. Papai G, I have three questions. The first one is why are the sexual experiences so attractive to the ego? The second question is, is the desire to be free of desire still a desire? Why can't ego live without desire? Can I be free without renouncing the world? The third question is why do I fear death so much? Your questions are about sex, freedom and death in that order. I think the second question should have been first. How to be free? Should have been the first question. All the other questions indicate that you want to be slave of your sexual desires. I want to be free of these desires. That is the second question only. You want to cling to your sexual desires. But these desires cannot be fulfilled. You need another person to fulfill these desires. How long can you stay with this other person? Could it be more than a minute? A few minutes. Two minutes okay. Then after this two minutes didn't the sexual object kick you at your back? You can see this on the luck now roads. A donkey fulfills its desire and still runs after the ass only to be kicked in the face again and again. With a bleeding nose he still follows her. This is what will happen to everybody. It is the donkey's nose but your mind which is bleeding. Your mind is bleeding. It is always going to the past to remember what you had done and so it cannot enjoy the presence. Presently you cannot enjoy the presence. All this enjoyment comes from the past because all desire belongs to the past. Yes it always comes from the past. Your enjoyments belong to the graveyard the past. Though now desire for the present happiness. But why won't these memories go away? Memory. Now I will tell you how to be happy. All desires need someone else, so that you can fulfill the desire. But happiness does not come from another person, though you attribute to them. 
It is like a dog who chews on a dry bone until its own tongue and gums start to bleed, and the dog enjoys the taste of the blood thinking that it comes from the bone. Though it is the instant when you are finished with your desire that gave you happiness, not the object of your desire. You need to separate from the object of desire to be happy and so if it really was the object which made you happy, you wouldn't need to separate from it. When the work is finished the mind returns briefly to its source because it doesn't have another object. That time nobody knows because the mind is in its source and there is only happiness. Then you see another object and your memory is engaged and you do it again. Like this you spent millions of years not knowing that the happiness comes from within you. When you know this there is no question of renouncing anything or even getting rid of your physical desires because you know happiness is within and so no physical attachment or relation can trouble you. If you have to eat food, it will not stand in your way. Like this all your body's requirements and biological desires are dealt with. They are all equally important. Don't give any more importance to the desire for sex than the desire for food. Just always keep in mind that I am the source of happiness and enjoy. But don't get involved with it because that is only a body involved with another body. Just see that both the bodies are enjoying. Let them enjoy. This is a very simple trick. Just enjoy witness it and don't get involved in it. The one who is involved is different than the witness. Can you answer my third question? Look at the faces of those sitting behind you. So many people have benefited from what has been said. They have such peaceful and happy faces but you didn't get it. You will just have to suffer for another 35 million years. You are an Indian and you are not getting it. That is why so many people are coming from the West. You must be ashamed of yourself. He points to woman nearby the answer to your questions is written in the tears of joy on this girl's face. Your face looks like a sheep. When there is peace there must be rain, but your eyes are as dry as the bones of a dead ass. Kabir used to try to help people, but none has been helped because nobody came to him for satsang. Kamali, his daughter, said to him, Father, you are wasting your time nobody comes to you for satsang. The next morning nobody came. Like you they came for some other purpose. I know your purpose, but I will not disclose it because you will not like it. People who come to find their own source of happiness will instantly get it. This is the kind of help that is available to you now if you look. It is up to you if you are bent upon not getting it. It is your choice. I can't force you. You are welcome to come here and I will do the best I can to serve you, but if you don't need this service lamb happy with you. You can do what you want. You can have sex with 365 women like the former Sultan of Lucknow did with his 365 wives. You can still see the houses that he built for his wives and the summer quarters which were built under the river. But even with so many wives he was still hungry for sex, and he died this way. The English came and attacked Avat under the command of Colonel Young. Everybody ran away except for the Sultan. He just sat where he was and continued to drink. The Colonel came to him and asked him why he did not run away when he had a chance. The Nawab's reply was that there were no servants to put shoes on his feet. This is the luxury that he had enjoyed. So why don't you enjoy a woman every day of the year? You say your question is unanswered. Well I can't help you any more. Papaji, I have experienced the death of my ego just now. The depth of your ego? Hello. As a child, I was abused physically and emotionally, and it is still a distraction. I know this is difficult, but you should not carry so much excess baggage filled with dead rats. Try to forget the past and stay here for a while. But I was raped by my grandfather, my father and my uncle when I was young. Of course you can't forget this so easily. This memory will stay for a long time, but here you will come to know that you are not this body which has been abused. You will know that you are the soul, the Atman, and that nobody can touch Atman. 
Atman has no relations because it is everything. This is true. You are Atman, you are untouched. Know this. It will work. I have also always been so fearful since this. I have been able to forgive them, but this fear persists. I push the fear away during the day by keeping physically busy, but at night it comes back. Physical activity will not help, you must keep your mind busy. It is like the newlyweds at the office who can do their work but can't keep their minds off their spouse. Keep your mind busy with the question, who am I? This question will keep you busy. Always investigate who you are, where you came from, and what your purpose is. Then you will forget everything else including all relationships. Keep your mind inside. Concentrate all the time on this advice. I know you can do it because it is the injured mind which is more capable of reaching peace. Don't worry. Stay here for your stay in happiness, and when you go, leave your baggage of worries here. All the children who have been abused in their childhood somehow should not carry this for their whole life. Past is past. It takes time but somehow you must forget. You are advised to forget the past. Parents who abuse their children will reap the fruits of their sins. You have not done anything wrong so why should you cry? They will cry here and in the hell. So you have to forget it. I was sexually abused by my father, but now I am experiencing such clarity and the ability to deal with this and how it has affected my entire life. I had a longing for a father who would not betray me and I even didn't trust you. Of course when you are afraid of a snake, you will also be afraid of ropes lying in the path which looks like a snake. Many people have come here with this problem and slowly they have forgotten it. It takes time to heal, this wound is very deep. So don't worry. As a fence protects a field so the parents must protect the child, and if they themselves are abusive who can save the child? Though the wound is deep. The joy of letting this old story go is overwhelming. It has also helped to have a partner who is truly here. It is often useful to divert yourself and so this boyfriend is a very good remedy that you have picked up. The more you get attached to a natural loving relationship the more you will forget about the unnatural relationships of the past. I have so much love and gratitude for you. Occupation and money. Before coming to you I was a therapist. Now I am wondering what will happen when I go back. You will be a better therapist because you will have greater understanding and much greater compassion. Simply your touch and your sight will help people and this is compassion. Before this work was a profession for you, now it is a compassion. You can do whatever you want to do wherever you want to do it. Wherever you will be will be here, so all of this is your domain. Wherever you will be you will be in consciousness. This is your abode, your place, your happiness. Work in this peace and happiness and teach all your friends to be happy. Give them this simple secret on how to be happy and you can do whatever you want. This secret will work itself by itself within itself. There will be no doing on your part, no pride of ego. You see, you will be working in a totally different way. Your work and your actions will not be dictated by mind and ego. You will be very spontaneous and natural. This work is not a hindrance to peace and inquiry. Any occupation you can continue with the grace of the teacher. People of all occupations have been enlightened, carpenters, barbers, kings and weavers. To stay with the teacher if you want enlightenment and it has to happen. I wish you the best of luck. Bon voyage. Thank you so much. It is very good that you came here. I love you Elamor Ryder and I feel that if I pick up my pen I won't be free. This is not what I am speaking. The work you need your physical body to carry on your physical activities. These activities you carry in the waking and dream states, but you don't have them in the sleep state because there is no mind in the sleep state. You don't need mind for enlightenment and you don't need any activity. Let your hand go on working, but know that inside there is something which is always quiet. 
This quietness is never disturbed. You can love that in your heart, but it will not interfere with your daily activities, so these activities can be continued. It is like a woman who is in love with the neighbor. Her husband goes to the office and her children go to school, and she takes care of them better than other wives so that they do not smell that she loves the neighbor. But as soon as they are gone she jumps the wall to be with her beloved. Like this you must love your beloved. Keep this love sacredly and secretly in your heart and nobody will know, but outwardly you can be busy with so many things. Apogee my job in Germany is very minded. I have to think a lot. Is there any way to combine this work which requires so much thinking with being quiet in the mind at the same time? You can look after your projects better when you are quiet in mind. If your mind is disturbed you can't do a good workshop, you can't even teach. Suppose you came to work at 10 o'clock, but before you came to work you had a fight with your wife and she showed you a chapel on your head. How will you teach? You can't. But if you are quiet you will have forgotten about what happened in the house when you enter into your workshop. Whatever you do you are quiet but you do not know it. You can test it yourself, before any man you will work before speaking before thinking you are quiet. Do you follow what I speak about? For any activity, mental or physical, you are quiet and so the activity comes from quietness. If you remain quiet throughout your work it will be very beautiful. You only forget you started from quietness just as a child starts with laughter, but forgets this joy as people abuse him more and more. But if by good luck this child attends, satsang he will remain as he is. This is the beauty. You are not to forget your inherited nature and your nature is quietness. With satsang train yourself, so that you are always happy and quiet, because unhappiness, Suffering and tension is not your natural state. To have good work, you must combine this quietness with it. Good work will always happen when you are quiet. When you are not disturbed. Then only the goodness will come out of your work. Though many of the great discoveries of the great scientists occurred in this quietness. Even things which are beyond hope of success will be successful when you are quiet. Sometimes I feel I must give up my work and become a real seeker. This is not necessary. A real seeker does not mean that you have to leave your family, your house, your country, and go to the caves of the mountains. Nothing will happen. It is not that the cave will give you freedom, it is your ambition. Your ambition that I am going to be free in this life is quite enough. Keep this ambition alive, whether at work or out of work. This will pay you in the end. Even while working it will remain the same. Suppose someone has a toothache and they meet a friend going to the beach. They will say first I will go to the dentist and get my tooth fixed otherwise I will not be able to spend good time with you on the beach because I will be in too much pain. So remove all your troubles if you want to enjoy on the beach. Remove every trouble that you have in your mind. So you can combine your work with this quietness wherever you go but your decision must be firm like a rock that I am going to be free, I am going to be in peace, love, and beauty in this lifespan in this year, today. I am a lawyer, but I fear that this will succeed in distracting me from the truth. Do not fear and continue the work which has come to you. You are an advocate, so help the innocent people when they are in trouble. Advocates are needed for this. Know the laws and give advice accordingly. It is a good profession, don't worry. Whatever profession is given to you, do it with full consciousness and awareness. Perform it as demanded of you. In ten days, I am going to join the Israeli army. I do not know if it is the right thing to do, though it is compulsory. Go to the army and practice what you have learned here in Lucknow. It will work. I was also a soldier in the army, and it didn't make any difference. An army man is better placed because he has a weapon and understanding side by side. Lift up your rifle only when needed. It is a good safeguard to ensure that no one attacks you. 
Also in the army you must be alert, like you are in satsang, and you will also learn concentration and meditation better than a typical civilian. They will also teach you concentration, when you align the sights of your rifle with the target. Then you will practice pranayama breath control, because you must shoot between the breaths and the heartbeats. You can be helpful to your country. They have a reputation for having good soldiers. A country with a strong army will stay independent and not become dependent slaves. I always feel that man should be as brave as a soldier. You cannot meditate if you are not strong enough. Freedom is freedom. Freedom from invaders, freedom from the ego, freedom from mind and everything else. You have to win freedom for yourself, and it won't work unless you are strong and your circumstances are favorable. Unless they are peaceful and lovely, you can't practice anything. First look at the neighborhood, it is more important than your apartment. Kabir was a weaver living among a community of rascals and thieves who would spit on him as he walked by. Though he tried to help them, eventually he just kept quiet. He said, Kabir you are living among the stupid people. You just keep quiet and let others reap what they sow, the fruit of their karma. Ego is more wicked than any men you will ever fight so you have to be careful. When you have to meditate, sit quiet and search for freedom, see to it that these enemies do to touch you. This neighborhood of mind, ego and senses is not good. We are all living in the company of these wicked enemies and we do not know when they are going to attack us, though most people are happy with these attacks. You have to be like a warrior and fight the traps and tendencies set by the ego. Fight by totally surrendering yourself to peace. To let go. Keep quiet. Sit down and don't worry who does what. They will reap the fruit of their karma. This is how to live wisely in this world. Very few people have lived this way. Always face the self. If a thought comes let it come, if it stays let it stay, if it goes let it go. If you are on a battlefield fight. If you are in the forest keep quiet. And whatever you do forget it and focus on self. When I was 20 years old, I was drafted into the Australian army and spent a year fighting in Vietnam. Now 25 years later, the nightmares still haunt me and my nervous system is shattered. I often consider that life is not worth living, though I also feel very close to a beautiful void which I know is my true nature. Please guide me home. Why do you fear fighting? Every soldier has to fight as you did. I also fought, but I was not troubled if I had to fight or I didn't. Fear arises when you are in front of a soldier of another country. The void that you speak about is the same as when someone is pointing a light machine gun at your chest, and you are pointing a 3 not 3 at theirs. At that time there is a void. Nobody knows who the killer is and who is killed. You need not be afraid of either. Your duty is to fight for your country, and you did this. It is better to die fighting for freedom than to live as a slave. How do you come to this void that you know that you are? Void means that you don't see any person, concept or object. There is no difference between freedom and the place with no person, concept or object. So then you must stay as such always. This is your fundamental nature, don't be afraid. Here is beauty, here is love, here is eternity, why be afraid of it? Here is peace and bliss. No one can taste it because they fear the void. This is your home, and it is where all must return. Let it not be too late or you will repent later. Therefore now is the time. To spend an instant on you on this void. An instant, a finger snap, a second, half a second, half of a half of a second is quite enough. You should ask how you didn't get it. Nobody has spent this half of a second. Though people may live for 100 years they cannot spend an instant on themselves because they are hunting something else. They want some person or object to be with. Now you do it here, in this second that I speak about do not think. For one finger snap do not think and do not make any effort. Then tell me what happens. I said don't think. 
you are still thinking. When you do not think your face will be very different. Try to do it now, though trying is not really needed because you will only try those things that you have heard of or read about. Trying is always for something of the past, not for what is immediately present. The present doesn't need any thinking. When you don't think you will see that you have achieved everything worth achieving, then you will not repent even in the face of death. And when death does come, she will be afraid of you. Try it. Do you have anything more to ask me? I do not know what not trying means. The trying the trial must belong to the past. Tell me what does not belong to the past. Tell me what you have tried that you have not heard from some person. It comes from the past and so your accomplishment belongs to the past. But this is not the past because it is not time. There is no past, no future and no present. So you will get it by not trying, not making any effort. Now do you understand the meaning of trying? Yes. When you do not try you are quiet, but when you try you are in trouble. I so enjoy being in your presence. How can I live in the world without throwing away things and without holding on to them? It is like the choice of either throwing your money out the window, putting it in the bank, or giving it to friends. I will tell you how the wise use money by taking you to the banks of the Ganga in Calcutta. There was a man there who had some coins on his right side and some pebbles and stones on his left. With his left hand he throws a stone into the Ganga, and with his right he throws a coin. Then he saw whether or not there was a difference. Like this he threw them in every day. Whatever money came to him, he would throw into the Ganga. Finally, he found no difference between the stones and the money. This man was no other than Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Take money for what it is and don't be trapped by it. We must learn from these stories. I was in Madras and when I read the story of Ramakrishna. After I read it, I went to Marina Beach and threw everything I had into the sea, not even saving the bus fare home to Mount Road where I was also working. One day my wife and children wanted to come with me. Generally, I went there alone on a Saturday night and would spend the whole night until dawn meditating. So I said to my wife, when I come here, I throw away everything that I have and so, you must do the same. Throw away your jewelry from your hands and ears and feet and neck. But she didn't want to do it because she couldn't understand why. About a week later our house, which we rented from a school teacher who lived below us, was robbed. This man below us had six daughters and a boy with polio who couldn't walk. Just look at the fortune of this man. We were coming home from the temple where the Krishna Janmastami celebration was going on. As we approached our house I could see the school teacher descending on a ladder down from the balcony of our house. We went into the house and discovered that all my wife's jewelry had been stolen along with all the money, all the saras, and the rent receipts. I knew that the landlord had taken them, but I assumed he took them to keep them safe in his part of the house. After a few days, I received a legal notice from an advocate that I had not paid the rent for a year and I had to pay. Since he had stolen the receipts what could I do? He was very much in need of money and I had actually paid three months in advance. Though I appeared before the magistrate and explained everything, and how this teacher was so in need of money to support his family and to pay the necessary dowries for all his daughters. The magistrate asked, did you lodge a police report about the theft? I replied, no, I saw him take the items and thought he would return them. The magistrate understood and could see that I was honest and so he said, Punjaji, in these days you take care because this kind of honesty does not help you. The case was dismissed and as we were moving out of the house, the neighbors told me that he does this with every tenant. So you must use your discrimination and do the right action at the right time. We have discrimination and we must use it before we do things. This is what this story is about. On the seventh day of the dismissal of the case the only son of the teacher died. Soon after this man was bitten by a snake and died at the age of fifty. 
if you cheat someone then nature is not going to leave you alone. You will experience the consequences. I asked his wife and children if they knew that this was the result of what he had done. He could not bear it and had to die. Then, I asked them about the stolen jewelry which I knew that she knew about because she had been holding the ladder for her husband, but she totally denied it. Couldn't believe it, even though her husband had died and the case was dismissed she still spoke lies. Yet I offered my help to her. Though this is the world, you are helping me to get rid of my attachments with money. You may be attached to money, but money is not attached to anyone. It comes, stays and goes. This question must have come from the money because it does not want to stay with you. Money never stays with anybody. Just be quiet and don't worry and the blessing will be with you. I feel that I have come home and so I would like a new name to celebrate and to have for guidance. I will give you the name which means wealth, but you must use this wealth wisely and not like some foolish rich people. When the Shah of Iran fled to America, they checked his hand baggage and found a huge fortune of diamonds. Now what will he do with all these stones while in exile? He can't eat them. If he would have used some of this money to help his people and his country, he would have stayed the Shah and Iran would have been a happier place. This is the duty and purpose of the rulers and the rich. But instead he was greedy and look at what ruble Iran and the world has now. Just because of greed. Like this so many people have so much money and diamonds and think that they are rich. The truth is they are not rich at all, not at all. They'll be wise with the money that is given to you and know what true wealth is. And raising children. When do we first start to become aware of the ego and when does I first start to rule our lives? This is a very good question that nobody asks. When does the ego start? How and why does the ego start is a very good question. It starts with the parents, I think. They introduce relationships and hence the ego starts to separate and the child belongs to sisters and brothers and relations. Then a priest baptizes you and tells you that you are a Christian or Buddhist or a Muslim. And the ego starts to think that it is superior to others because a priest said that others will go to hell, but you will go to heaven. Though there is a religious ego, as well as one of the country, thinking that your country is somehow superior. Like Americans who think themselves superior to all and this is true in terms of money and warfare. This just supports ego, like the way the world goes to America for food and education. The ego I am German or I am American or I am Indian is a barrier that is very hard to remove. But when you do you will be a person belonging to the earth which is common. The sun is the same in Asia, Africa, or Alberta. It is the same sun and the same mother earth, the same sky and the same breeze, but we don't accept this which is common to all. If our relationship is based on wisdom we will know that we all belong to one earth, one world, one universe. Then you will be able to understand the environment, mental oneness and you will sit in peace within. How can you sit in peace when you are afraid that your neighbor is attacking you? When this fear comes you can't sit quiet, you can't meditate, you can't have any satsang. Though you must ward off the ego before you can start to be peaceful. Have no fear. My daughter is just starting the terrible twos. Is this the point where a person develops ego and moves away from a natural state of consciousness? I think the natural state of consciousness does not exclude your children, your relations or anybody. Rather it includes everything. It includes everything and you are not to exclude yourself from anyone to be consciousness yourself. This self contains everything and yet you can advance towards it. Some people don't understand and think that they shouldn't love their children and their relations so they run away to the caves to be alone, but they are never alone. Though, I do not advise that one must reject everything. To realize yourself, you are not to take such a step. Sometimes she demands things very strongly like toys or ice cream. Though you are identifying as that sometime. 
Why not identify time as time? You consider it your time and so in this time you have to do such and such thing. You have not yet understood how to see from a larger perspective. Though if anything comes let it be done through you. Then you will have no problem with sometimes. Whatever comes just react just react. If a child is there then kiss her. If she needs food then give food. This is the way of living wisely. You express a fear that she is going to leave her natural state of consciousness. Truth does not leave you. You can stay. From truth we came and to truth we will return and in the truth we live. If you have this understanding, you will not hate anyone but you will love everybody. How can I help guide her? Will you help me so that I can help her? You must have full faith in yourself that you can stay wherever you are and that all action is done by that which is within. I am glad that you are taking care of the child and that you ask your questions. Though many people keep their doubts but do not open their mouth. There are so many mothers but they do not speak these things that you do. You are a lucky mother because coming to Satsang is absolute good luck. Stay on here for some time and you will know how to raise your children, how to raise your own self and beyond all how to raise something else which you do not know. Is not your children or your body but something else. Slowly you will know what this something else is which you have never known or heard of. Health and healing why you need a healthy body being a temple of God, the human body is a very rare gift of nature. It is a raft by which you can cross the ocean of samsara. Respect and adore this human birth, do not waste it. Take very good care of your body and mind, don't put the diamond in a plastic bag. You have to take care of your health because it takes a strong body and mind to be free. The strength and health has to be channeled. A strong body can sit in a strong posture and a strong mind can make a strong decision. Keep the blessed form of your body in good shape. Healthy mind and body is important for freedom because when the body and mind are sick the focus goes towards sicknesses in hospitals. Thickness and weakness steal too much attention to allow focus toward that. No pain is bearable or permissible. You should keep your body and mind as pain free as long as possible. This is very important. Good health, strong mind and desire for freedom is an excellent birth. Your body is your boat, don't let the water simmer in. How to keep a healthy body the worst pollution to the body is bad thoughts and the worst thought is I am the body. Your diet is also important so eat sapphic food. Simple food cooked with love and eaten with friends is tastiest of all so take good care for your food. Causes no consciousness cannot be touched, it cannot be sick and it can't meet with an accident. Only the body becomes sick and meets with accidents and dies. Truth has no beginning or end of disease you need a healthy body as a vehicle but if you take yourself to be this vehicle you will suffer because I am the body is the origin of pain. All diseases are minor complications of the disease of not knowing the Atman. So first take care of yourself, know yourself and then take care of others. All diseases are from previous births and are carried into this life in the genes. The exception are those due to accidents which are carried in by karma alone. A mind attached to anything becomes a sick weak mind. A weak mind will keep going to the garbage of attachment and this causes the nervous system to get squeezed and weakened so it cannot handle this very energetic decision for freedom. A strong mind is needed to make the strong decision and handle the power that will come with it. Do not fault beautiful nature for your poor health. It is your responsibility to stay healthy and to keep your body and mind in harmony with nature. Thickness is not the fault of the rain or dampness or heat, but is the fault of your poor habits and foolish decisions and your weaknesses caused by these habits and decisions. Otherwise, there would be no sickness. Mind engaged in the past will make you sick body itself is a sickness. In this living moment no one is sick. No I am not the body and you will be free from disease. 
leave behind everybody, even I, and who will jump into this freedom, and where is this freedom? All pain belongs to objectification. Pain is only in the head, not in the heart. Heart needs no healing because nothing touches it, only memory hurts, not heart, only concepts suffer, not reality. I am body as I am suffering. Body itself is a pain, I have a body is a pain. The body is inert, it itself cannot suffer, only the concept of I am the body can suffer. There must be past if there is pain. Mind uses life force to fulfill the sanas and desires. Too many of sanas and desires can drain the life force out of you leaving you weak and open to disease. What you think you become and so consolidated vasanas become the physical body and dormant vasanas manifest as the cycle of birth and death. Pure thoughts lead to pure vasanas and tendencies. Pure vasanas lead you to health satsang and freedom. Impure vasanas lead you to disease, mischief and destruction. It's not in the lot of everybody to be happy and rid of old habits. The healing of disease first you must decide that you want to be free of pain and suffering. Without wanting this nothing else will work. Inquiry is simply looking unto your own self and this is how you will remove your illness. Direct your mind to consciousness and do not stir a thought. Here and now look unto your own self. Stay quiet, no reasoning, no understanding. Looking to other brings misery and sickness. Give up all notions, mind is a notion itself, so get rid of it and you will be free of pain and suffering. When I, has dissolved into the self then everybody is healed. So heal yourself before others. All diseases can also be cured by prana, even the disease of bondage. Prana is an energy which can be utilized for freedom, but with prana you still need an eye. With awareness, you do not. Though we usually use the mind and awareness for freedom, prana also will work, but it needs special food and circumstances. Prana should not be disturbed by poor food and circumstance. Physical ailments and mental diseases must be removed. The firm decision, I am not sick will cure you because you are what you think. So whatever you think you will get, think you are fine and you are fine, think that you are in hell and you are in hell. Think I am suffering and you are suffering. Replace the thought I am suffering with the thought I am free, I am freedom, I am consciousness, I am not the body. Do not kiss your ego by saying I am suffering, rather kiss yourself by saying I am free. Healing your body is like doing the laundry. First know yourself and then your body will be healed. Body is just a state of consciousness, know the substratum, this is reality. You can use therapy to heal when needed but don't get lost in it. Just find the source of sadness and mental suffering and innocence will reveal itself. To forgive and forget is the best medicine for curing all pain. Let the thought that causes pain come into the present and discharge into emptiness. Do this now. Why do we have to give up the world of forms in order to be identified with self? I do not tell you to give up form to be identified with self. This form is the temple of God, you have to appreciate this form as you do God in the temple. This body is the temple. You have to worship it and keep it up very well. Don't waste this life and body by fasting. Don't be like some people who are so weak and unhealthy that they can't even sit in an asana to meditate. When they do sit they fall asleep because they are too weak. Though eat well and live well. This form is a gift from God so that you can recognize that within it. Can meditation help physical ailments? Yes I have seen it many times. One woman who sat just once with me was cured of juvenile diabetes. Meditation will cure, but you must have full faith in what you want out of your meditation. Wisdom, light, and love will also be given by this meditation when you have a strong desire to get rid of physical ailments because mental ailments are also cured. In some physical and mental diseases people seem to go into a space of no thought. Is this also no mind? 
No. No mind gives you happiness, not suffering. The state of dreamless sleep is similar to no mind, because sleep gives you happiness. The dream and waking state of mind, but not the sleep state. What you talk about is when the mind is in so much tension it can't function. This is a sick mind, not no mind. With a healthy mind your body, thoughts and activities also are healthy. Be with those who have a sick mind and see that their needs are taken care of. This is all you can do. If there is something bothering them you can change their circumstances. Whenever something old bothers you, you can do this. It helps a lot. If you are in a situation that is peaceful then carry on. But if you are somewhere which disturbs your health, your mental health and your neurological health then you should stop it. Think about the consequences that the affair at hand will give you. Most diseases are brought from previous incarnations. Health is a matter of karma. Good health is good karma and poor health is bad karma. If someone doesn't use their good karma and health to win enlightenment, it is bad karma and they are stupid, foolish and wasting their time. A sick person's mind is attached to fear and sickness so they cannot get freedom. But those who are fearless and free of disease can devote this whole life to freedom. It is best to spend this life in the pursuit of freedom. Though many people pursue sex and other short-term satisfaction and not permanent peace, they follow in the footsteps of sheep. Be healthy and strong and follow your own path like a lion. Don't let yourself be herded. People get so unhealthy by thinking and even kill themselves by thinking. They never just do something. When they walk they think, when they drive, they think and get into accidents. You seem to be unlooking and healthy. How old are you? I am 53, but with a light in my heart, it is very easy to look young. And what food? Food is most important. You must have a vegetarian diet and spend your time with good people. The most important aspect of your life for living happily is your partner. They should be nice, weak-tongued, healthy and listening to you as a peer, not commanding you as a superior. This will relax you and give you a good life. To remain at peace select a person who is very nice to speak to and to live with. They must be equal. If you ignore this you will suffer. Together take good care of your habits and you will look younger than your age. I prefer that you have vegetarian food. This diet will give you a peaceful mind because vegetables are sattvic. Eating animals can be very unhealthy because people take on their diseases and their unhealthy states when they kill and eat them. Use vegetables instead of meat and you will have a peaceful mind because your mind is the essence of what you eat. You can give the gift of this diet to your parents also. I have such a painful back injury that I am not able to sit or walk. I have been weak for three years and several times I thought I might die. How do I step out of body identification, especially when there is such constant pain? You cannot get rid of body identification when you are sick, so you have to get well and after taking care of your physical problems speak of other things. When a man is sick, he is always identified with his pain whether he is in bed or out on the street. His mind is always on the pain. How can he inquire into his self? It is not possible. Someone who is having a toothache may be working in the office, but he cannot forget his toothache. After work he will go to the dentist and so all day this dentist is in his mind. So it is not possible at all unless your body is very strong and your mind is still. Both body and mind must be very healthy and then you can speak about the realization of truth. Otherwise, it is not possible. You are advised to take care of your problems. Do it to some doctors. Sometimes I can watch and know that I am not this passing form. It is not true. It is not true. How I break free of this physical pain? You have to consult a doctor. Take good care of your body and mind so you can cross the ocean of desires. Take care of your body first and don't speak of enlightenment before this. 
pain must be removed where you concentrate on pain. When the vasanas and pain arise, be strong and look at it. Pain only leaves by discrimination. When you know what is real, there is no pain. The more pain there is, the faster the thoughts arise. What can I do about this body that tortures me? What is this pain about? Where did you get it, and why did you accept it? It comes from my mind, and you accepted it. Do you like it? No, I don't. If you don't like something, what should you do with it? Throw it away. So why don't you throw this out? Admit that you love it. If you truly do not like it, it will instantly go away. If you vomit, do you put this vomit in your pocket? Do you keep what the stomach has not accepted? This is what suffering is: clinging to what should be let go of. Nothing can bother you unless you cling to it. Most people like pain and suffering and death, and this is why it is there. You have to decide that you want happiness, and it will be because it is your nature and it is due. First, you have to decide to be rid of this pain, or nothing else will work. If you want to keep it, no god can help you. Everybody has been suffering for millions of years. Now you have a beautiful body, so don't waste it. You may not have another chance for a long time. Simply say, I want to be free of all pains, all sufferings, and all deaths. All of us are here to make this decision here and now. I want to be free. Don't wait. I get so angry and frustrated from it sometimes. Anger is a curse which cuts short your life by burning the entire nervous system and troubling your breath. Express your anger and kiss what makes you angry. It is no problem to get angry. Just don't remember the circumstances which made you angry and don't carry anger or love. Forget everything. I had no intention to come here, but suddenly I find myself in your satsang due to my leukemia. If you have a deep will for something, it is fulfilled by good or bad circumstances. If you would have been a healthy woman, you wouldn't be here. Six months ago, the allopathic doctors gave you three weeks to live, but Ayurveda has kept you alive this whole time. I know for certain allopathy could not cure this disease, but in Ayurveda it can be cured if the doctor is experienced. I have seen it. There are some herbs which can cure it. Now you are in satsang, and you will understand what life and death are. This understanding removes fear. I will give you a method that I use on people who are dying from a disease. This may even totally cure you. Sometimes I feel very disconnected with everything, and there is a great sadness because all suffering just cries out. This body is connected with objects, but when you are ill, those connections get cut off. It is the body which has relationships which come and go, not the atman. Body means sickness. There is nobody in the world which is not sick. Even the babies have sickness following them. Body is disease itself, and so it has to die. Though it is better to give up the identification with the body. You are untouched and cannot die, and you have no relations with anybody. This you must realize, and then you will be free of sickness, whether the body is thrown out or not. Don't care for that. I so much respect your unshakable commitment to Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram, and how you destroy the darkness. In the last two and a half years, I have not always been a good boy, and often did not follow your good advice. Finally, all my bad habits led me to hepatitis, which shook me up like never before. You had hepatitis? Yes, it was a good disease. You had to stay in bed and look at your body and yourself. Yes. I realize that if there is no body, then there is no Buddha. So now I am taking care of my body. It is good that you learn even from hepatitis. It is good to get a teaching out of everything. You learn from the disease also. It is a warning to a person that someone has done something that he should not have done. Perhaps drinking water or eating a food that he should not have. This warning must be taken care of and treated as a lesson, so that you do not make any mistakes. Any disease that you get has something to do with your decision. 
wrong decisions, wrong food, wrong association and wrong environment are the causes of disease. You have to change them to get good health. With good health you can do many things. With good health you can meditate, not otherwise. You can't sit quiet if you have trouble in your eyes, nose, ears or anything on your skin. Many people are suffering here, and they say that they cannot keep peace. Other than this you have a healthy happy body. I have always been connected to you beyond mind and world, though we rarely had physical contact. May you be in your body longer than any Buddha before. This world needs people like you who hold the torch of wisdom so well. You have been named after the Buddha and so you are well looked after by your own truth, but you wear Shiva on your chest. It is a love affair. Yes learn about this. He has a trident in his hand, and the Dumulu in the other. This Dumulu, this drum, is the dance of freedom he dances when the world is destroyed. He is very happy after destruction. The snakes around his neck mean fearlessness and the ability to drink the poison of the universe and yet keep happy. The snakes are desires and he is fearless and immune to their poison. This is his jewelry, his decoration, the trident in his hand and the snakes around his neck and arms. He wears only a tiger skin and when I saw him and Parvati on Badri Narayan they were sitting on a bear skin. Everybody must be Shiva to be free of all the species of the universe. This is not only a symbol, not only a legend, but everybody must be Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. I am Shiva, I am the most beautiful person in the world. I am peaceful. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. This must be a wish in this life. I am very happy to see you so happy and healthy. I have been genetically tested and it has been confirmed that I have a fatal hereditary disease of the nervous system. I want your help. You have fear in your eyes and it has spread throughout your body. Your skin is pale and it shows the fear also. You have to remove the fear. I will tell you a story of fear. In the springtime in India, we celebrate a festival of colors called Holi. What most people do to celebrate it is to throw colored powders and water on each other. One boy kept a bucket of blood red water in the bathroom that morning to throw on his friends, but his father accidentally used it to wash himself after he used the toilet. When he saw the toilet was all red, he was instantly horrified because he thought it was covered with his blood due to some bleeding cancer. He thought he would be dead soon. He raced to the hospital where the doctors agreed with him, he was dying quickly. The scalpel was inches away from his stomach as he laid on the operating table when the phone call came explaining the holy blood red water. Instantly his fear was gone, his cancer was gone and his dying was gone. After all, only fear had made him sick. Though you have to remove the fear by disbelieving what the doctors say. You can remove the fear by meditation or by a mantra that I will give you. I have been diagnosed as having cancer. I don't know if it is worth fighting, but also it doesn't feel right just giving up. I have been doing vipassana meditation and reading books like I am that. Can you give me guidance? Would you have come to luck now if you had never had this disease? No. Would you have done Vipassana or read the book by Nisargad, Atta Maharaj? Maybe. Maybe not also. Maybe is doubt, and those who doubt are not decided, and they are not here. Though this disease is welcome because it has brought you the understanding of how your life should change, and it brought you here. Without this disease you would have just enjoyed your life with your partners, and not turned to yourself. So this disease is welcome because it will make you fearless of death. Life must end and whether it ends today or tomorrow doesn't make a difference. You must know that this body is not so important and if it gets worn out you should change it with another body. It is like a t-shirt, once worn out you just throw it out and change to a new one. This life is a blessed life if you know you are not the body and not the mind. Knowing this where can any disease land? 
Disease comes only to the body, and if you know you are not the body it cannot trouble you. Though now forget about anything that is attached to your body. Leave everything. Forget all senses and objects of senses. What is left then? What is left, if you forget about everything that is connected with your mind body and senses? What is left? Just bear a. Though always think of just here. Walking, talking, waking, dreaming, sleeping. Only think of just here and the result will be that you will know I am this and not that. This is the purpose of life. We all have come here to know who our father is and where he lives. We all have come to return to him. This is what we do here in Satsang. We remind each other that we are only our own self and nothing else. Find out who is your own self. So think of this and talk about this and it will come forward to you and reveal itself to you. You must however be very true and pure in your desire to meet it. You must decide that you will meet that which you have missed for generations. This desire must be very firm. They hear and see what happens. Healers. I am a therapist working on the energy of people. Sometimes this gets out of control and goes spinning into pain, sadness and anger. Most therapists are not happy and not healthy because as they relieve others of their pain and suffering this all goes into their own minds and bodies. Therapist takes the pain and suffering even if they don't want it. This is a trap of the attempt to have compassion. It is better if you shift your profession. I can see that the pain of others has migrated from your mind to your face. Face is the index of mind. Get a profession which gives you happiness. Don't suffer at any cost. I feel that it is the business of the Creator to look after the world. He can cure everybody of anything and everything, but what will you help? Also this world is meant for a place to suffer and indeed everybody is suffering except a few like Saint Kabir. If you want to be happy and peaceful find another job. I own and direct a medical center in Berlin which keeps me very busy, but what I really want is the peace that I find with you. Do I have to sell my center in order to have this peace? You don't have to close your clinic. Doctors are very useful to people and it is a good way to serve. This was originally a profession of compassion, though nowadays it is a profession more interested in making money than in showing compassion. You can live a normal life and carry on with your center without compromising what you have found in luck now. How can I use satsang in my healing practice? Do not forget your guru. Whatever you do is not your responsibility but his. He will take care of everything. Just remember that it is the guru that takes care of everything. Is there a difference between healing and teaching? When you are healing you cannot teach and when you teach you cannot heal. Healing takes a healer and a patient. The teaching takes no teacher and no student. Do you have any other advice for me as a doctor? As a doer did you say? Remember that you are not the doer. You are a tool in the hands of the divine. Stop inflating your doctor arrogance and serve people instead. Remember that you have the power to heal people by simply verbally consoling and reassuring them because they trust you. This trick is in the hands of the doctor. Smile and tell them that they're all right. Doctors may help people after they get sick, but if they eat the right food and breathe clean air, they will fall sick in the first place. So tell people how to stay healthy in the first place. Eating simple food prepared with love is one of the best medicines you could prescribe. This is even better than meditation lama midwife. How can I remove the feeling of guilt and the fear of fighting with the authority of the allopathic doctors? They have no respect for the midwife and say that using a midwife is irresponsible. But listen to what they say and go on with what you are doing. It is a very good and compassionate job. Don't get afraid. You should also experiment more with water births. I see colors on the faces of people which seem to indicate their inner spiritual and emotional state. What is the purpose of this? 
Can you tell me about it? I've been using this talent to give people advice. These colors that you see are your own imaginations. There is no significant reason for it. What you are inside you see on the outside. If you are happy and loving, you will see that the people are happy and loving. If you are sorrowful you will see that everybody is suffering. So maintain your own health first. Maintain your physical, emotional, neurological, and your social health also. Social health is not very well known, but it is responsible to keep you healthy. If you are living among the sheep, you will bleat like sheep only. So change your environment. It should be a good environment of like-minded people. Then you will be happy, and you will see the same colors on all the faces. Death and dying. The reason why everybody wants to avoid death is because eternity is our real nature. Death is not to be feared because it is an enjoyable and happy occasion and it only hurts one who has anger, greed, attraction, and aversion. Death only comes to an active mind. Even the gods must face death. All die but there is no grief because the end, weller lives. Death is only the five elements returning to themselves. The essence of wave, ocean, and raindrop is still water. Nothing can be lost. When a raindrop touches the ocean it becomes ocean. So do not fear death for nothing can ever be lost, and nothing can ever be gained. Death only takes those who have become something. Death only takes the body, the dress. Death is a foolish notion. Samsara is desire, desire is samsara. Desire creates the dream and propagates it. At the last moment of being in this body all dormant tendencies, fears, and anxieties of the dream will manifest before you. The one that you are most interested in, the dearest thought that you see in this stream of mental events, will be your next birth. Any footprints in your memory will be your next birth. At this moment remember only self. Then when the heart stops, the eternal heart will take over. So don't worry, when death comes go laughing. I am having such a hard time being free of the trauma of my daughter's death. You are not in satsang if you are thinking about your daughter. Let these things be there. Who doesn't know the grave of a loved one? While here stay here and not connected to the past. Make use of the present, and what is presented to you in the present. It seems to me that death is permanent and the focus of love is gone. Is this so? If you remember that death is permanent, then you will know how to deal with things when they leave you someday. Even when your child was just born the death was following her and one day or another, she would be swallowed by this monster as will all the other beings. There is only one way to avoid death. That is, know thyself now. Everybody is in a coma. Everybody is senseless and sleeping. So the best way is to not waste time. Don't look for tomorrow. Do it now and find out what the reality is of the beings that appear to you. In the dream you have a relation with a beautiful girl and you love with her for years. But when you wake up where is this wife? Like this you have had wives and husbands for many births and brothers and sisters, where are they? They are a dream. Anything that appears and disappears must be a dream. What does not appear and disappear must be real. Find out what it is within yourself. What is that something which has neither appearance nor disappearance? Find out now. Hello. I want to die. You can't. Your body may dissolve, but you cannot die. You are not the body, you will not die. This is the experience you will get here. You are beyond birth and death. You must settle this before the death of the body takes place. Understand what death and birth are. Stay here a few days and you will understand. The idea I am not the body is totally theoretical Tomi. Can you make it practical? You have to know that death is for the body and that you are that which will never die. There was a man and wife who lost their only son and so they took the corpse of their son to a saint and asked him to bring him back to life. 
the saint said it would be very easy to do. All that they had to do was to bring a handful of soil from a house where nobody had died. So the husband and wife traveled all over looking for a place where nobody had died, but of course, they could not find such a house. Everywhere everyone had experienced the death of loved ones. Finally they returned to the saint endowed with knowledge of death. Whoever and whatever is born is born to die for death follows all name and form. When there is satsang there is no death because the one in satsang knows that death is for the body only and they know that they are not the body. Death is for the name and form. The nameless and formless one will never die. That is the one who had no attachment with the body, mind, ego, senses or objects. Make this theory into practice by knowing your purpose. Is it to enjoy attachments or is it to be free? Then your eyes will open and you will not be afraid of death. I see some other fear in your eyes. What is this fear? I fear that I will die right now. I feel that if I don't leave luck now I will die, but I feel like I can't leave. This fear of death is in the mind, and it is genuine because it will be the death of mind. Don't attribute the death of mind to yourself. When the mind dies you will live and you will be free. Mind gives you this fear and compels you to run away because it is the death of the mind that is immanent. The death of desire happens in satsang, but this is mind only. Do not fear. Persist, persevere, stay here and let your mind die. Stay here and overcome this death. Don't give your mind any more company. Don't be a coward. Invite death to come and you'll be eternal. You have only two choices, allow the mind to live or let yourself live. This is your decision. What has happened to make this fear of death so overwhelming to you? Last month my mother, my father and one of my closest friends died in England while I was in India. It feels like I want to avoid death because I am afraid of it. Nobody has ever avoided death from the beginning to the present date. Everybody who is born must die and since it is so natural why be afraid of it? Why be afraid of death? Everybody must die and by running away you will not save yourself. There's only one place where you can avoid death and it is this place. Knowing that you have never been born you are not going to die because you know that you are not the body. The body is born and so it has to die. Inside the body is something eternal that you do not know. If you be that who is going to touch you, if you know that you are not the mind or body or senses, that you are something within, who is going to touch you? If you know this then your fear is gone. Actually nobody is born and nobody dies. It is the mind that gives birth to this whole world. In a dream you are sick and the doctor says that you have only one week to live and so you are afraid. This doctor, the disease and the body all were in the dream, but when you awake the next morning where is the doctor and the dying patient? This you will know in satsang, it is all a dream. Wherever there is fear you are dreaming. When fear arises you are dreaming. All fears belong only to the dream. When you wake up there is no fear at all. Waking up means no fear at all and this is called the waking state. Then you will know that I am eternal, no death can touch me. This is fearlessness. So instead of running away it is better that you go and console your family by telling them how to be free from fear. First remove the fear yourself and then tell your friends and countrymen. Death will only take away something which has a form. Therefore all form will die, but you are that which has no form, you will never die, so don't carry any form of fear. There just seems to be some terror about death. Simply understand that whatever is born must die. You cannot avoid it. Everybody is dead, gods, sages and saints, everybody is dead and will die so do not be afraid of death. Death is a time of rest when the bird flies out of its old cage. Death is a supreme mother, a loving mother for all beings who do not know that she really is loving and who fear her instead. Problem is that everybody speaks about death without ever experiencing it. 
Very few people speak about death and post-death from direct experience and those who do are not afraid, but describe it as awesomely beautiful. This is the difference which generates so much fear of death. It is only the living that are afraid of death, not the dead. People have no authority to speak about something that they themselves have not experienced. Thyance cannot understand death, but once you know her you will know that she is the Mother Supreme who gives you the rest that you couldn't give yourself. So don't be afraid of death. It is a very lovely contact. No dead person complains that it is not good. Sit with them and perhaps you also will have peace. I have been praying for peace. Go to the source of prayer and there is no need to pray. People who pray are atheists because they pray to stones and concepts. What happens when a self-realized person leaves their body? There is no such thing as a self-realized person, because only when there is no person will the self be realized. When there is no person, there is no question of coming or going. The person is just a temporary appearance in the unchanging self. Is this person the jiva, the soul? Yes, and the jiva is the doer, a bundle or accumulated desires, doubts and fears. How to avoid death? Have you ever been quiet without thought? This is the way to avoid death. Do it now, don't think of past or future and I will find out if you do. Thing you do it will not do. Doing it is to keep quiet for one instant of time. In between past and future tell me who you are. I can't tell you. You say I can't but yet you are speaking. Who is it that says I have done it and I can't say it? You have never done. You lie. I try to do it. This trying is for the future. You have been with some stupid people who taught you this. Can you talk about what happens to consciousness at the moment of death and after the death? What comes after death, I will speak to you after death. How can I speak of things after death when I am now alive? You should have written to me after death. Don't forget now. Hello. My mother recently died, but I am not upset because it is clear that the self she is is the self I am and the self all around me. I do miss her, but I realize that I miss and loved her ego. I so appreciate your grace on the day that I found out that she died. You touched me so deeply. I am very happy with you. This is the teaching. Everybody who comes must go and this nobody can change. But the fact is that nothing comes and nothing goes, this is the truth. As far as loving her ego, these are not allowed into satsang. Just as you leave your shoes outside, so you must leave your head there as well. Losing your head for enlightenment is a very cheap bargain, don't wait. This bargain has peace and wisdom on one side and ego on the other. Take my head please. When you say this I can see the person who has no head. It is very beautiful, a few people are here who are very beautiful and are without heads. That saying is of the most benefit to those who come without a head, without ego. Can you speak of death and dying in heaven and hell? These are notions imposed on you. Along with the notion of heaven you have the notion that you are not in heaven. That is the impediment. You have to rid yourself of all these impediments in order to be free. You have to be rid of the impediment, I am not free. This is why you have come here. It is not to be free but for the affirmation and confirmation that you have always been free. Your whole life has been a long string of repeated affirmations, I am bound, I am suffering, I will die. These are the notions that you have entertained. Simply get rid of them. Freedom is within just waiting for you ready to hug you, but you turn your back. If anything is death, it is turning your back on yourself by carrying your own notions, ideas, and intentions of bondage and suffering. Now find who is bound, and who is suffering. Find out who you are. You are not the dress, not the skin, or the hair, or the nails. You are not the bones, or the muscles, or the brain. You are not the ego, or the mind, or the senses. Reject all these just for one moment, and what is left? 
reject what you are not and what is revealed in front of you. If you are not all these things which appear and disappear, what are you? What remains? Just I. I will remain and this I will not die. What you have rejected will die but what remains after all is rejected is before the concept of death and birth. Arrive home and recognize yourself simply by getting rid of all these notions that you have entertained for so long. I am a body, a mind and ego, senses, I am this manifestation. All these are notions and vanish in the sleep state. But since sleep is an ignorant state, you do not see what remains after these notions vanish to allow sleep. So find who is awake in the sleep state. That you are that you must be, and that is free. Even the states of waking and dreaming and sleeping do not touch that, let alone death and dying and heavens and hells. That will never die and that you are. Even if you say, I am not that, who is it that is conscious to know that you are not that? What is conscious of ignorance and doubts? Who is conscious of suffering and happiness? What consciousness is here which is needed to even raise a doubt that you are consciousness? There is nothing you can do to escape the truth because it is what you are. What is unreal is not even here now, even if I try and pretend. Exactly. Once you know that the rope is not a snake it can be hard to imagine it to be the snake, even if you try. Yet the rope has never changed. It has all been your notion, including the sticks and stones you picked up to kill the snake. Go and see for yourself that it is a rope. Keep quiet and abandon all notions and ideations and intentions. It seems like a lot of unlearning is getting rid of all the things you have been keeping in your bags and then getting rid of the bags. Then what is unlearned will reveal itself to itself. Speaking of bags, I am reminded of a Sanyasin who visited me about twenty years ago. He was quite famous in the South and had seventeen ashrams, but was obviously not satisfied. He had come to hard war with two bus loads of his disciples on their way to Badranath. This Swami was eighty years old, and I was sixty. He came alone to my hotel room after hearing from some friends that I may be able to help him. He strolled in and announced what we were not going to talk about. He said, Punjaji, I have been a yogi all my life. You may have seen my picture in the papers. I was buried alive underground with no food air or water for forty days in a controlled de experiment he with scientists and doctors to prove the power of yoga. I simply went into samadhi and that was it. So, I know yoga and there is no need to talk about it. He continued also, for decades I have studied in depth all of the Vedas and the Upanishads, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, the Brahma Sutras, Bhakti Sutras and the Yoga Sutras and all the books of all the religions, so we are not going to talk about all these. I teach all of this in my ashram so there is nothing in any scripture that you can teach me. Furthermore, you are not to say anything about Tantra, Yantra or Mantra. And don't mention Jhana or Najana either. Though Punjaji, I have come here for your help. Is there anything that you can say to me? I said. Yes, Swamiji, there is. But first, please, the garbage that you just hauled in my room with you, will you please take this bag and put it outside and then enter again? Then I will speak about something that you have not mentioned. He just looked at me not understanding what I was saying, so I repeated, I said, Swamiji, I am here to help you, but will you first bring this bag of garbage outside the door? Then when you come back and just leave it all out there. He went to the door slowly and turned around shocked. He looked at me and I looked at him. Then he came into the room and tried to touch my feet. Oh no Swamiji, I said, you are a sannyasin and a scholar and also you are twenty years my elder. I have no right to accept your prostration. He replied, for the first time I know what enlightenment is, I know now that I must leave understanding and all that I learned behind. Then I found light, then I found myself. I have been fooling and cheating so many people. Right now I am going to tell all my devotees the truth. 
When can I come back to see you? Wamaji, you don't need to come back. I replied. Later, I heard that this arrogant Swami was totally transformed and happy, and had gone into a long retreat somewhere. They'll get rid of all the notions that you have entertained and just be free. Freedom is already waiting for you for millions of years, but you still entertain doubts and fears like, I will be born, I am suffering, I will grow old and die. All these are notions and when you get rid of them you will know who you are. Do this now, don't postpone it even for a moment. In between the past and the future, who are you? You are not to do any exercise or any meditation. Here you will feel light. Can any death enter this moment? This is your own place, your own abode, stay here. My father's death took me to a deep timeless silence, and my mother died as if dancing, and as she said goodbye to her body we were one flame of love. Both of their deaths gave me so much love and freedom. Being with you brings me back to this beautiful gift. Papaji, can you tell me the secret of a beautiful death? It is an excellent death when somebody can die in full consciousness and say goodbye to the relations. This is very beautiful because most go crying and suffering due to attachments. At the time of death it can be a very painful affair for the person who is dying if they are attached to things. Then it is like tearing a sheet of cloth off a thorny bush. The thorns of attachment stick to the sheet of your mind and cause great pain. I saw one man who was dying and he was fighting with those who came to take him away. He even had a revolver and fought for one hour until he lay down dead. But a rare person without attachment only feels that the breath has stopped. Like this he doesn't feel anything only that the breath has stopped and it is finished. This is the death of an easy person, one who has been devoted to their own cause. They will have a beautiful departure from this universe. Even animals can have this beautiful death. Once an elephant who had three wives and five children went to the lake for a bath. As he entered the lake immediately a huge crocodile caught his leg and started to pull. He looked at his wives and children and cried for their help, but they just stood and watched. Though he was dragged into the deep waters, and he lifted up his trunk above the water to breathe one last time. As he lifted his trunk, he saw a lotus flower and picked it and offered it to someone unknown to him for help, and looking toward the skies cried for help. Now of course, someone who the elephant had never thought of before, instantly appeared and crushed the crocodile's jaws, and released the elephant. The elephant went back to the bank of the lake, but did not speak to his wives and children and went alone to the deep forests, realizing that the attachments that you are so involved with are of no help, but this is going to help you. He never returned, but after his death he went to the heavens. The last thought, the last breath can help anyone. I am afraid of death and I feel like I am dying. Everybody will die. Everybody. Are your grandparents still here? Are your parents? This dying will go on as you become the grandparents of your grandchildren, so don't worry about the death of the body. What is born must die, don't worry about it. There is a pleasure in death which cannot be found in life. Don't have the desire of keeping your body because when it gets old it is good that it dies. Bodies which are alive after they are too old are not good bodies to have. I will tell you a story about a group of people who wanted to keep their bodies young. There is a tunnel or cave near Taxala. As the death of Alexander the Great was imminent, though he was only thirty-two, he came to visit this cave. He had been told by a yogi on the banks of the river Jhelum that he would die young, and so he came to this cave which had a lake of the nectar of immortality in it. The only problem was that whoever went to investigate this lake never returned. Alexander of course was very clever and so he wrote chapter, Freedom. Freedom, Liberation, Enlightenment. This is your own fundamental ultimate self, this is being, not even I am being, just being. This is a still mind. The stillness is the greatest achievement. 
you will spread the vibration that you are to everyone, so keep yourself a blossom of love. As freedom you always leave good vibrations wherever you go. Enlightenment Enlightenment is to know your true nature which is silence. This is knowing everything. Freedom is knowing this with every breath. This liberation is silence, not touching duality. This silence is no doer and is the language of peace. Freedom is aloneness, oneness, not two-ness. When there is no object in consciousness, there is stillness and this is freedom. If you think at all that this world is real and as long as there is I and you there is no freedom. Freedom is knowing the I in me is the same as in you. This means you there is no difference. Remaining as presence is freedom, remaining in past is samsara. Freedom is always here in the heart of all beings. It is in front of you inside, outside, everywhere. What is bondage when freedom always is? What is not the truth? Freedom is free from all modifications of the mind. Freedom is when the mind is cremated, absolutely destroyed. Then mind is no mind, and anything that comes and goes does not change you because you are always full. In freedom there is no right and no wrong. In freedom there is freedom from right and wrong. In freedom there is no process or way, no here, no there, no this, no that, no in, no out, no wall, no depth, no understanding. Nothing has happened, nothing is happening, nothing ever will happen. No mind, no bondage, no freedom. In wisdom there is no phenomena, there is no giver and no receiver and so life is very beautiful, the world is very beautiful, and relationships are very beautiful, because they are all with yourself. The supreme is concealed by name and form, but when the truth is known it will conceal name and form. When all is lost then you are home. This is enlightenment. When you are awake, you possess nothing that can be lost. Being is the dissolving of all notions. All is dissolved when you meet this source. All questions, answers and experiences are only on the way to the source. Questions are in ignorance because enlightenment leaves no questioner. When you wake up, you will know that nothing ever existed. When there was subject-object or any duality you were in a dream. Realization is uncovering that you are already free. It is always here and only relieves you of bondage. It is throwing the bucket of your individuality into the well of being without the ropes of desire, intention, thought, or attachment. Don't try to go anywhere, just simply be. The only need is to be, not even seeing. It is so simple that it is difficult. It is here and now this very instant. The secret of freedom is satsang, which is to undress yourself of the mind. This is giving up beliefs, notions, desires and illusions. After they disappear consciousness remains as freedom. There is no today, yesterday or tomorrow and now. When nothing ever existed what is there to be free from? Emptiness has to be emptied of emptiness, freedom must be free of freedom. In freedom there is nothing to do and nothing not to do. It cannot be imagined or touched. Human birth is for this freedom, so smell freedom, inhale freedom, be freedom. Every moment freedom is here to hug you. Eternity is living moment to moment. The sun wanted to see the night, so it showed up at midnight but it still could not find any night or darkness. Though it is with ignorance, one look and it is gone. There is no ignorance, there is only truth. There can be no darkness in the light. With the dawn of the sun, mists of illusion evaporate. When the beggar is put on the throne there is a great shock, but indeed you are free. Body can stay in the shock of this happiness for only twenty-one days. This is why so many saints die young. Only those with a special appointment live long in the body. When mind is pure and there are no ripples you will know that you have known all beings from the beginning of creation. One glimpse of this beauty is enough for freedom for life. Remove name and form and you will see, and the seeing is being.
I am pure awareness. Say as such. What is enlightenment? Enlightenment is the substratum of all states. Realization is the firm belief, what is here is always here. Are there different levels of enlightenment? There are not levels of enlightenment, but levels in your approach. Serious approach, moderate approach, and the level of doing it in old age. When Ramana found it, he went directly to the place of Lord Shiva and not back to his old circumstances. Levels are of decision only. These levels are for the ego, not enlightenment. The light is there, and if you only half open your eyes, you will not see the sun. The sun is always there, and does not turn its back to the earth. The earth turns her back to the sun, and the result is night. There is no night or levels in the sun. There are no levels in consciousness. It is like the ego of the king which kept him away from the purr. But when ego was gone he immediately rushed in. Your own light and wisdom waits for you, but you have been postponing it for a million years. Does enlightenment change the body chemically or energetically at all? Ramana Mahar, he said that the power of the self was surging through him so strongly that he couldn't keep his head still. Are there any indications when one has realized the self? Is there a change of behavior? Yes, there are definitely some indications by which you can know that one has attained the ultimate. The main indication is that if you look at them or are near them your mind will be at peace. When you see a photo of the Maharshi, or when you go near him you sense something that you do not sense with any other person. Sometimes the mind is quiet due to fear, for instance, when you meet a tiger face to face in the forest. The quietness that I am referring to, is not from fear, but from love and peace. Though so test someone if you are not sure. You must test them. Whosoever went near Buddha had a quiet mind. To this day, 2006, hundred years later, even the dust of the earth wherever Buddha walked is giving people peace. See for yourself in places like Bodh Gaya, Sarnath, and Lumbini. Every grain of the earth in these places is sanctified. Regarding behavior, the actions of the jhani are perfect because there is no doer. Judgments of right and wrong is for religions only, not the jhani. Do you foresee a time in the not too distant future when there will be many people on earth who are enlightened? There is no future, there are no people, there is no earth, there is no one seeking enlightenment, there is no one gaining enlightenment. This is the final truth. Time is just a concept, and if you do not think about it, it does not exist. This earth also is your concept. If you keep quiet then there is no existence, and no one ever existed, and there is no time. Time is mind. When there is no time there is no mind. When you sleep there is no time and no world. This is up to you. Mind is a thought, mind is past, mind is everything. If you do not stir a single thought from the source, tell me what you see and what is there. Even you do not exist. Does enlightenment mean that you are always happy and never angry? Happiness always is. You will know this if you identify with that which never changes. About anger, if the situation arises for it, I can be ferocious like a tiger and I will not leave the person alone. Is it only possible to love each other when both people are self-realized? In self there is no other. When is a person ripe for enlightenment? The force of merits pushes you toward enlightenment, towards contact with the holy. Whatever contacts the holy becomes holy. Those who are holy will attain truth. Holiness is the main condition. Purity of mind is freedom free of all desires. If you remember anything you are not ripe for enlightenment. You have to be free of all desire for sense objects and the dependence on them for happiness. Desirelessness is the only happiness. If a sense object comes let it come, if it doesn't, don't wait for it to give you happiness, because nothing in the world will give you happiness, because nothing can give you happiness. This is certain. Nobody can get happiness from anyone except your own self, and this is available only when you have no desire. 
How simple you see. Does the destiny of a self-realized person end with the departure or is there a continuance of greater revelation beyond Mahasamadhi? The enlightened one is not born again and so there is no destiny for him. Destiny is for those who are not realized. They are in its inescapable grip. But the realized man has no destiny from the day he is realized. All the karma committed by him has no effect or reaction, so future karma is dead. The present actions are governed by the divine, and so nothing he does is other than divine will. Therefore, he gets no karma from present actions, because they are not attributable to him. The past karma cannot be undone, but it cannot act on him in the next life because there is no next life. Therefore, they will come to him in the form of dreams. In this way, a whole lifetime of karma can be burned away in just one minute of dream. The good karma that remains will go to those who love him, and the bad karma that remains will go to those who think and speak badly about him. You seem to be a Hindu. How can an enlightened person be bound by a religion? After enlightenment one has no hatred or judgment toward anyone. The enlightened one is a Hindu, and a Buddhist, and a Muslim, and a Christian, and Hebrew, and everything else because this one knows the essence of these religions, this one is the essence. The enlightened one finds no difference at all, and so you see representations of different religions on the walls of this satsang because we don't hate anyone. You need no brands or labels of anything in freedom. For myself, I was born into a Hindu family, and that tradition is very well maintained. But inside of you your Atman is neither Christian, Hindu, Muslim, or Buddhist. In this regard let it be called by any name, it doesn't matter. Take 100 cups and fill them with 100 different colors of water. The sun rays that touch this water are not affected by the color. Remove the water and the white porcelain of the cup and the pure rays of the sun remain. This color is I am a Hindu or I am a Muslim. When you remove this thought from your mind, you will see the Atman shining everywhere in the world. That is the difference. In modern physics it is clear that the experimenter affects the outcome of the experiment. How are things affected whether seen by an enlightened one or seen by someone not enlightened? What is the relation between Prakriti and the collective consciousness viewing it? The views are different. The enlightened one views from behind the observer and the observed, not as the observer in the case of an unenlightened being. The enlightened one knows the observer which is the ego and transcends the observer observed and observation. Nobody except the enlightened one knows who the observer is and knows who is looking at the observer from behind. Though you must turn your face to that one which observes the observer. This is my question to you. What is the consciousness by which you can know that I am conscious of everything? That supreme consciousness looks at the individual consciousness and what is done via the senses. There are objects of the senses. Before that there are the senses. Before that is the mind which command the senses. Beyond the mind is the decision-making intellect. Beyond intellect is ego. Go now beyond the ego. What consciousness is aware of the ego, and where does this arise from? From here all is done and here is not affected by anything. Here you are not the doer and not the done. This is enlightenment and freedom and beyond karma. Karma we spoke of before is all in the framework of the mind, and it is in the recollection of the mind that these activities of karma arise. Beyond mind there is no arising. Advice is given to those who are on the mental plane, but if you rise above this, you will know that there never existed anything. This is the fundamental truth, there never existed anything, there never will exist anything. This is the ultimate truth. What is seen is seen only through ego. This manifestation that you see is only what you needed to see, what you wanted to see, and is all related to your individual identification. Just as all of this disappears when you go to sleep, so it will disappear when you know the truth. 
All you can see or say is in regards to the waking and dream state, but who is it that witnesses the soundness of your sleep? All your suffering belongs to the waking and dream states, but what happens to the silent happiness of sleep once you wake up? How will you utilize this happiness wisely in the next waking state? This silent happiness is where you come from. This consciousness is aware even when you are unconscious. Why do you forget this happiness when you wake up? You must honor this happiness. You must know that which is awake while you are sleeping. They awake while all others sleep and sleep while all others are awake and you will never be affected by the suffering of life because you are beyond that. This understanding doesn't need any practice. You just absorb it and be it. Practice just strengthens the mind. Practices begin and end and so are not the truth. What always is, is the truth. Practices give you gains, but all gains will be lost. Your own nature you can never lose and you are that. You are that which is awake while you sleep, and which sleeps to what the world is awake to. This that cannot be explained. Your disciples talk about you as a realized being, are you one? I do not say that myself and neither do I have a nameplate which says, here goes an enlightened person. There is no difference that I find between you and me. I never say that I am realized. Many speak about this, saying that you are realized. Is there any difference between realization and enlightenment? Many people say that I am a realized person. This is due to their notions about realization and therefore they think that I am realized, but I don't see any difference between them and me. And yes, though we usually use these words interchangeably, there is a difference between realization and enlightenment. Realization is realized after some sadhana or practice or method, and what is realized was not there before. To realize through a method is called realization. Enlightenment is to be aware of something that was not clear before. Like a diamond that you think is a pebble, but later on you find out that it is a diamond. Light comes after knowing that it is not a pebble and thus you start giving value to it. It is beyond awareness and enlightenment. This is the essence. Who could be aware and who could be enlightened because there is no darkness at all? It is already there and it is revealed when the dust of your notions is cleared away. Then it will come up itself and you and it will merge together, and you will not see a difference between you and it. You will not see anything else. No words can explain it. In the West people either believe in God or they don't. Is there any God and if there is what and who is it? Let people believe or not believe. Self is not affected by any belief or God. God is your thought and is your own creation of the mind. You even created the Creator. Creation, preservation and destruction is just a thought. You have said that Ramana looked into your eyes and showed you the seer. Can you describe what happened then? No, any description is past, not the instant knowledge which is not past or future. Nobody can describe it. Behavior does change though, and some become quiet like a mountain. This was the Maharshi. Some become childlike and innocent. In this case people don't believe that they are enlightened, but this behavior is the exact outer behavior of the man who knows it. What was the effect of this experience on your life? It was not an experience. Experience needs an experiencer and an object to be experienced, but this was not that. Something was pulling me inside. This something was not a personification of anything, it was just a pull within. I don't even know what this within is. Since this pull I have always been happy for no particular reason. Why were you unable to continue Krishna meditation after the divine experience of Darshan of Lord Ram? I cannot continue that meditation because I feel I am him. I need not be his devotee and he need not be my lord. We are the same. This is the essence you must understand. If you have complete total love for that you become that as the gopis became Krishna. Does Papaji have an ego? Yes I have. I have ego. 
He likes to serve me as a maidservant. Without a maidservant, the house cannot run. He is very helpful and takes care of our rising situations without even telling me. I have no complaint against Ego. Let her live in my house. I have no problem with her. I don't find any enmity between her and me. He is quite happy. Some people are surprised to see me eat ice cream and coke because no Swami takes coke and ice cream. But the ice cream has nothing to do with enlightenment, and enlightenment is not affected by ice cream. Ice cream goes from the tongue to the stomach, and my enlightenment doesn't dislike ice cream. So when the ice cream comes, I take it. I have no trouble because I have no restrictions. I don't have any dues and don'ts as the swam is practice. I don't belong to. You shouldn't do this and that. Do whatever you want to do and live a normal life, not trying to become something different and separating yourself from the society. Wearing mullahs and dyeing your clothes has nothing to do with that. It doesn't matter if you wear white or black or orange or how you behave. These things belong to religions. Do's and don'ts are religions. If you go to church, you will go to heaven. If you don't, you will go to hell after death. I don't tell you to do something after death. I just say to make use of the time before death and live and act as you like, but in a way which doesn't touch you. No body contacts will interfere with your understanding, so I do not prescribe to wear this or that kind of dress or behave in any one way. Do you still have thoughts? They do rise when the occasion rises, but I don't run after them to pick them up and utilize them. As the car on the road passes by, and I don't grab it, but most people do run after the car and try to hang on to it. I let the car come, and I don't worry when it disappears. I am not the car. Enlightenment has nothing to do with neither positive states or negative states of the mind. Enlightenment simply has nothing to do with the mind. Why does the eye stay with you after realization? You fail to understand the difference between the I that you use and the I that I use. That makes the difference. The I that most people use indicates the ego, body, mind, and senses. It indicates someone who is born. You consider yourself to have a form, and thus you want a name, and the most basic name is I. But when you sleep, there is no I. Then who is there when you are sleeping and when you are awake? Simply keep quiet and do not look at the quietness or the form or the name. Then you will see that some sort of awareness is still there. This is called Aham Brahma's me, the one mantra for all. But don't repeat it. Get into the truth of it. Don't touch any object, place, or concept for one second, and you will see that there is a super consciousness without name and form. It is that which is the true I. When you go to it, you are no longer there, and it speaks I. Swami Rama Tirtha speaks of this I so beautifully. At the age of twenty-four, he realized himself and said, "When I wake up, the whole world wakes up. When I eat, the whole world eats. When I sleep, the whole world sleeps. Let this body go; I do not care. For I move as the breeze and kiss the flowers and plants." And touch the Himalayan waterfalls. It is this I which I refer to. The use of the word I is simply to refer to the ego, and anybody who uses I in this way will never be happy. That thing is not meant to give you anything, but only to appraise you of the fact that something which cannot be seen is hidden in the cave of your heart. It is light and knowledge, and when you surrender to it, it will take charge of you. Then, when you speak, I am doing this, though the words are the same. It is that which is doing it that makes the difference. Why do you have all these pictures of Ramana Maharshi? When you have been benefited by someone, how can you forget? How can you forget the one who gives that which nobody can give? Nobody has ever shown the happiness and removed the suffering, so you must be indebted to that person as long as you have physical presence on this earth. If you are helped by someone, you say thank you, or maybe you give them one hundred dollar. But how can you ever repay the debt to someone who has removed all suffering from you forever? Everywhere you see that that person is following you, 
even came to me in my house in the Punjab which is a miracle that not everybody believes because when he appeared in the Punjab he was also at Arunachala. I had been searching all over the country for that which was within me, but I did not know it. Then this self came to me in my house in the Punjab and gave his Arunachala address to me. But how to go to him? I had retired from the army and had spent all my money traveling trying to find a guru. Then I saw a job offer in the Tribune. It was for an ex-army officer who was needed to manage the stores of a supply company near Madras in Avedi. Though I applied and got the job and also some advance in pay. Instead of going to the job, I went straight to Maharshi and reported for work a month later. When I went to the ashram, I saw the same person who had given me his address in the Punjab. Though I didn't enter the hall, because I felt he had only been advertising himself. I spoke to one Parsi gentleman who said, You look to be North Indian. Yes, Lam, I replied. But how is it that you have just arrived and now you are leaving already? He asked. Though I said, This man came to me in the Punjab and told me to come to this place for the answer to the question I had asked. The Parsi replied, You have made a mistake. He has not moved from here for the last fifty years since he came here from his house. He has never left Arunachala once since he came and you can ask anybody here. This is how it all began. I have experienced so much and now I am left just full of peace. Now go and share this experience with your friends, family and country. First receive help, then digest it well, and then give it to others. When you know this you know that you have always known it. Alf other experience is fresh and new, but this experience always is. This knowledge means I am Buddha. I want to thank you for this gift of self that you have given to me. When you have this experience of being home, throw everything away and serve the teacher. The best way to serve the master is to stay quiet and serve the devotees. You have awakened the Christ mind in me and now all is seen as one. When you came here as a priest I told you I would show you the love that Jesus has for the Father. Then you did not believe it, but now you have to believe it because you know that everybody is the Son of God. If you love God, you will become one with Him someday, because there is no difference between God and the Son. I experience such a peace and a love in my heart, and I cannot bear to leave now, so I have postponed my departure. It is good that you have not left. When you feel that this experience is stable, you can leave. Often the mind cheats people and so be sure now to cheat the mind. Play with it by imposing different circumstances before it. Play with it, say I am in difficulty or I am not in peace. Then he will not come to your house. I am very happy to see such a young woman here. Most people postpone satsang for old age. But this is too late because in old age you get filled up with diseases which do not allow you to be quiet. So do it now. It is not difficult. I feel that there is no problem with thought, only in taking thought seriously. I feel that if I want realization that it means that I am taking myself to be somebody who is not that. Enlightenment is only for those people who think that their bodies. For them only. Those who do not see the body, or who do not think that they are the body do not need any kind of realization. Realization is to remove the concept, I am the body. If you want my correction, it is that you are now carrying bodilessness. This you must correct. There is no difference between speaking about body or bodilessness. The thought of bodilessness came to you and you accepted it. You are thinking about no thought. Watcher is still the mind watching. The first watch thought, and then watch the watcher. The smoker is in a way better off than the one who dislikes smoking because the smoker smokes the cigarette and then throws away the butt, but the non-smoker always says and thinks that they do not like smoke. Having a cigarette in your hand is better than having one in your mind. Like this, if you think that you do not have a body it really means that you are carrying this dead body, this corpse in your mind. So somehow avoid both the concept of body and the concept of no body. 
Then what will you speak about? Next time correct this. This heart dwells in peace and bliss. I thank you so much. Please continue this until all the sanas are removed. When the mind enters into the chit, the heart dances and dwells in peace and bliss. Now the sound of the birds and everything is so incredibly beautiful. Thinking of the birds, the sound of the wind, the enhanced colors of objects are experiences that people have when their mind becomes very subtle. They listen to these beautiful sounds and experience light of different colors. Think Kabir speaks of this experience of subtle sounds and colors. I can't touch all the old things anymore either. I am very happy. Then you must dance now. Dance out of happiness, not for the sake of dancing. It is not the dance that I enjoy, but something else. I enjoy that which makes you dance. Apaiji, I am so grateful to you, I would love to sing and dance for you. For the next two days keep quiet and don't give rise to any thought in your mind. If you keep quiet for these two days you will automatically stand up with so much bliss and happiness that you will instantly start dancing and you will never know the end of it. You won't even know who the dancer is. Just keep quiet and wait for what happens. This dance will be beyond words. Once when I was in the forest near the Cavalry River, I found a man simply dancing for nobody and for no reason. Though I asked him to whom he was dancing. He said once I saw nobody in no form, then this dance automatically started. Though if you have no object in your mind, including no object which will appreciate the dance, then you will dance a natural dance as the clouds dance in front of the mountain. What is the use of the clouds to dance in front of the mountain who does not move? Then the cloud falls in the shape of rain. Keep quiet and then dance. This dance is quite enough so you don't have to meditate. This is the dance of Nataraj who dances even on the day of dissolution. The destruction of the traps of concepts is the eternal dance of love. Trading these traps for peace is not a bad bargain. A good dancer makes no effort and every step is in tune, perfection. Simply know yourself and then walk freely and effortlessly on the planet. When the wave arises the ocean does not worry that it will run away. Knowing I am ocean, the waves of the ocean are allowed to rise. When you know that you are water then waves are no problem. Nothing is not harbored in consciousness. I see thee. I am is the cosmic dancer. Thank you so much. I am happy with this experience. Actually, it is not an experience, but this was burned here and so you are at the last rung of the truth. This is the purpose of your life. Now I must give you a new name. It is the name of the one who won the battle over the demon of attachments. Tatyavan, the one who is truthful to what he must do. I love this name. I love it too. After realization you witness everything good or bad, and you realize that everything is just a game. If someone kisses you it is fine and if someone slaps you, you make sure their hand has not been injured. Once there was a saint who went down to the river for a drink of water and noticed a scorpion was being washed away. So he reached for it, but it stung his finger. Now, a scorpion bite is really painful. He tried saving the scorpion several times, but each time he was stung. A man standing nearby asked the saint, Why do you keep trying to save this scorpion when it keeps trying to sting you? The saint said, If he cannot get rid of his habit of stinging, why should I get rid of my habit of serving? Though it can be a difficult game to play, and there are many scorpions to bite you and many worms waiting for you to become their food. But we forget this, and that is why we suffer. We don't remember that this earth on which we tread will bring us underneath her. Nobody remembers, but those who do are wise persons. Though play the game as long as the breath moves through your nose. This playing, this game, this sport is Leela. Play this game and witness all that goes around and you're a wise person. A guru has been coming to me in a form which is not physical, but not non-physical. 
Can you tell me about what these meetings mean? And what is this form that he takes? It is a special meeting. At one level of consciousness we see a different world, a world which is born and then perishes with short-lived objects. This is our 18-hour waking state world. Then there is the dream consciousness and also a subconscious state called the sleep state. No matter what state you think that you are in consciousness is there awake. You know this because when someone asks you how you slept you can say that you had a very deep sound sleep. So, you were not awake, but some consciousness was aware and in this consciousness there is no present, past or future and yet you can perceive all these things and everything is just as it is. Many saints live in this consciousness. When you rise to this, you will see everything as it is. In this consciousness nobody dies. There cannot be any death in consciousness. Nobody dies really, though there is a level of consciousness where birth and death appears to be real. At another level you were never born and you will never die. Many saints and holy cities are in this super-conscious state, and yet everything still is as it is. Nothing is destroyed in consciousness. Consciousness is always conscious of consciousness. Everything is there in consciousness and nothing is changed except your view, which can be called your level. When your view is gross you see the gross creation, when your view is subtle as in the dream state, you see subtler creations. Your view can be far more subtle than this if your temperament is very sapphic. With the Tamas Guna we see the world, with the Rajas Guna we see the dreams, and with the very subtle pure sapphic Guna you see the saints. Beyond sapphic there is a state where nothing ever existed. There is no time, no existence, and no destruction there. No creator is there, no creations, no forms, no concepts, nobody. This is the ultimate substratum of all these levels of consciousness. Though it is a good sign to see holy men, they will guide you. You have risen to the level of consciousness where you have seen these saints. Ultimately, there is no past or present or future and you can experience this right now when your mind is not agitated. When there are no ripples in the lake, you can see your face. These ripples are thought disturbances. If you do not stir a ripple in your mind, you can see your face now. All of manifestation is just a ripple in the lake. Under the surface you are calm and quiet, this is your nature. When thought comes and disturbs the surface you cannot see your face correctly. You are always living here, and whenever you want manifestation to cease it will immediately. You just have to decide. When you want to rest make the decision to be free of manifestations, ripples, and see instantly who you are. Very nice. It is a good sign. It is a very rare phenomena and very good luck to see an enlightened one. Each century doesn't have the capacity to produce even twenty Buddhas. Since it is Buddha Purnima today will you tell us the story of how Buddha was enlightened? This is the day Buddha was born, this full moon day. I will tell you a little story about him. His mother was told that the son that she was going to give birth to will be the king of the universe and that according to his horoscope, he would not be staying in the palace, and actually this is what happened. So the father made all the arrangements to provide luxury to the boy, so that he would stay and did not permit the boy to go out of the palace grounds. Within the walls of the palace young beauties from all over the country were kept so that he would not have any time to think of anything else except the enjoyments of the palace. One day he asked the man who was training him in horse riding what was on the other side of the wall, but the trainer said he wasn't allowed to go there. This horse trainer was a Chana, even his name is remembered. The boy insisted that he should see it and so a Chana took him. As they left the palace the gate locks opened by themselves, and so they were able to leave as the gatekeepers slept. They didn't notice. The earth became so soft that the hoofs of the horses didn't make any noise. And so they got out. The first thing that he sees is a sick, coughing old man hunched over. 
Pachana, why is this man not walking straight like you and me? He's an old man and therefore he cannot walk straight. At around seventy years old a man becomes hunchbacked and cannot walk upright, replied Achana. Will you also become old? asked Siddhartha. Yes, my lord, and you too. Next he goes and sees a man carried on a stretcher, with the family members crying behind him. Achana, why is this man being carried on a stretcher, why doesn't he walk? asked the prince. My lord, he is dead. Therefore, he is being taken away to the cremation ground. We also die? He asked. Yes, my lord, and you also. Everybody who is born has to die, answered Achana. A little while later he saw a man sitting under a tree with a radiant face. Stop the horse! shouted the prince as he went over to the man. This man is laughing and smiling. Achana, why is he different from the sick and old man? Achana said, My lord, he's meditating. Why? inquired the prince. To find out his own enlightenment within. The light is within and he is very happy about it, answered the horse trainer. Will you also do this? asked Siddhartha. I can't do it, my father never did it and nobody really does it. Achana moved the horse back home said the prince. Now he decides for the time being to be like this meditating man. When they returned to the palace, he went to see his wife and son in case they had noticed that he was missing, although they were sleeping when he left the palace. Dilya Shadara was sleeping and Raul was suckling the breast of his mother. He decides, let me go out. One step was inside the threshold and one step was out. He turned and looked behind, and feeling such attachment to them he thought, No I should not go. My wife will be alone and my son will miss his father. Now in between attachment and light. Tears streamed down Papaji's face, dot the foot outside the threshold was very firm. He leaves and does not look behind. So he goes to find a Kuru who will teach him how to become enlightened. He goes to one ashram where the people are meditating for years. He stayed there for six months, but did not find anyone like the first man that he saw under the tree, and decided that it was not the place for him. So he left and went to another ashram. Their very rigid practices and tortures were given. They were doing serious meditations, upasanas, and were hanging from the trees with feet up and head down. He taught starvation, and he became a skeleton, until he saw that this rejection of the body would not give him light. He went to another ashram where they were meditating the whole day and night, but there was no radiance on their faces. He had seen something that they were missing and so onward he went to Bodh Gaya where he decided to sit down, simply stay quiet, and not get up until he was enlightened. There he found something which was very new to him. For a long time he had been barely eating, and so one girl who was looking after him brought him honey and milk, and for the first time he took it. Then Ananda comes and asks what is it that you have found? But he did not speak. Again he asked you look very radiant and your whole body is different. Master, tell me what is the secret of this? Again he kept quiet. Though this is his life. The first time I knew about Buddha it was in my history book. There was a part about the life of Buddha. I saw him meditating under the Bodhi tree in a picture of my history book. I was about fourteen years old when I fell in love with him. I didn't know what enlightenment was, but his person was very beautiful and so I decided to become like him. The only way to be like him that came to mind was to reject food. Then I would become like him all skeleton with visible bones. So like this I rejected food. The food that my mother gave me, I would throw out to the dogs. After a month of not eating I became like a skeleton, and the dogs became very fat. My schoolmates even gave me the name Buddha because of my weakness. It also was written that he would beg for food, and that he wore a robe and so next I took one of my mother's saras and dyed it ochre and made a robe out of it. I kept the robe in my book so she wouldn't know and I would go out and beg. 
I would go to shopkeepers and houses, and though they didn't know me they would give me biksha. Then I went to beg at a friend's house to see if they would recognize me. I went to their shop first, and the father gave me one pays. Then I went to his wife, but since they usually didn't open the doors to beggars, I told my friend to go in and tell his mother to give me biksha. So, since Sadhus addressed the women as daughter, I addressed my friend's mother the same way, My dear daughter, may you be blessed with six sons. This is what every sadhu says to Indian women. Then she removed the robes from my head, and said that though she didn't recognize me, she did recognize the voice. The tongue which shouted Bhikshu was known to her. Then the father came home from the shop, and when he was told the story of how I came, and was recognized, he said that anyone would recognize me since I came to his house every day and sometimes even slept here. Then I showed him the pays that he had given to me in his shop. Sometimes I would go to the clock tower of the town and many people would collect there to listen to me. Then one of my neighbors told my mother what was going on, but she said it was not her son. The neighbor was insistent, but when she asked me about what the neighbor said, I denied it. One day, she wanted to wear her sari for a wedding and after a thorough search for it, she found it behind my books made into a robe. Then she knew the neighbor's claim was true. There is something which is there from the childhood itself and this takes time to manifest later on. Sometimes it happens in youth and sometimes in old age. So don't think that you are here for the first time. There is a reason why you have come here from all over the world. This had to happen at a given time and now is happening here, and many people have been benefited. That star is there looking at us. We are collected here to celebrate Buddha Purnima, which means we will celebrate the birth of the light of Asia. Tonight we are celebrating this and I am happy we are all here. Compassion and Service Compassion is a jewel that adorns itself on one who is free. You cannot practice this kind of compassion because it is all your own self so who is helping. This compassion may incarnate as a human as the Bodhisattva. Compassion is your dharma which arises as doership dissolves. Let your joy be enjoyed by all, don't be a miser. Don't hold back, give everything, love all, no matter what, love all, and honor everybody because all is your own projection. Any jiva must not be troubled, all jivas must be happy. Trouble no being and let no being trouble you. Nobody should be harmed. Stay in peace, this is your responsibility. Planet will be very beautiful if you just stay in peace. If you want to give to the world, give what you are. Give peace and happiness. To give happiness you must be happiness. To give peace you must be peace. To give wisdom you must be wisdom. Be happy and out of compassion distribute this. Then, I means the entire universe. If you give food or blankets the world will soon be hungry and cold again. So just be happy, you have to share this. What else is left except to share the experience that you are? It must be shared. It is full of fullness so always give. This is giving wisdom. Do not speak to foolish people about the truth, just share the love and the happiness, because the greatest gift is an empty mind. But even if you do not speak your silence will reach the whole planet as a silent rose radiates beauty. Sit quietly and send peace from your heart to all beings of all the worlds. Oceans may empty, but there is no end to love and peace, so share it always in selfless service. This is worship. The time left in this body is to be used helping all others on the planet and in all realms. Remain being and help everyone. This is not a desire, but a natural surrender. You are just a tool like a bank teller. It is not your money that you are giving away. You are only the instrument. Always give and you will never need. If you do not give you will always be needy. Dissolve yourself into the self and the whole world is taken care of. If you want to help the planet live that life of compassion for all beings. Live that life of love. Apogee, when I inquire I go into an original and blissful state. 
I have been told, however, that this is not full enlightenment because it is selfish, it is only for myself and does not help others. What is my responsibility towards others? If you have this experience, you have fulfilled all the responsibilities to yourself and to all the inhabitants of the world. How can you call this selfish? To know thyself is enough to fulfill your responsibility to all beings, to everybody. This is not selfish. Everything disappears, except this thought that I must help other beings. This thought that does not disappear, to whom does it belong to? You will not be benefited by any practice or meditation unless you find the root of the thought which does not disappear. This thought that does not disappear is the I thought. Nobody knows that I is also a thought. When there is no I thought there is no other thought so you have to strike at the root of the I thought. Long meditations, staying in caves of the Himalayas, or staying with teachers is of no use unless you do it. Thy should not appear when you meditate. You are coming close, but you do not know who the thief is. The thief is not caught. I is the thief who deceives you. I am so and so and this belongs to me, and that will belong to me is the thief that is never arrested. If you want to help others the best way is to be free yourself. The richest man on the planet could maybe feed the whole world for one or two days, but Buddha has been feeding the world for 2,600 years. There seems to be only three choices, serve the ego, serve the other or serve the divine. I have only done the first one. I suggest you serve all three. Why have any distinction between the divine, you and others? Serve yourself, your parents, your country, and the whole world. This itself is service to the divine. Selfless service is worship and will destroy the ego. After your realization, why didn't you help others immediately? You mean to say, why did I immediately start helping others? I help others without want of a result or reward. This is called compassion. All who get like it compassion as well and wish peace to everybody. I started helping people by giving them spiritual advice when I was around 12 in the early 1920. People recognized me as a yogi including the headmaster of the school. Once I even went into a samadhi because Om Shanti 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 was chanted by the whole class. My teacher punished me, but the headmaster was wise and was proud of me instead. He used to brag years later that his school had produced many VIP in the government and in business, and it also produced one yogi. So I have continued my activities as a normal person and never grew a beard or wore orange robes to imply I was superior. No one can recognize me. You don't have to become something different than others. How can we improve the world? My teaching is not to improve the world, nor to improve yourself. Just understand and listen to what I speak, the world has never existed. Anything that has never existed, how can you improve it? You said that I have to be realized while in this body. I also feel a strong desire to share what you have given me until all beings know it. Does there have to be rebirths until this feeling of sharing is complete? If you think that your work is not complete in this lifetime, you will be reborn in some suitable circumstances to the parents who will help you to fulfill your work. If you have not finished your business, you will have to continue endlessly. Why not finish right now? And one second for yourself. Otherwise, all lives are spent for others. Right from childhood you belong to parents and priests. As a young man you belong to teachers. Then you belong to your wife, children and employers. As you get old you belong to the doctors. At the end when this sparrow has flown away, when the soul has left you, you belong to the priests and undertakers and, and then finally you will belong to the worms. You belong to everybody but never did you belong to your own self. So now is the time to understand. Dedicate just one second to yourself today, this hour, this instant. And your work will be over. Don't postpone. 
I don't want you to postpone because there is nothing to resolve or solve. This is only to realize that you have always been realized. Know this and nothing will be left for the next life. Whoever knows if there will be another life at all. Nobody comes and tells us. They did don't speak of it. What happens after death is only a problem for the living ones. Though finish it up now. Then you will know the secret which no one ever has known and you will simply laugh. I feel that I am dissolving and expanding, and I really feel that in my expansion I will liberate the entire universe. This is compassion of the self sending you to every person and being and rock to tell them to wake up. This is what Buddha did up to the age of 80 years old, up to his last breath. He was dying and one man came to see him, but he was stopped by Ananda who said the master would only breathe one or two more breaths. With one breath Buddha called the man over to him and with the next he gave him his teaching and his blessings. Then he died. This is called compassion. So, after your own freedom, you must see that everybody is free. But mind you this, suppose you are dreaming and within this dream you have one enlightenment. In the dream there are many others who are still living in very poor states. What will you do for these people? Tell me now. What could be the best thing to do for these people in your dream? Who are these others in your dreams? Other is there only because you were there. This is a dream. You've won enlightenment in a dream. Wake up and you will help everybody. Other will disappear and you will disappear. The dreamer is no more. Wake up and tell me where the universe and all its suffering and enjoyments are. Wake up and know you're not even created. Nothing ever existed, not even the creators who created creations. Much beyond that. There nobody exists. There the sun doesn't shine, there the moon doesn't reflect, there the stars don't appear. That is the place for you to stay, where nobody else is tam happy that you are doing something. Three billion girls are out there suffering indefinitely, but you are chosen to be here. There must be something at your back pushing you out of samsara, giving you experiences that no one else in your family has had. Go now and transcend this experience. All that you read and think is a cheating of the mind, it is not it. Proceed further. Proceed further and reject it, proceed and reject, and later rejection will be rejected. Tell me where rejector, rejection and rejected is finished. That is the place where all will arrive and actually, everyone is there already. A forgetful lover is not a lover, so you can't forget the love. Your beloved is seated in your heart, though you search for that outside. You search for happiness with others but when all of it is rejected, you will merge with that love. There seems to be something beyond compassion. When a man is free from sorrow, personality and identification, compassion rises in his mind for those who suffer. For this compassion there is a sufferer and one who has compassion. Actually no one is suffering and no one is happy. You are beyond both, beyond emptiness and bliss. The wave arises to know its own unknowability in the mind of the unknown. The known is in the womb of the unknown and so you can't say if it is known or unknown. Nobody is calling and nobody is called. It is as it is. Love, beyond the beyond. Freedom is the start of something that nobody knows. There is no end to satsang. It is always new fathomless bliss. The firm conviction that one is existence consciousness bliss is the end of the teaching. Yet there is a sacred secret beyond even this. This sacred secret must be asked for in secret and followed sacredly. Constantly go to the source. Don't even land in the source, but forever go deeper. Till beyond it is. You have to take the last half step from peace awareness bliss into the mystery beyond the mind. Do you still progress in this final stage of evolution where you are now? This is a very good question. Many people will say that this is the final stage and that everything is finished with no more progress or evolution to experience. 
This is what everybody will say. I still have something more to do in this direction which is not mentioned in any book. There's no end to understanding. As long as there is very pure intention, there is still something to be done after complete and final realization. That I don't speak of and I have never spoken. It is not mentioned in any book. Those who know it cannot express it because it is beyond intellectual grasp. I want to tell what it is. It is a sacred secret as Krishna says to Arjuna, the knowledge I give you is sacred knowledge, it is not to be retold to anyone. I know a mystery so rare and sacred and secret. It has no oral description, but yet I will tell it to some people that I like. There are some people in the West. I am not hiding this, it is just that I cannot speak it. Perhaps the time will come when I speak. It is very subtle and can only be understood by the supreme intellect. Even if I did speak it nobody would understand. It is not what is transmitted by look, touch or word. It is something beyond that. Can you speak something of the mystery? If I could speak of the mystery how could it be a mystery? It could be a history. You can speak about history, not about the mystery. Nobody knows what this wisdom is. Those who go there never return. It seems like self and being rise from mystery. Everything arises from the mystery so you are not describing mystery but the self. Everything that can be seen and felt has for its origin mystery. Mystery cannot be seen. Mystery is beyond self? Yes. Is creation arising due to self exploring the mystery within self? There is no inside or outside for the mystery. Inside and outside arises from thought. Where does this thought arise from? Go toward where the thought rises from. This is a mysterious place where no one has touched and where no one can speak about. Even God's and existence comes from the mystery. Nobody knows that the mystery is behind creation and the Creator. Maybe it is only a mystery that we even see a creation, and it may not even be there at all because it is a mysterious. Just as you dream you see so many things like rivers and forests, men, animals and birds, but when you wake up nothing is there, nor was it ever. Though it was a mystery that in your short nap you see so many things. Then you wake up and nothing is there. When you wake up you realize that nothing has ever existed. To see the mystery, you must wake up from the sleep of forms and names. If you don't see any forms or names then that is not describable. If you are in love with mystery, really in love with the all-compassionate mystery, then she will reveal to you the mystery, and you will be this mystery, but you will not be able to describe what you have seen. Mystery and beauty and peace and love all are the same thing. I heard that you say that you have not given your final teaching yet. Why have you not transmitted this to anyone yet? It is very true that I have not done this so far because the truth exalts a holy person. Therefore it will go to a holy person. It will itself reveal to him whom it will choose. It is a secret teaching that is very sacred, so I cannot give it to everyone and so far I have not given it to anyone. I have seen that when the time comes the person runs away. This is because they are rejected, not accepted, because the truth is revealed to a holy person. One must be very holy in all respects, and then, it will unfold its own glory. Though everybody must wait and see who is chosen. They are not to demand anything. The one who will be chosen is the one who will be absolutely holy and beautiful, most beautiful, so that the truth itself is attracted. That beauty one must have. A person who looks outside for his beauty will not see his beauty inside. Okay wait and see. Love is so simple and I have been so dishonest to complicate everything. Yes. Love is inside you, here and now. You don't need any center or church to teach you this. Methods are just a running away from the love that is always here and now. Stop avoiding it and just stay where you are. Then it will reveal itself to itself and you will forget who was the lover and who was beloved. Love is pure and immaculate. 
That is all. I have a longing to know what love is. This longing is not long enough, and therefore, you can still ask a question regarding love. When your head is sticking out of the water of the river then only can you speak. Keep your head in the water of love and try to speak. Whenever you speak your head is out of the surface of love and you are speaking to people on the banks of the river. Love is fathomless. This word has no value compared to that which it points to. Love itself speaks through every pore of your body, you need not open your mouth, there is no word for love. What you can speak about and what you can experience is not love. All thought and speech is philosophy, not love. For everything else you need to work. There are sadhanas and paths and ways, but there is no path to love. There is no center which will teach you love. Bones will melt in true love, let alone mind and ego. Nothing is in true love. In love you are love, who will speak to whom? Just look at it and it will happen. Everything is artificial, everything but love. When you love you know how to love, otherwise you don't. It comes by itself from within, you are not to do anything about it. Then when love is here all the rest is finished. There are no attachments to anything, there is only love loving itself. So long for only your own self and you will be that. Taking time is just postponement and interest in something else. Love is spontaneous and is the indweller of your heart. Do you know that we really love you? Why should I not know? I am the lover. I am the lover and the lover knows how many beloveds he has. He cannot hide and you also cannot hide. Papaji, I am home all the time, forever. It is impossible to enter what was never left and impossible to leave what was never entered. There is only this expanse of unmoving peace. I love you so much. There is always some kind of undercurrent of longing which still continues that I cannot describe. There is still this longing before the dawn of enlightenment and after manifesting as freedom itself. But it is not a longing from ignorance toward wisdom. Some say that all is over in wisdom and that there is no further experience, but I feel that there is a movement because it is fathomlessness. So you are that itself and there is still an undercurrent working to bring you deeper and closer to love. There is no end to it and if you have this experience you will agree, but it can never be described. If it is fathomless, then this love process is also fathomless and never ending and will just increase as an undercurrent. It is like a river discharging into the ocean. It just keeps on expanding and is ocean and then transcends the ocean-river relation. Now it is from the ocean, from the bottom to the surface of the ocean. Laughs I feel, the love is deeper in the emptiness. Some people say that in emptiness there is no love and no beauty. These traditions and teachers say that emptiness is empty of everything. This is not my experience. It is the fathomlessness of emptiness. The very heart of emptiness, arriving at the depths of emptiness, there is love and beauty. It is very beautiful. Papaji, thank you from the depths of the heart of all beings for what you have given all of us. By totally surrendering your life and time and body to serve and advise us in anything we need you have shown us true surrender, devotion, and compassion. By your very presence and by your wise words you have revealed to us true knowledge and have given us peace. By taking us into your daily life you have taught us how to be skillful in this world, and by taking us into your heart forever you have drowned us in such sweet blissful love. Thank you so much. Papaiji, what is this love that you are dissolving us into? We love you so much so incredibly much. Kisses the feet of the master there is a perpetual fathomless pull of love into love and undercurrent of forever expanding self into self. This is how I experience love as the depth of emptiness. The more you go into this fathomlessness the more you will be pulled, attracted, dissolved into it. 
This beauty is attraction and as you go deeper into it, you will be more in love every moment. This moment is pure love which is absolutely forever. All is love, everything is this love, there is no escape. Love is self and this is so complete that it doesn't even need understanding. There is nothing besides love. It is the source of joy. Here, here is the secret of love. Here it is. First be in love. Then if there is any time left you can speak of it. No head is needed to speak of love, only heart. In this heart there is no need for maps to get home. The easiest thing is to be here in this love, all else is effort and takes effort. Remove all ideas, this is love. Love, the heart, this moment is the truth. See this love everywhere, see only from love. See from heart and you will see only heart, but see from ego and you will see ego. This moment of love does not belong to a me or to a you so therefore I am in love. When mind is no mind, it is heart. Heart is self, is Atman, is emptiness. What is unknown is that which is to be loved. The beloved one is before knowing. It is freedom, it is fathomless love where existence, consciousness and bliss arise from. This is your own creation so enjoy it. Love everything, be in radiant love. As love you are seated in the heart of all beings and they in yours. Here within the heart, you can see everything because everything is projected from here. The rose is silent, yet it attracts. Though those in love have faces shining with beauty. If you cannot hold the love, if you cannot contain it, then distribute it to all, for it is always full. Love all, no matter what, love all, it will win all battles. Love is always loving you. Without this love you cannot breathe, as without air you cannot live. Love is meditation, meditation is love. Heart has no frontiers, meditate on this. You are this love, you are that. Simply be quiet and stay as such. Thank you, I love you. Let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe, let there be peace, let there be peace on, shanti shanti shanti. About this book. The truth is now, and this is not in books or cassettes. Reading books is like reading menus, the menu is not the food. You have to eat, you have to have the experience. If books gave you freedom librarians would be the first to be enlightened, but the banks of a river are better than a library. Don't tread books, read only your open heart in this immediate presence. Reading books before you know the truth will destroy you because books pollute you with so many notions which will just distract you from yourself. Words are indicators only so follow the indication and don't stick to the words. Leave the wordiness of the world and realize here and now what the words in this book are pointing to. The truth the teaching which is, cannot be spoken of or described by words. The teaching can only be silently transmitted from self to self in the form of Sadhguru to disciple. The words written on the preceding pages are not the teaching, but act as mere fingers pointing to the truth. This book is composed of many chapters and sections. This differentiation is due only to the various topics of the questions asked. The answers to all of these questions have just one power and import. You are eternal being, unbounded and undivided. Now you are with someone who has no teachings and only one thing to say, and that is also not a teaching. Just keep quiet, all will be well, keep quiet. You are God itself. What else? Here and now everywhere, you are happy, you are peace. Do not entertain any notion that you are in trouble. This is all that you have to do. It is not a search but the cessation of distraction. We are here to help each other. Don't entertain the notion that I am high and that you are low. We are here to find out how to be happy, how the whole world can be happy. We can speak about this between ourselves. What is the way to be happy and how can we transmit this happiness to all beings?